this little speedster right here, boys. Vinny Lopes. Oh, oh Vinny Lopes. I'm telling you, he's speed. He's a complimentary player. You might not notice him here and there, but he will electrify you with the way he's able to affect every shift he's on. Wit, we talked about this. How important are complimentary players? That's what Vinny Lopes is. A true, a is true his Swiss name Army Lopez? Knight. Hey, Matt Zay. Lopes. Matt Zay. Lopes. Lopes. All right. Hey, Zay controls it, and then Lopes drives the net yeah. and gets it done. Yeah. They also got a guy, Paul Morant, who has never Meet lost. Me. He won with NYPD <laughs> and FDNY. Let's go down for the Merle's Minute, presented by Labatt Blue Lights with FDNY Captain Jim Becker. The Mer. Thanks, Jeff. I'm down here between the locker rooms. It's still cordial between both teams, but it's going to heat up in here soon. I'm joined now by FDNY captain Jim Becker. Let's start off with your house number and your official job title. Hi, Jim Becker, engine 309. I'm a firefighter in the engine company. All right, uh, we're here for the big hockey game. If the other team had game notes on you, what kind of player are they saying you are? Um, I'm a pretty hard worker, so I'm going to do whatever I can to win the game. All right, favorite part of this big event? Favorite part has got to be the opening ceremonies, seeing all the families. You're on a five-game win streak. What's the biggest part of getting on that streak and keeping on that streak? Uh, just going to work, digging hard. If there was one NHL team now that plays like the FDNY team, what team is it? We like to play with speed, so I would say probably maybe the New Jersey Devils. Uh, we, we expect a tight game out there. Which player would you add, Biz or Wit? Ooh, that's a tough one. I'd have to go with Biz, I think, for his uh, toughness. Good call. Um, there's a rumor going around your Rico Bosco from Barstool's cousin. Is this true? It is true. I can confirm it. I hope you didn't take his college basketball picks this year, but uh, we want a winning pick. Who do you got to win the Stanley Cup? I'm going to have to go with the Minnesota Wild. And anyone you want to shout out watching all over the world on Barstool.tv? I got a shout out to my wife and my school, St. Mary's University. And lastly, before we go, score prediction. I'm going to have to go with a 6-3 FD win. All right, 6-3 FDNY. We'll be in the locker room after. Plenty of Labatt blue light. That's Merle's Minute. Back to Jeff and the boys. All right, we, there's nothing to talk about except for one thing. He, Wait, what took, happened? He took Biz. <laughs> I was one. I, I, I was on. You're softer than puppy no, was, shit. Yeah, but you can't stick this. handle. You can't stick it. <laughs> I was on NYPD to begin with, but I was a little hesitant. Now <laughs> I am all close. over the blue. They're not. They're picking Biz over me. What do you want to go minus three and not get any ice time? And Biz has like wooden knees. Yeah, <laughs> that's insane. No they, respect for. They Bosco's got enough cousin. silky players. They yeah, need a little right. bit of toughness. They, had, they, 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 they need. They know I bring no grit. Yeah. We looked at the. The NY side. Now it's time to move over to the NYPD. The players to watch. There's actually one off the top. The bat blue light. Players to watch that you played with, Biz, at one point. Danny O'Donoghue. What a hockey name. I tell you what, he's got it all, too. I guess we're going to start with the goaltender. We're starting with Bissett. Yeah, and let me tell you, we already talked about Pataglia net for FDNY. Yeah. This guy has to be as good. And he was last year. They would have lost 9-1 if it wasn't for him. It was 2-1 OT. He's got to go save for save with Pataglia. I think he'll be able to. There he is. Here's Danny O'Donoghue. What a hockey name. Played with him. With the Portland uh, in Portland in the AHL. I tell you what, he's got it all. He's a catalyst to this team's he's offense. Huge. He's a humongous guy. Where do you think McDavid got a celebration? Size, <laughs> speed. He's got the mitts and look at the pork chops on the guy, boys. Oh, look at that. Oh, Bringing home some hardware. It. And that was in the ESPN game a few years ago when he took home MVP. He's a heck hey, of a big player. Cat, big cat. Yeah. Give this one a try. This guy Santino is a Ragon. Oh, Tony Ragatone. Ragon. <laughs> big Italian. Big D-man army. Sneaky good. And Look. this guy Stemke, we talked about Lopes on FDNY. Stemke's that guy. He's all all around the ice. He's good at everything he does. A complimentary player for O'Donoghue, so they're gonna need him to play a big game. And on their team too, what is it, Burn? Oh yeah, DJ yeah, Burn. D -D -Man. Yeah, he's D-man, but he played with the Danbury Thrasher Trashers. Yeah. yeah. So he's got issues. Dave, yeah, a, Dave Portnoy just watched that documentary yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it just came out. Yeah. yeah. Can this group <laughs> turn it around? Let's send it down. Labat Blue Light Merle's minute with the NYPD captain Charlie Benesinque. Thanks, Jeff. We're down here. It's the calm before the storm, and I'm lucky enough to be joined by NYPD captain. Charlie Venta Cinque. Thanks for coming. Let's start off with your precinct and your official job title. I'm, uh, I'm in a cold case homicide detective. I'm in the cold case homicide squad. Wow, that's, that's really impressive. Uh, we're here for the big hockey game. If the other team had game notes on you, what kind of player are you? Well, uh, 20 years ago or now? <laughs> yeah, we're looking at tonight's game. So that's, uh, dump and chase, go get it, bang a couple bodies, hopefully pop one in. I love it. Hardworking guy like myself. Uh, favorite part of this big game? 
just a day, man. You know, you look around, you look upstairs, there's 17,000 people here. It's a great day for everybody involved. Okay, it's well noted. You're on a five-game losing streak. What's the game plan to end it tonight? Oh, man, we, the, the, coin's got, the coin has to flip, you know what I'm saying? Five years in a row here, a couple close ones, a tie, a shootout. You know, hopefully it's our day today. Um, if you could add one player to your roster tonight, who would it be, Biz or Wit? Uh, I might go, I don't know, man. That's a tough one. It's a tough one. Uh, poli political correct yeah. answer. Um, next question, important one. There's a rumor going around. RA has been in your locker room asking for get out of jail free cards for tonight. Very true. Very true. All right. Is there anyone out here you want to give a shout out to watching around the world? Uh, just, uh, I don't know. You know, everybody watching on the, on the, the Boston stream, you know, hopefully. It's a good day. You guys are involved. It's make even make a good day even better. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. The energy around here is unreal. What's the score prediction tonight? Uh, prediction. I'm gonna go five four us. Five four NYPD. We will have plenty of Labatt Blue Light in the locker room for you if you guys pull off the win tonight. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Back up to uh, Jeff and the boys. Thanks to Merle's guys. Hockey, very cool, scoring goals, all that, but. There's one thing we got to talk about this game, and that is the brawls. Yes. They are Ooh. going to throw down. I thought you were going to say Strafer's mom. <laughs> but okay, we'll get yeah. to that. We'll I was literally that. waiting. I was like, <laughs> we, haven't seen, we haven't seen her yet. I've been looking around everywhere. Where is Strafer's mom? They're going to song for ahead, I think it's going to pack it in notes. But this game, you said it, they are going to brawl early and often, especially one side. NYPD is the rougher team. They're the tougher team. They want to fight. They want to get involved. Now, FDNY is winning. They're more skilled. They try to stay away. But NYPD wants to bring them into the fight, make them get in the box, take them off the ice they, a little bit. They want to drag them into the swamp. They want to slow down the game just like the captain's answers. Very slow pace. We know that FDNY has all that skill. So if they can get a couple of scraps early with, yep. would you like you like that one? Oh, I like that one. <laughs> he didn't have much to say, but he's a man of what, few words. Yeah. What's your hockey <laughs> what do you well, say, No, I was going to say, I don't know why they don't make win Winning the fight should count as a goal in this game. That's fair. That would be That's great. I I might, I'll tell the ref when I get down there. It should be a rough and yeah. hockey combined. It's a little uh, late for any rule changes, but <laughs> we'll put it in year, for next year. Number 50. For the 50th yeah, yeah, anniversary. Yeah. Big Cat, hit me with your favorite brawl ever, not just hockey. Oh, the Mouse the Palace. Shoot. Where, where, where I, is it I would for say you? Mouse the Palace. Or remember that time LeGarrette Blunt uh, just punched a random yes, fan? Yes, yeah, the yeah. Boise State. <laughs> Oregon, the Boise, Boise State, State that yeah. ruled. Because everyone's wanted to do that. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, fuck you, man. It was cool, but it didn't quite compare to the brawls they've had in this game. Yeah. Also, too, you guys had Milbury on the podcast on Chicklets. He hit a guy with a shoe in yeah. New York. In yes. New York. Yes. Yes. I like when um, Robin Vettura got his head punched in by a 41-year-old Nolan <laughs> yes. Ryan in a headlock. Just that was dummy. a classic. Old Dummy. School. <laughs> I love, that, I love great, that. I love that. Great with my Browns there. That was I love nice. that too. That these guys we talked down there. They teed up on the documentary. All the you know rivalry stuff. It's unbelievable when they put their helmet on. How much they hate each other. Oh yeah. Well, let's let's get more into the fight. It is going to be a very big part of the game you're going to see today. Over the years, the rivalry grew until it hit its peak in 2014. It was always just a game to me up until 2014. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the other guys on both teams have told you a little bit, right? Uh, all right, I don't know what stories you've gotten so far. I don't know if I was on the ice, so to speak, when it started, but I remember being on the ice during it, yeah. Somebody by the name of Derek Kern decides to throw an elbow up to my face. I, I retaliated and I, I meant to slash him, I did, but I got him a little higher than I thought. I was going to. Apparently, he hit him. He hit him in the in the head with his stick. People from the bench were throwing punches, trying to grab players into their bench. It was a free for all. It was just uh, all hell broke loose and just grab a guy that's near you and see what happens. You know what happens on the ice is is what happens, and you know we handle it accordingly, and you know handle it like men, and then you know we shake hands and and uh, you know that's it. The benches are clear. The intensity of this game, you can feel it already. Again, the lights are down a little bit. People starting to go by us. Quickly before break, Biz, Wit, talk about that intensity and who is going to have to bring it early to make it well, impact. Well, Wit, from my understanding is there might be one off the opening faceoff. But if I'm FDNY, I avoid it like the plague. You don't want to get into that game. I think NYPD really controls the toughness. I'll say that they may not want to fight, 
but you get called out in front of 17,000 people. Oh, yeah. You get you get called out. I mean, uh, it, and then yeah. your, the arsehole puckers up. Try really saying high. no. Try getting the booze from the crowd when oh, you don't want to hey. go to start How this game. How do you game. think my nose looks like this? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say no. Well, I was half, crawling out of my skin like, while I was getting ragged off. Hey, like a half chewed caramel no, over there. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know more we than any, that. We have any doctors in the crowd back here? <laughs> we have any doctors? This is actually He's a fake looking nose. looking at the ceiling. The brawls and more when we come back here to UBS Arena. Coming up next on the Heroes Hockey pregame show, powered by Chevy. The Great One joins us for some incredible ice insights. And what's it like to play against your best friend? But first, this is Barstool Sports. Hear ye, hear ye. Has Barstool has arrived? Only one person to blame for all this madness. Right here. I'm the boss and the most athletic. Booyah, you all saw it. Roll that dice. Boom. Thank you. One bite, one bite. One bite, everyone knows the rules. Okay, I'm Dave Fortnoy, founder of Barstool Sports. Nobody could predict the wild ride that would set my life on. It took me to New York City. I stood in Times Square, and I told the world I sold half the company at Turner Group, that I had ambition bigger than the New York skyline. Nobody delivers results like Barstool Sports. That's over two decades providing the best results, which has taken us from my mom's basement to what I would say now is the leading digital media company on the planet. We can reach anybody, anywhere, any place better than anybody else. If you believe in what we're doing, if you believe in everything I've just said, now is the time to be part of it. Anybody who doubts us will pay the price in spades. If you believe in me, believe in us, get on board the rocket ship because the next stop is literally the moon. Music. Free your balls with Muggsy. Hey guys, boy do we have a product for you. The Muggsy Clutch Jeans. Tired of this happening? Regular jeans rip and tear, and they're just not comfortable. It's time to get Muggsy Clutch Jeans. They stretch for your comfort. There's only one Muggsy Clutch Jeans. They stretch, they fit, and they're comfortable. Free your balls once and for all with Muggsy Clutch Jeans at Muggsy.com. We're bringing big back. It's bigger, it's easier. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. In order to bring the wonders of the world home, I would fight. Tormented by what I knew was possible. The perfect cup of coffee. Stella Blue Coffee. We heard you crack open a blue light. Yo, come on in. You guys are here too? Goodbye, empty couch. Hello, standing room only. Labatt takes everything to the power of we. Here's your first question of the day, Team Proper Wild. What's the population of Papua New Guinea? Get this one and you win. 10,329,931. That's correct. Proper yes. Wild is a clean, all day energy shop designed to boost your productivity, focus, and energy without the jitters or crash. Free balls with Muggsy. Hey guys. Welcome back to the pregame show powered by Chevy at the 49th annual FDNY NYPD Heroes Hockey Game, live from UBS Arena in Elmont, New York. All right, let's throw it decked out in some great Muggsy, by the way, to Rear Admiral R.A. is in a wild fan scene right now. What's going on, R.A.? <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. We're here at the tailgate. Got to walk around, see what the folks are saying about the big game today. And look at that. Got to love the merch. Let's go see who's drinking what and doing what. How many years have you been coming to the game for? This is my second year coming. Okay, so is, is it going to be a little raucous atmosphere or what? Absolutely. I don't expect anything less. Okay, what about fights? I hate to say it, but yeah, I think so. I'm not a fan of them, but it gets the crowd going. So yeah, it. It's hockey, right? It's hockey. We're here with Roe in the parking lot getting a tailgate on. Who are we rooting for, Roe? I think I know by your sweatshirt. son. Sean Gargan, number 88. Let's oh. go, FDMY. What time to start tailgating out today? Uh, what was it? 2 o'clock. Now it's like 2.45, so we're having a good time. Out. All right, you better get cracked a little bit more. How many times have you been in this game? It's my first time. Always oh. wanted to come. Wow, break, breaking yourself in. Uh, well, what's your uh, blood alcohol at right now? Ah, uh, We're just getting warmed up. Hope, so give me an hour or so. We can work on it. We can work on it. We'll get there. Let's go. Come on. 
Guys, who's going to win this game today? Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know, but I know one thing. Let's all do a shot. Sounds like a lot of FDNY. Back to you in the studio. Let's go. All right, looking amazing in the pop collar mugs. We got great access out there. <laughs> That's even the better. World, eh? All right, can't talk now, folks. Even <laughs> better access in the locker room. Right, Let's go to the locker room. Let's go to the YYPD. <laughs>
Yeah, Wayne, this game is uh, you know played in honor of the brave men and women who have lost their lives, uh, some of which in 9-11. And the hockey community was directly impacted by 9-11 as well. And it, it hit, ho hit uh, close home to you with the, the passing of Ace Bailey and Mark Bavis. And I believe you're said to said that uh, uh, Ace Bailey was like a second father to you. Can you speak on the two, please? Well, I didn't know Mark really well, but Ace loved him. He was a younger guy, and I only met him a couple times, and Ace spoke very highly of him. And the one thing I knew about Ace, uh, if he said you were a good person, you were a great person. Uh, as far as Ace goes, I met him when I was 17 years old. Uh, I became uh, his roommate on the road. Uh, the two of us uh, spent a lot of great times together, Christmases. Uh, we traveled the world. Uh, he took care of me uh, as a teammate. He took care of me as a son. Uh, he took care of me as a friend. Uh, I can still remember, like it was yesterday, getting that call at 8.45 a.m., which was, I guess, 5.45 a.m. Uh, L.A. time. And my friend called and said, you know, there's been a crash in New York. And uh, from what I hear, I think Ace might have been on one of the planes. And I, I still remember my heart dropping it was gut-wrenching. I'm still good friends with his wife, uh, Kathy, and his son, Todd. Uh, um, it was one of the most uh, horrific days that I can remember in world history. And every person who was part of it and everyone who lives here uh, still thinks about it. But I always said, you know, people would say to me, how was it living in New York? And I would say, you know what? Yeah, people are aggressive and People can be tough, but I'll tell you one thing, they're the nicest people who ever lived. And I think one of the great things that we got out of 9-11, if there's any positives, is that people learned how nice the people in New York are and how much they rally around each other and how much they care for each other. And that's the, the good thing that we take out of it. But, you know, you don't replace human life. Um, Ace was so special to me. I can remember one time we uh, played in Cincinnati, and in those days... Uh, the WHA, you know, what travel wasn't like it is today. We went, we played in Cincinnati. We got up at uh, 5 30 in the morning. We flew from Cincinnati to Chicago, Chicago to Montreal, Montreal to Quebec City to play the Nordiques. And we got there around 3 15 in the afternoon. And I said, Ace, we got to lie down for a couple hours. And so we lied down and we missed our wake up call. And wake up call came in a little bit late. and reached me out of bed and he got me dressed and I said, Ace, you're not coming? He goes, no, no, they're not going to miss me. You make sure you get to the rink. He got a cab downstairs. I got in the cab. I made it to warm up. I remember I came in after warm up and he was sitting there and his hair was soaked and he was in his uniform and I said, Ace, I didn't see you on the ice for warm up. He goes, no, 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 they're not going to miss me. I just took a shower. <laughs> That's how Ace was. <laughs> a true, true legend of the game. Yeah, I miss him. Um, Biz had mentioned I miss to, him oh. tremendously. Well, Biz had mentioned to me, yeah, you Biz know, you, you, Biz had mentioned to me, you met a very special family. It was uh, Bernie and Barbara Heron, who lost their son Charlie tragically in 9/11, in working in the North Tower, and and I guess they, they they presented you with something. Can you explain that story for everyone? Yeah, Jan and I happened to be in Vegas for a charity event, and they were sitting by the pool and I can't remember exactly what they were there for, but they had sort of a family get together and I kind of walked by and they said, are you Wayne? And I said, yeah. <clears throat> and they said, you know, we had a son that tragically passed in nine 11. Here's his picture. And they gave me his card and I said, I'll keep it in my wallet for life. And uh, they said, okay. And we had a nice chat. We had a cold beverage together. And 10 years later, I was in Vegas again for another event. And this, um, Family, they were uh, friends of their family, and they said, can we ask you a question? You you saw that picture, our friend? Uh, their family told us that you were going to have it in your wallet. And I said, yeah, and I pulled my wallet out, and I still had the picture. Uh, I said, I promised the family I would never lose it. I would keep it forever. But you know what? Um, everyone went through a hard time, and for me to keep a little keepsake like that is special to me. Wayne, we can't thank you enough for joining the broadcast. It, it means a lot to us, and uh, and uh, I, I just can't thank you enough, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, Wayne. Hey, no, you guys are wonderful, and what you guys are doing for these guys tonight and these families is incredible. I know that uh, you guys do a lot of charitable work around North America. Uh, you guys are both wonderful. You guys have a great night. All right, thanks, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. See you hey, later. Guys. Peace. Thank you. Uh, the players are coming on the ice, being introduced. FDNY, now the NYPD. All right, Biz, I think you delivered.
I think so. Gretzky, I mean, Gretzky, Gretzky, yeah. pretty Biz good. is yeah. best friends with the great one now. So yeah. it's like, what hey, nice. hey, there's a reason they call him the great one. It's not for the on ice stuff. It's for the off ice stuff. He's all class, and I can't thank him enough for for helping us bolster the broadcast. Just a, a yeah, one amazing. guy. A one guy. Do you yeah, ever fine. get Do you ever get nervous, Biz, when you gotta let Whitney talk to him? You're like, hey, don't. <laughs> I'm gonna. This I'm is gonna, my I'm best I'm friend. I'm gonna steal. Yeah, gonna, right. That's I would have been like, I'll do this myself. Hey, Whitney's so cool. He gets one round of golf with him. I guarantee they're best friends, and I'm the one on the other side. I'm in. pretty sure he's a great one too because of what he did on the ice. Also. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the points didn't hurt either. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely electric. NYPD being introduced right now. You're looking at the ice. We got a guy coming out here. There in a he second. is. That's Dan O'Donoghue. That That's is their the best player, it, the catalyst to their if offense. If NYPD is going to get the win tonight, he's going to have to have a big one, which he has year in and year out. So it's all up to him and the goalie. I say. That's a guy with an NHL contract in his past, right there, trying to turn. That's the flow right there oh behind him. Look at the at tank all. next to him. Yeah. Is that, that Jersey Jerry? God. That is. Unbelievable. Let's see that guy again. <laughs> that, that is Jersey Jerry. Jersey Jerry. Jerry. Oh. Holy gosh. They're letting him play. <laughs> He's on the big cat diet plan. Yeah, he Look looks like Schroeder. 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 Jersey Jerry. That's Jerry my number, now. boys. That's number 19, 19. right there. Oh, that's your number. That's, legend. I always say when everyone's like most that's famous Whitney. 19, I'm like Ryan <laughs> yeah, Whitney. Thank you. Thank you. You know what's up. <laughs> Steve no, Eisen. Steve Eisen. Not a guy who just played his last game for the Blackhawks last night. No, it's Ryan Whitney. They're coming out on the ice. We're getting closer and and closer to game time. It's getting rowdy in here, Joe. It yeah, is. Yeah. They're, they're, they're they're we got there. a guy with a Biz uh, Coyotes jersey yeah. over here. That's, that's a knockoff from no, China. He found it, it in the, tra <laughs> <found laughs> <in> the trash <laughs> can. <laughs> a lot of Islanders jerseys, obviously, right, as they're getting ready for playoffs, yep. too. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're right in the middle yeah, of getting I think, ready. I think losing one of the suites here, too. Checking out a few oh, prospects. Oh, yeah. You, you know it's a big game, and the fans are getting excited. Whenever we do these type of things, I got the headset on, and guys are having, like, full conversations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, big cat, who do you got in the lake? I'm yeah. like, dude, I can't hear I'm, I'm working. I'm working. Yeah, sure. I cannot hear a thing uh, you're saying. Off the ice, these two teams, they love each other. They help each other out, but not today. They're not best friends here in UBS Arena whenever they square off one time a year. What happens when best friends square off at center ice? There's no such thing as friends on ice. I went to Division I college hockey uh, at Mercer University. From there, I was able to fortunately sign an NHL contract with, with Arizona, a two-year NHL deal. Played a couple games with Paul Bissonette. Uh, he, was my, he was my winger for a few games. We had a, a quick stint in Portland, Maine together. Went to Pembroke, Ontario. I played in uh, the CJHL for a year. And then I went to Mercyhurst University. Played a year of pro, coast, and AHL. One of my, my college roommate, Dan O'Donnell, he was on the cops on the ice. We're not friends, but the minute you know the whistle blows, we're best friends again. Yeah, Maddie's a good buddy of mine. Um, probably one of my best friends, honestly. But uh, we weren't we weren't always that way. Growing up, we were rivals. Then when we were like 19, 20, we still we played junior together, and then we went to school together, and we just became like really good friends. Still talk almost every day. Yeah, we'll still uh, we'll still chirp each other, you know, through our group texts. Uh, you know, friendly chirping, but um, you know, I obviously. I'm so happy for him and respect what he does um, for FD, and I couldn't be more proud of what, he, what he's doing over there. But uh, like I said, once it comes to that game, there's no friendships. You know, on the ice, he's like he tried to fight me the other in the last game. Like I'm, I mean, I wasn't gonna fight him, but he was serious about it. But I didn't, I didn't feel like fighting him. You know, Matty Zay is my best friend. You know, I'm calling him out now. So if he wants to square up center ice, I'm, I'm happy to do so. Friends fighting today. Wow. Is he? <laughs> Was he, gonna happen. Did, was he stuck really with you on his line? Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. That's why he's not playing pro anymore. Yeah, that's why he left. He left to get, to get better <laughs> lines with, yeah, with the NYPD. Uh, there's that black guy we referenced. He's yeah, already right. stuffed up. H him and Zay are both rocking bl black eyes right now, so they might have scrapped in the parking lot. I don't know when they picked those up because at practice when I went, they didn't have them. These guys are ready to go. The pregame ceremonies are incredible, but we're going to have a quick break. And while we there's do Zay that, right there, there yeah. are some celebrities who have some interest in this game today. Let's hear from them. Hey everybody, it's Jeremy Roenick, and yes, it is that time again. No, it's not the NHL playoffs. The biggest rivalry in all of the country 
and I can't wait. And I do have to say, I'm a little biased to my buddy Rob Shear at the fire department. He saves lives, puts out fires, and now he's going to kick some butt on the ice. Hey, I'm Anthony Stolars. Hey, I'm Ryan Strom. Hey, I'm Trevor Zegers. Uh We're all from or have lived in the New York area, and we uh, love the FDNY. Uh, I just want to wish you best of luck in your game, and thanks for all you guys do, and uh, best of luck. Gentlemen, Kitch here. Rumor has it there's a game coming up, and I'm sorry I can't be there to lead you guys uh, in points, hits, saves, block shots. Sorry, NYPD. I love you. I support you. But this is a big game. It's got to be the fire department. It's a lot about the warrior spirit, which tonight I know you guys will show. Bring home a W. Um, all the best. Good luck. Kick some We're all gathered here to celebrate the first ever electric Chevy Silverado. It's a Chevy, it's a Silverado, it's electric, and it's badass. It's Barstool's most valuable truck. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with it. Whoa, 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 why do you two goons get the orange one? I want the Sorry, orange truck. one. Yeah. 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 Chevy Silverado EV, Barstool's most valuable truck. Let the cheese drop. I'm going big. We're bringing big back. It's bigger. Cheesier. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. All right, we're wrapping up the pregame show. New NYPD, FDNY, this incredible rivalry. The ceremonies are beginning. We are getting ready for one of the best nights in hockey all year long, guys. No NHL tonight, guys. This no. is it. This, this is, is it. This You're not going to watch basketball? Uh, I, I'm excited. Enough about <laughs> basketball. <laughs> You're How do you even say that pick. word in here? Uh, quick Sick pick league. for me. I think FDNY is going to pull it off. I think it's going to be a close, low-scoring game. Three to two over time. Wow, six in a row, hey? I'm going NYPD to end this streak to get it going 4-3. I'll go PD 6-5. Ooh. Oh, okay, score. all right. Big, one big cat guarantee. I'm just flipping Listen, it. Bravest, like the Nets. And, bravest and finest out here. I'm a tremendous coward, so I told my son to give me a pick. He likes fire trucks, so I'm going with that. Yeah, you got a problem with it? Take it's it over there. I got lots of fire buddies. That's not me. I got lots of fire buddies, but I think, you know, it's like you're playing roulette. PD. It's going to hit the other color. Yeah. Hey, the good news, though, these guys are staying up top here for they in between are, they periods. Are. We'll be up here, but good luck, Biz, on the call with Jake call, I'm excited. Good luck between the bench and here. Wait, the, you're the you're the lucky Pierre, right? He's gonna end up with a black guy you're just the, like Zane O'Donoghue. Uh, yeah, the I, I, I'd, I'd rather be uh, maybe Keith Jones. No, you're the lucky I, no, Pierre. I'd rather be Keith Jones. They call it the I'd lucky rather Pierre be Keith Jones. Hockey. No, yeah. thank you. No, I'll be like me down there. I'll be buddy. like Army. Yeah. I'll make the Army <laughs> dog. We, we, we the time to There's a lot of booze going on oh, right now in the crowd. What's happening? I think they just announced Rico Bosco. He's on the ice. Nailed it. Biz Tanner's guy in the building, by the way. That's the first award of the night. Nobody was Tanner that made us all. I got stuck next to him. I'm a bag of milk. Yeah. Uh, oh, terrible. The commissioner. Okay, that's who's getting booed Oh, that's down good. There. I that's like that. It's like, yeah, that, it's like yeah, Gary Bettman. That, oh. yeah, yeah. It fits I, right I in. Got the, I got the bronzer on a Wits bag. Yeah. <laughs> it was the first time, but the minute I got here, like, wit, we got to put some makeup I'm on I'm like, you. whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't put me next to Biz. <laughs> I'm just, I was just hoping I'd get my Muggsy outfit looking just. We look, uh, like, I, I, I yeah, we look good. We look good. You guys look so, better in the so suits. but comfortable. Yeah. Looks, I mean, oh, it's unbelievable. No, some guy on Twitter said, God forbid you put on a suit. I said, God forbid you shut the F up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, these, are, these are hockey we outfits good. right here. Yeah, for we look amazing. Thanks, hey, so Muggsy. On, on yeah. a serious note, though, this is one of the coolest parts about the game, if not the coolest part, is this pregame ceremony and how they honor everybody and the families. So it's a, it's a pretty cool gesture. It's an emotional and, uh, moment. A, a great, no a great dry eyes in the house, they say. No. No.
No, it gets very serious, very emotional early on. It the gives the, boy, is intent, gives this the is boys a reason to really get fired up when you see what these families have gone through. It, it keeps everything in perspective, and then all of a sudden, these guys are ready to go once puck drops. Some center ice. How early? What's, what is the quickest we're going to see a fight here tonight? I'm hoping, within the, I'm hoping within the first minute, maybe first few minutes, and that's what PD wants. If they don't get that fight, that could be problems for them. PD's got to they got to score early, I think. I think they, gotta, they can't be chasing FDNY. They've got to score early if they want to stay in this game. I think they've got to get out to a great start so they're not chasing these guys. It's like the Isles in this building. In control. Absolutely. The Islanders building. That's how they play. And, and going back to the coaches speaking in the locker room, FDNY really emphasizing keep your head. Don't get sucked into yeah. all the BS. You know they're going to try to they're drag on you into the ice. He's hard on the young guys. They don't be a stupid young guys. like Torx. <laughs> well, you young <laughs> league. You heard that, Biz. Is that last year, FDNY, uh, the Chickens guys went in the locker room afterwards, and they were excited, but they weren't that amped because they've, they've done it so many times. It's, yeah. it's business as usual. It, it's business as usual. And I, I mentioned earlier, I stopped by the practices. If, if I, The reason I gave my earlier prediction, it looked like the FDNY guys were in better shape, a little crisper with their passes, taking a little more serious. Although when we did film the commercials, uh, the NYPD guys were a lot better. They were a lot better actors. So it seems like FDNY a lot more serious coming into this type of game. So we'll see what the result is. Are we is. not giving the goalies enough credit? I'm looking at the score. Six oh, to five, four two to three. MVPs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm yeah. Just hold, I'm, I'm, I want goals. So yeah, I hope right. yeah, goals. We, we, we need to see some goals. I don't <laughs> need a one nothing game no, doing no, between the benches. I want goals, but I want a close game. I want a good game. Uh, I think they're going to give it to us. Uh, final thoughts, Biz, before we let you go, and then we send it on down to the ice. I'm just excited to take it all in. I have not seen a, a second of, of this game so far. I'm going to go down and call the game with Jake Mars. I said it. I think 3-2 FDNY. I think it's going to overtime. I think it's going to be the best game in, in the history of the game. Oh, for me, it's a year in the making. Actually, two years in the making. And all of a sudden, we're here. Honored to get to be a part of this production and to actually see these guys fight it out for a big win. That's what's cool enough for me. We'll be back up here during the intermission. Big Cat. Uh, Merle's going to join us. Colby, it started out pretty cold when we started this pregame show, but it is heating up inside this building. The 49th annual NYPD FDNY hockey game is coming right up. 22-year veteran firefighter with the FDNY. He was a member of L-148 for 20 years before getting promoted to lieutenant. On September 11th, Lieutenant Maiello responded to the attacks on the World Trade Center as a fireman. Lieutenant Maiello gave 22 years of dedicated service and passed away on December 26, 2021, while on duty serving and protecting the residents of New York City. He is survived by his wife Irene, son Jake, daughter Cecilia, mother Eileen, brother James, and sister Gina. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to take a moment to honor FDNY and NYPD individuals who we recently lost due to illnesses related to September 11th. From the NYPD, Detective William Soto, Detective Valerie K. Jacobs, Sergeant James P. Bast, Police Officer Pedro Garcia, Police Officer Patrick G. Monroe, Detective Emilio Laboy, Detective Thomas L. Neal, Detective Mark Rodon, Detective Jewel Jenkins, Police Officer Lawrence J. Doherty, Detective Leonard D. Coco Jr., Sergeant Emmanuel Alonghi, Lieutenant John C. Zonneveld, Detective Gerald T. Brennan, Sergeant David T. Yu, Detective Edward R. Gorzinski, Detective Peter Gianfrancesco, Police Officer Rafael A. Laura, Detective Jennifer S. Abramowitz, Sergeant Mark Smith, Police Officer George F. Dorini, Inspector Michael E. O'Neill, Detective Thomas J. Gallo, Sergeant Nemesio Vera, Police Officer Reginald Cooley, Sergeant Peter C. Woods, Police Officer Carl R. Ludwig, 
Detective Charlie W. Mackey, Sr. Police Officer Terrence P. Connolly. Police Officer Nicholas Corpero. Police Officer Andrew D. Stromfeld. Sergeant Thomas A. Byrne. Detective Harry O. D'Onofrio. And Sergeant Natalie Brill. And from the FDNY, Lieutenant John Vigliotti, Firefighter Alfred Artisona, Supervising Fire Marshal John McCauley, Firefighter Robert Reynolds, Firefighter Michael Verzi, Deputy Chief Vincent Mandala, Dr. Sabina Ostalski, EMT Stephen Thorson, Lieutenant Arthur Darby, Firefighter Richard Toshak, Supervising Fire Marshal James Devery, Firefighter Edward Heronik, Captain Paul Schmalsreed, Firefighter Ronald Kirchner, Firefighter William Hughes, Firefighter Greg Lawrence, Battalion Chief Joseph McKee, Lieutenant James McCauley, Jr. Battalion Chief Stephen Garotti. Firefighter George Tiptree. Firefighter Peter Cheeto. Firefighter John McDonnell. Battalion Chief Brian O'Flaherty. Firefighter Michael Ariaga. Firefighter Thomas Healy. EMT Patricia Scaduto, Lieutenant Michael Hans, Lieutenant Donald Kelly, Firefighter Thomas McDougall, Marine Wiper Bruce Peet, Lieutenant Joseph Brosey, Battalion Chief James Hanley, Battalion Chief Vincent Lyons, Paramedic Peter Bushy, Paramedic Paul Daniels, Captain Gary Nybro, and firefighter James Maker. Now please join us in a moment of silence as we remember our fallen heroes. Thank you.
Presenting tonight's colors are members of the FDNY and NYPD. And here to sing our national anthem, please welcome police officer Brianna Fernandez. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Ladies and gentlemen, Brianna Fernandez. We are moments away from the starting lineups and puck drop. Thanks for watching the 49th annual FDNY NYPD Heroes pregame show, powered by Chevy. Somewhere on the other side of the world, I found something special. And in order to bring the wonders of the world home, I would fight. I would stop at nothing to accomplish a dream, tormented by what I knew was possible. The perfect cup of coffee. Stella Blue Coffee. It's just really good coffee. this week. Somebody's-got-the-munchies.com and order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub. Hello, friends. It's the best time of the year. Imagine owning the world's greatest golf merchandise by the most common golfers of our time. The spring line from Barstool Golf. You'll love to wear it. New York City. The epicenter of the greatest rivalry in amateur sports. This is our year. This is the best hockey team that's going to be on the ice tonight. The city's finest versus the city's bravest. That's what it's all about. That's more than a game, man. We're all the same guys. We're all, you know, good men. We all have a, a duty to service, but we're also super competitive. It's more than a fucking game. It's a rivalry of respect, a rivalry of tradition, rooted in history, rooted in honor of their fallen. We play for every single name that shows up on that board before we drop that puck, and I don't think there's anything more important than that. Like the late, great Herb Brooks once said, 
great moments are born from great opportunities. And tonight, for these everyday heroes, it's an opportunity on the biggest stage. I mean, for that one day, that 60 minutes of hockey, you can unload. We're not there to win, not there to lose in front of, you know, 30,000 people. One game in an NHL arena for a year of bragging rights, honor, and everything else that comes along with it. This is it right here, right here. Live from UBS Arena on Long Island, just outside of New York City, it's time for the 49th annual FDNY versus NYPD Heroes Hockey Game. Tonight, New York's bravest and New York's finest battle it out in one of the best traditions that the Big Apple has to offer. It's a sold out crowd here at the home of the New York Islanders, 17,255 strong. And these two departments are just minutes away from facing off. Moments ago, we had the ceremonial puck drop taking place, featuring players from both the FDNY and NYPD. Everyone gathering here today to, of course, claim ultimate bragging rights and raise a ton of money for a ton of different charities. And we want to welcome you up to the broadcast booth. He is the former Pittsburgh Penguin and Arizona Coyote, Paul Dissonette. I'm Jake Marsh. Thanks for joining us tonight. So biz, it's plain and simple. If you are a cop, if you are a firefighter in New York City, you have this day circled on your calendar every single year. It's electric. It was, it's my first time here. Last year, Mike Grinnell, Sean Apuzo, and Elliot Fish came, and they said, guys, we have to broadcast this game. It's electric. You saw right from the pregame ceremony how special it is, how emotional it is. Now, the talk is cheap. Let's drop the puck and get this party started. It's going to be a feisty one. Already I'm hearing rumblings, Jake, of maybe a potential fight off the opening face-off. We will see, but either way, we are very thankful for all you people tuning in this broadcast. Thank you, everyone, from Barstool, and of course, FDNY and NYPD for allowing us to be a part of this special, special night. Absolutely. Special night, special event, and before the FDNY and NYPD do battle on the ice, let's go to Wit Between the Benches, presented by Pink Whitney. Thanks a lot, boys. What an exciting night. Gary, I'm down here. What a great evening this is. Been a tough five-year run for you guys. What do you tell the boys leading to this game to end that streak? Just keep it simple, work hard, leave it all out there. There's no tomorrow. And Pete, for you guys, it's been amazing. How do you keep them emotionally in check to not take a bad penalty early? Well, listen, it's, it, it, they, they love to play for each other, and, and, and they depend on each other, and that's how it works, and they don't want to lose. You heard it there, boys. Well said. They're ready to go. These teams are ready to go. Thanks for throwing it down here. All right. Thank you, Wick. Great to get the coaches right before puck oh, drop. Yeah, look at the huddles. Look at the huddles. What do you think's being said, Jake? A lot of things that want to make <laughs> you run through a brick wall. All right, Biz, it's time for our Labatt Blue Light starting lineup. Let's begin with FDNY. What sticks out most when it comes to these skaters? Well, I mean, look at it. right now, it's Matt Zay. He's really the stud as far as offense of output and what he's able to do there, not only score goals, but distribute the puck. Uh, for me, the important the important is uh, the goalies in net right now. I mean, Bissett on the NYPD side, then you're going FDNY to Bataglia. These two guys stuck out. Their skating is excellent. They are both the MVP of, of last year's game. So really, I think it's going to be a low scoring game. Yeah, the 24 year old from Staten Island allowed just right, one goal in last year's game. Switching over to the NYPD starting lineup. Been some professional experience on your screen right now. Yeah, Danny O'Donohue, my former line mate with the Portland Pilots, an excellent skater. He's got the size, he's got the hands, he's able to distribute, he's got the shot. He's like a modern day Mario out there. So Jake, I'm, I'm really excited to watch these guys play and get after it. Absolutely, in the net for the cops, it's Brandon Bassett from Farmingdale. The goalie was also the team MVP last year. He has five years of service under his belt. Well, folks, the wait is finally over. FDNY, NYPD, Chapter 49. Here we go. Puck drop. Look at them already chatting off to the side here. Our officiating crew, led by referees Ryan Knapp and Mike Greeny, linesman Patrick DePuzo, James Nardello. And they're already talking to the coaches, maybe calming things down. 
For me, it's the NYPD who have to get off to a good start. They got to stay disciplined. I know they're going to try to rile up the FDNY, but they're not going to. They're going to. They're not going to take the bait, so to speak, Jake. They're going to keep their heads on their shoulders, stay disciplined, and hopefully work things on the power play if NYPD takes some stupid penalties. And we're off and running oh. and early. A quick shot by FDNY. That was Chris Princiata. They call him the Princess. Yeah, sometimes those are tricky when you just punt the puck into the offensive zone. All of a sudden, it back kicks. Quick shot on the other end for the cops. The rebound is above the crossbar. These two teams offensively, they're loose. Very loose early on. A couple great A scoring chances at both ends. A lot, of, a lot of clogging up in the middle of the ice, too. Really trying to get those screens on those goaltenders, Jake. Three shots already for NYPD. They have not won this game since 2016. It's four wins and one tie since then in favor of FDNY. Some trouble in the neutral zone. Puck up for grabs. Uh-oh, he broke he his stick. His stick. Like and then the goal! <laughs> Vinny Lopes capitalizes on the broken stick of the Cops. Oh, that's just a devastating play in the neutral zone. I'm not sure how that stick broke, but Vinny Lopes, known for his speed, just shot out of a cannon. And I don't think Bissette knew where it was going. It looked like he just poked at that puck. And we're going to get the replay here. But not a great start for the NYPD. I mentioned the first five minutes were going to be key for them. They look stunned right now. Looking at the bench, don't know who to throw out. And here it is. His defense partner kicks it over. And he had no clue. And like I mentioned, didn't take much just to poke at that puck. Win. I'm going to throw it down to you. What did you see there? bounce an awful bounce right there for the police guys I mean you break a stick all of a sudden you see what happens but a very smart play to just throw it on net with Bassett kind of struggling there to find the puck well army touched on it in the the pregame Lopes bringing that speed he's like a Swiss army knife out there he really does a lot of things to benefit this FDNY team and now they're back in the offensive zone putting on even more pressure dude. yeah biz that's actually the second straight goal in this game for Lopes he was the hero last year scored the game winner in overtime and here he is breaking the ice not even two minutes in getting the boys fired up it's that anticipation too though he was aware that that stick broke that's why he got shot out of the can and typically we're gonna get one more look at it too for the folks at home and Byrne just trying to slide it over D to D just a typical neutral zone play. I guess we're not going to get that next look, but when we do get a bit of time, and an offensive zone faceoff here for the FDNY. This is key. They got to. Oh, that might be a hook. No call yet. Got away with one there, Marshy. Officiating crew. But again, FDNY came in as the favorite. Another opportunity to kick from number 88, Sean Gargan. Keeps it in the offensive zone. For FDNY, already up 1-0. That one from the slot, a swing and a miss from Michael Keane. Yeah, Keane, great separation there in the slot area. Backs off the defender about five feet. That gave him that open lane to get that shot through. Intercepted by NYPD. A flick into the glove of the goalie, Nick Pataglia, who had to make three saves on that opening possession. Yeah. And here we go. Dermody getting in there. That's what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to stir it up. We knew this was going to come, especially now that they're down. We're going to probably see a lot more of it. But FDNY not taking the bait, remaining calm. Let's see what's going on with the face-off responsibilities here. The majority of these two minutes have been played on the opposite side of the ice. Let's see if NYPD can keep it in their offensive zone. They can't right now. Oh, just a terrible play that Romero throws it up the wall to nobody. Another turnover, the wraparound. Ricochets, stays in the zone. Lieutenant Joe Sanger, the assistant captain, kept it alive there. Number 10 in black. Another opportunity. Shot deflected. It was Stephen Kelly. He's got it, flicks, and into the mitt of Brandon Bassett. Way too sloppy here early on for the NYPD. Way too sloppy. The game is one of loss in the wall work, Jake. Mm -hmm. That's just bad turnovers, especially on that half wall as a forward. You got to make sure that puck either gets out or you make the play to the middle. All right, so another face off in the offensive zone for the fire department. 
little musical chairs here as Matthew Gervaisi comes back in to the circle. And it remains with FDNY. Oh no, two on one. Here we one. go, it's a Bad two pitch. on one. Stemke passes. Oh, deflected. What a save by Bataglia. Behind the goal right now, second chance, no. Stays in the zone, that one way too high. And it'll go back to FDNY, a golden opportunity there for the fire, for the cops, excuse me, Bits. Yeah, just a terrible pinch by the FDNY, sprung them loose on that two on one, and that saucer pass was absolutely stunning. Did Bataglia get a piece of that? Looked like it, we'll have to get a look at the next stoppage. Oh, oh there's our big first hit. big hit. That was... A big one by Joe Gilhooly. You have him mic'd up. He's got a huge Brooklyn accent. Shot from O'Donoghue, who your former teammate Biz misses. And here we go. Three on three for the moment. Shot from Prince oh, Yada. Another massive hit. Gobbled up. All right, things are starting to open up physically. What did you see on the other end, Biz? Well, this is going to be the big hit I think we're going to see first. Oh no, this is a two-on-one, excuse me. Look at that saucer pass. Just a beauty. And this is the one open ice, elbow down, just perfectly executed. That's as clean as they come. We're not going to get a look at the other one in the corner, but just a couple of massive ones. Biz, both goalies, too. They've got to be feeling the heat in these first few minutes. Already eight total shots on goal, less than four minutes of play. Absolutely. FDNY maintaining possession right now off that early goal from Vinny Lopes. Beautiful outlet pass there. More of that crispy clean stuff. And they're going to find themselves in less trouble, Jake. Here's Derek Kern. And shot. Rebound. No, what are you seeing? Ice side right now. Boys, NYPD is doing a great job not getting down at that one goal. It was a bad bounce, but they've really bounced back after that. A couple big saves at the other end, and they haven't really let that bad bounce kind of take them away from their game plan here. Yeah, they're definitely bringing the physicality and pressure. Another one! Matt Say! Do nothing! Firefighters! That was one of the players to watch coming in, and this is going to be a perfectly executed three on two. Another odd man rush. So NYPD just getting sloppy defensively. And that was a perfect cross and drop. And how about that shot low blocker for all you kids watching at home? Watch this execution. This is going to be a great play by the goalie to keep things going and advancing. What do we say? Half wall is where the games are going to be won. And that's what springs the three on two. And a perfect pass to the inside. They do not get the block. And that is just an absolute beauty. Watch this pass to the middle here. Avoids the screen. Low blocker. Can't do nothing about that, folks. 12 inches off the ice, just inside that left post. Keep the change. 2-0 FDNY. Off to a red-hot start. Black eye, no problem. And Biz, get this. Last year in the 2-1 win for FDNY, the two goal scorers, Matt Zay, Vinny Lopes. Today, first two goal scorers. I Matt Zay, Vinny Lopes. I they were talking a lot of trash coming in this game, and right now they're backing it up. Wick, I agree with you, man. They didn't get rattled early on. It seems like NYPD was coming back, but that's a stunner. Looks like we're going to have the game's first penalty here, Jake. It's going to be FDNY trip in the defensive zone below the goal line. Wit, what needs to happen here? You got to get some shots on net, right? I mean, I just mushed them, Biz. It was the Whitney mush. I said they were doing a good job. <laughs> Boom, bucks in the back of the net. But you get a call here. All of a sudden, if you can get this game to 2-1, it's no problem. All right, taking a look here. This penalty triggering the first Chevy power play, Biz. Yeah, it looked like he got a stick up in the midsection. Can't really blame the ref for calling that one. I know he wants to let the boys play, but two minutes well worth it. All right, Witt, you are ringside now for this first power play opportunity. They need this one, you said. Yeah, PD's getting loud on the bench here. They've kind of had enough. You can tell they're disgusted. And FDNY, they're shoving it in their face. There's a lot of smack talk going on down here. This is a big power play. 
Penalty on Brian White. Let's see if the cops can take advantage. From above the circles, another save by Nick Nick Pataglio, last year's MVP. Yeah, that's not going to do it. They need a little bit more net front presence as that forward comes off the wall as the flank. He's going to need a player for NYPD in the goalie's eyes. We know if Pataglia sees it, he's going to stop it. Tremendous goaltender. And Biz, it's not like the cops aren't getting enough shots on goal. Shots on goal seven to five right now. Pretty even in that department. And, and a couple glorious opportunities at that. We go back to that two on one and not executing where Bataglia ended up getting a pad on it after that wonderful saucer pass. They still got plenty of time to work it here. A minute and a half on this power play there. Seem to be looking for the flanker on the right side of the ice. On the top of the circle. Entry feed, patience, one-timer, oh. rebound, no! Like you said, Biz, the, the police department getting great opportunities, they just can't cash in early on. Yeah, yeah, no, there was better net front presence there, it seemed like, eh, Witt? No doubt, but they gotta get a little bit more of that, Biz. He, Bataglia's too good, you're gonna need a tip, you're gonna need a screen, one of those dirty goals. They gotta get a guy in front, and I'm thinking maybe get some shots from the point. Yeah, well, just one goal allowed last year. He was the MVP of pass here. Gil Hooley, 3 nothing. FDNY, oh my! Wow, they are shook. The set is shook. He puts up his arms in disgust. He's saying, where is the defense here? Just sloppy wow. neutral zone. Wow, and we're gonna break this bad boy down on the replay here. Just sloppy in the neutral zone. It ends up getting picked off, and as soon as it does, he springs for the loose puck. And then boom, forehand, backhand, in the back of the net, over the pad. And just a great job fighting off the defender there. Exact same goal. Oh, we got a timeout here, too. The oh. coach is snapping there on the bench. But it seems like with the, the FDNY have found the weak spot on Bissett. That's two goals, low blocker. Biz, you wouldn't believe the ripping right now going into the NYPD. This coach is saying, settle the F down. Settle down, boys. So there's some disgust over there. And meanwhile, on the other side, FDNY could not be any happier. And we talked in the pregame about the team's feet for the fire, and it's showing right now. Because through the neutral zone, they're blowing by guys like they're not even out there. Yeah, sometimes the focus seems to be a little bit too much on the physicality but it's more about execution especially a simple play there on the power play you got the man advantage and it seems like he just threw it away in the neutral zone with you're the power play guy as the defenseman you gotta you gotta snap it around a little bit more crisp and clean than that you need some you need some poise biz and right there that's ugly you gotta know you have time and space and you can't be giving it away to these guys they're too skilled that looked like me on the power play <laughs> snapping around back there, sending up and over Rick to my teammate. That was Witt between the benches presented by Pink Whitney. Joe Gilhooley, by the way, this is his first FDNY MYPD FDNY. game, and he cashes in less than seven minutes into his debut in this 49-year rivalry. The 29-year-old from Brooklyn. No one NY in front, Biz. No one in front. Yeah, it's. I don't know what's going on here. They're so concerned about the flanker and working up the top of the diamond. Get a point shot. Get the middle of the ice right here. Slap shot denied. Through. Good defense there by the captain, Jim Becker, Rico Bosco's cousin. The personality from Barstool Sports. Oh, another big hit and turnover. And here's Lopes. Vinny Lopes has one today. Gets denied by P.J. Byrne, a former player of the Danbury Trashers. DNY in the neutral zone. Zay has a goal, tries for the second on the backhand. Gets his own rebound, though. And it goes back to neutral, everyone coming back on side. That's a long shot. They tried to catch Bassett sleeping there, Biz. That's all right, trying to slow down the pace right now, especially with that 3 nothing lead. Hey, Biz, let me tell you, this Matthew Zay is a player. A lot of skill, a lot of speed. You can see the creative part of his game. You can see him driving wide. He's not afraid. So shifty out there. All right. Less than seven minutes into this one. Three nothing FDNY coming out coming up after the short break. We might found out where the F is Dave Portnoy hiding. Three nothing bits. Yeah, we're going to look at this celebration. There he is. Zay fired up. Look at that. He wants to hear the crowd. Not too many people barking at him right now. 
as that NYPD bench is a very, very quiet. Oh yeah, these pants stretch a lot so you can get a deep squat. Real f***ing comfortable jeans. Oh no, they're not waterproof, but you can drink on the roof. Real f***ing comfortable jeans. Run with your boys in the park and it's a dinger still dark. Real f***ing comfortable jeans. with dog make it you'll be a legend forever miss it you'll be a loser are you guys done sorry ladies pick whitney shots all around this guy's buying what pink whitney for legendary moments <laughs> Ciao. Real quick, just wanted to say how proud I am that Barcelona Sports is involved with the Fire Department, New York Fire Department, New York Police Department hockey game. Um, as you can see, those are the rolling hills of Tuscany behind me. I have a, a wedding in Italy this weekend. Bad timing because it's, I don't know, in 20 years, the only thing I've actually wanted to attend this hockey game. Um, so again, just want to thank everybody involved for letting Barcelona be a part of it. In two decades of doing this company, it's probably... Um, the best thing we've ever been a part of. So again, thank you. Good luck. Try not to drop the gloves and go nuts at each other. We've got enough shit we got to worry about. But um, just remember, Barstool always has uh, both the fire department, the police department. We have your back 24-7 all the time. Again, thank you guys, uh, and I'm sorry I missed it. All right, Dave Portnoy, one celebrity who may not be here. You're looking at Rampage Jackson and Rob Shear, the assistant captain for FDNY. Vince. I love it. I love it. Some great shout outs there. Great to hear from Dave as well, and oof, that's one scary man. What's up, everyone? It's Rampage Jackson here. I'm wishing my brother number eight, Rob Shear, and the FDNY hockey team the best luck today. Go get them. Go get them cops. Go get them. And make sure you get that one that broke me the ticket. <laughs> they could probably use them right now, down 3 yeah. nothing. early. They should put them in net. He's the size of a house. Hey, Biz, I got a question for you. What can change the momentum in a hockey game? You were a part of a few of them. A scrap. There needs to be maybe a little bit of a scrap calling someone out, trying to change what's going on out here. Yeah, I, t I just don't see FDNY really playing that game. Yep. They're just out skating them right now, out smarting them, out executing them. That'll be icing on the missed feed going back the other way. You guys said in the pregame, if NYPD is going to win this game, they have to make it chippy. We haven't seen it totally yet. We've seen a few hits, but nothing crazy like you and what we're just talking well, about. Well, they can't because FDNY is out skating them right now. And right now, it seems like the cops are just chasing them all over the ice. But right now, they have an offensive zone face-off. And the centerman could snap it right back, and they got to get something going. They got to get something cooking, and they got to turn the lines over quick. It says shots are 7-7. Seven, seven. It certainly doesn't feel like it down here, boys. Not at all. The captain, Charlie Ventisinque, for the cops. Let's see if his presence on the ice can change the momentum. Of course, a long way to go, but three goals in eight minutes. A big one to climb out of for NYPD, looking to win this game for the first time in seven years. We got all the sticks falling on the NYPD bench, boys. Things are not going smooth <laughs> down here. All the sticks fell over. It's Princiata. Shot saved with the blocker by Bassett. Just a great cycle down in the offensive zone as they continue to skate all around the NYPD. Winning every battle, every loose puck. Oh, drops it down. That was Derek Kern, the 44-year-old. 14 years of service for him. Played a part in that 2014 brawl. Also serves as general manager. Oh, my, they caught what the goalie block. off guard. Huge defense there, Wet. What'd you see from your An angle? Absolutely game-changing block, possibly right there. It gets four nothing. This game's over. That from, saved the goal. From our angle, he had a wide open net. And you talk about the execution for the FDNY right now. It started right off the start of that shift with a one face-off and the way they break out. I love how they're spreading the offense. Look at that pass, bit. Oh Saucer through goodness. the neutral zone. Gargan tries the backhand, denied by a cop. 
And here we go on the other end. It's Antonitis intercepted and another big hit. Bodies on the ice right now. Maybe the tides are starting to turn. Oh, another big one. That one near the head. So this is the game that NYPD wants to play. You're goddamn right it is, Biz. You're gonna need O'Donohue to have a shift here. Well, we haven't said Dan O'Donohue's name yet. He signed a two-year deal with the Coyotes, your former teammate in the Always Hungry League yep. with the Portland Pirates, Biz. <laughs> he was Jake. down there with me. We were, actually, we were actually in a line together. How did you know about the Always Hungry League, Jake? Jesus. Do my research. <laughs> That's amazing. Here we go. It's going to be offside. They got to tag yeah. up. Does tag up. Look at Zay back. And he was Tozer. still offside. I believe Jesus. that was Vinny Lopes who entered. I believe the tag up was successful. Here we go. Here we go. Here Behind we go. the goal. Here we Things go. He's getting chippy. The crowd on its feet. Went from my angle. Looks like Zay's trying to start that with his former roommate and teammate at Mercyhurst, Dan O'Donohue. It's on the it's on the the wall. Tough for you to see, Biz. That was actually O'Donohue. He rolled him out after the offside, and he kind of okay. tried giving it to him. And Zay's just trying to stay away. Look at now O'Donohue's backing off. He's calling out his friend here. I think. No tummy sticks during this game. No, just. Here's how it started, guys. Zay's laughing getting off the ice. He's, got, he's going, it's okay, nothing to do yeah. with it. Yeah, he did give him that extra shove. That's it all. Oh, look at that. Stinky Met right in the face. The old Stinky Met, eh, Wit? The old Stinky Met. <laughs> he guys smells like shit. Jake, you ever smelt the Stinky Met in a hockey game? No. All right. Oh, uh, well. Jake, you should smell them in the Always Hungry League. <laughs> oh, geez. they're even worse. Do they yeah, somehow they, smell worse than in the NHL? Oh, oh God, they, yeah, Jake, you get one pair of gloves down there. Stinkiest <laughs> mitt you ever smelt, buddy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right. Let's see if the cops can take advantage. That was deflected by John Peretta. Peretta was actually on Spit and Chicklet last week. You had an exclusive interview biz with him. And on the other side, Ryan Dermody, they have previous history in this game. Oh, very chippy. One of the best scraps in games, this game's history. They were chucking bombs, too. But Peretta, a great silky the defenseman. He's also got the chirps, too. The cops seem to think that the FDNY have the edge because of all the training and exercise they get to do because they're never actually working. That's the, that's the insult that the cops put on the firefighters. But at the end of the day, you got to take the time to train and take care of your body. And right now, it looks like they're a well-oiled machine. The Taglia flips it up out of the trapezoid. That's, that's, that's offside. That's a new rule yep. right there, boys. <laughs> Another offside. Just more than nine minutes to go in the first period. FDNY scored three goals in the first six minutes and seven seconds, Biz, and they haven't looked back since then. No, and it was a couple odd man rushes and just well executed. And not to really Bissette's fault, just some, uh, some beautiful shots. Low blocker. 12 inches off the ice, right inside the post. That's how two of them went in. And Witt, for me, it goes back to, to that, that uh, the fumble where the stick was broken. It was, oh, we got Rear in the crowd here. Yes, let's go over to Rear Admiral. He's with Muggsy. All right, what's up? All right, we're here with CJ Marcy, a lot of 127 in Jamaica, Queens. You got a couple other boys in that house. Who else is in there? Uh, right now we got Steve Kelly. We also have a couple of our injured guys that were on the sidelines who are taking care. And one guy over here, Brian Elfon, is helping out from ladder 151. And we also have Steve Romano too, who's also injured. But right now they're doing a check. We're going right here for the Axe Foundation, which is a great cause. Okay, now I understand your house is the only one in the city that has an actual pizza oven. Is that true? As, as far as I've seen, yeah, yeah, it's the but, only one. But I'm hearing the injured guys. I hear that they're not the best cooks in the house. I hear the latter guys are the better cooks. Is that true? The trick is to have not two two Italian guys the same tour working when we cook a pizza, but. Usually the truck guys are the ones who are going to pull through, you know. And what's this pork parmesan I'm hearing about? Is that even a thing? It's not a real thing. So if you go there, it's only in Jamaica, Queens. That's because we can't get BL sometimes, you know. Right, but well, we also got to show the guys on engine 298 and battalion 50 as well. Behind right? me, yep, exactly. All right, back to you boys in the studio. Was right. that was that English? Can we get, <laughs> can we get some subtitles on that next time from the truck? <laughs> All right. Well, Viz, you can step up your sports merch game by getting the freshest gear to rep your favorite podcast, like Part of My Take, Spitting Chicklets, and Foreplay at the Barstool Sports Store. Wear what the pros wear, from hats to hoodies, and show off your fandom and style. Visit Barstool Sports Shop now. 
and look better than all your friends. Speaking of pros, what's up with? Boys, I think the game plan was for NYPD to try to get that first goal, try to get FDNY on their heels. It did not work, so it's time for a new one. All of a sudden, it's 3-0. This next goal is crucial. They, get the, they don't get this next one. We might as well call it, boys. I'm telling you. But Another save oh. upon the crossbar, and the goalie, Battaglia, with a little bit of a shove there. That's a pop in the face. I don't know if we're going to get a replay on that, but... Biz, that's one where Dermot maybe just kind of maybe could have sold it a little bit more. They could they could use any power plays they could get right now. Yeah, the head snap. Watch this right here. Just a little... Boop. Oh, yeah, right, right in the jugular. And Battaglia's bark at him, too. He says, if you keep coming to my crease, buddy, you're going to be eating knuckle sandwiches all afternoon. And that was number 48 for the cops, Ryan Dermot, who we mentioned on your podcast before, previous fights in this game. That was two years ago, the one against Pereira. Oh, yeah, he's a stern. Oh, wow, what's going on down there with? Wow, wow, just the old UF and suck, you know what I mean? Oh, and the water <laughs> squirting water that's on a, the that's ice. That's a water squirt. You better not catch my pink Whitney die, Dermody. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's, there's some that's... there's some language down here, Biz. I miss it. This gives me the chills, buddy. Was that P.J. Byrne down there? The former Danbury Trasher squirting water? No, that was Dermody, the man who just got the throat punch from Bennington. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, so the emotions are certainly high. Will that translate to the scoreboard for NYPD? Down 3 nothing. Oh, no. Not even one period in. Kern keeps it in the offensive zone. Princiato, oh, one-timer goal! Oh, there it is. It's another one for Joe Gilhooley, his second today. Oof, this is a tough one. This might be the straw that broke the camel's back. The set comes out to play this. I thought it was actually going to be a delay a game going over the glass, but a great job by the defender to keep that puck in and keep it alive. And we're going to get the look at it here. It's just a beautiful pass to the slot. No hesitation. And once again, folks, low blocker side. And check out this feed here from Princioto right in the bread basket and knee drop snipe, just like Sidney Crosby used to do with the Pittsburgh Penguins wit. Exactly how I thought him. What a first appearance in this legendary game. What a first appearance. Two goals for Galuli. He's playing unreal, and Biz, like you mentioned, low blocker, that's the weakness over there. But said, I mean, he's getting left out to dry. I mean, that's a man all alone in the slot, no defenseman around him, and a perfect pass. The biggest problem right now for NYPD, they're just not on the same page when it comes to their breakouts. Everybody's just hoping that the next guy makes the play, but you gotta get on the same program. You gotta work as a five-man unit, and that's just not happening. That's why Bissette had to come out and play the puck. Nobody's talking to him. He tries to take matters into his own hands. Nobody's forcing that defenseman off the line, and he's able to keep it in for the FDNY. They are, they are on the ball right now, and NYPD is completely shook. This is just ugly hockey. They didn't come in prepared. It's sloppy, and now they're going to rely on this top line out there to win an offensive zone faceoff to get them back in the hockey game. Wit, I'm disgusted. I, I am too, and I heard a lot about uh, the skill level of FDNY overmatching NYPD coming into this, and I almost think it was understated because you can just see the passing, the stick handling, everything about this team is deeper and better than the police department. And they got to do something. And look at the FDNY. They're standing up on the bench, or at least most of them are, with their handlebar mustaches right now, and they are game-facing them. They are dialed into this game, and they're not going to let up. So if NYPD doesn't pull their head out of their ass, this thing could get the double digits. Well, guys, I have an important update for you. NYPD just made a change in goal. Wow. Number 30, Matt wow. Crescione, wow. the 32-year-old with five years of service. He just got put in the game. Head coach Gary Haber pulled the MVP last year, Brandon Bassett, after giving up four goals in the oh, first That's a penalty. Game. There we go. Okay. Some, on the some booze from the crowd. But, I mean, I tell you what. The NYPD already called their timeout, so that card has already been played. <laughs> now they got to pull their goalie. And may I remind you, folks, Brandon Bissett was their MVP in last year's game. I thought that he did a great job coming into this hockey game by trying to weather the storm. Just well execution from FDNY and sloppy, sloppy hockey needs to get in their goalie pull. We haven't even finished the first period yet. Not at all. It's, it's about pride now, Biz, right? You're getting blown out 4-0 four, four with 50 minutes left in the game. What are you going to do about it? Well, they got to start on this power play, and they got to do a little bit different job than they did the last time and get some traffic in front of their net. Yeah, this power play brought to you by Chevy. So, let's see if Matt Crescione 
can stop the bleeding for NYPD. From West Hempstead, New York, part of the Warrant Squad, he is replacing last year's team MVP, Brandon Bassett. 4-0, oh, 13 man. minutes in, and a big wow. hit at center ice. Wait, that was right in front and of he you. he wants a change. He said, change, change, I can't breathe. He's got no air left in his lungs. That's ugly right there. That could have been a hook down Lopez. Could be. That, a yeah, that should be a, maybe a five on three, no? Yeah, the ref didn't oh. call it. Oh, cross check Crosser, in the back. Things no. are getting dirty now out here. Yeah, that was number 12, Kyle Gabay, but going, on the ground in front. Going back to that hit, that's Peretta. That's the one who was standing up on the bench after they went up 4 nothing with the game face-off. These guys are not taking the foot off the gas, Wit. Yeah, they're just not, NYPD's not moving their feet. Watch when they get it. They're standing still. They're making long passes. No support of the puck. Look at this guy. He's all alone. Go to him. By the way, that's Lieutenant Joe Sanger in the box right now. The assistant captain, two minutes for tripping at the 12-27 mark. Let's see if the cops can take advantage. They desperately need one in this first period. That one just to the right of Battaglia, but they maintain it in the offensive zone. Patience right now with 30 seconds to go on the power play. Pad save by Battaglia, his second on this possession. A nice pass. Little twirl there. Too cute. Too cute. I just don't think there's enough movement. Everybody's too static, and they tend to want to go up top. But once again, zero net front traffic. If that's going to be your M.O., you got to get some bodies in front. But Tagli is not going to be beat clean. He was also the MVP for the FDNY in last year's game. We talked about both goalies coming in. We're absolute studs. And right now, he's looking like it. All right, and the power play is up for FDNY. Now they have it in the offensive zone, wrapping around. That's a big kill, though. I mean, you're up 4 nothing. you take a penalty, and all of a sudden you're right out of it. You still got the lead, and now you got the puck in the other team's zone. Look at Zay. He reminds me of Rick Nash with that number 61, Biz. <laughs> that might be a stretch. <laughs> Zay scored the second goal today. That guy made 100 million playing hockey with. <laughs> Not a bad comparison, and here we go once again on the opposite side. Some punches. He's staying away from it, though. Yeah. Mild fireworks looking, so far, though, guys. Looking, Nothing too crazy, right? Yeah, looking more like Marshawn right now, getting his nose in there. Look, look at some of these hits. This is Peretta in the neutral zone. Boom! Lays the boom! Another one there. Both teams throwing the body around. Heard you crack open a blue light? Yo, come on in! You guys are here too? Goodbye, empty couch. Hello, standing room only. Labatt takes everything to the power of we. Hello, friends. It's the best time of the year. Imagine owning the world's greatest golf merchandise by the most common golfers of our time. The spring line from Barstool Golf. You'll love to wear it. Last year, more clients hired Morgan & Morgan than ever before. With over 2 million phone calls last year alone, more people in more cities across America want more Morgan & Morgan. When you hire Morgan & Morgan, you're also hiring a family business. And after 35 years, we now have more offices, more staff, and more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. Protecting America. Fighting for you. Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan. For the people. Let's check out the Mubsy Clutch replays, Biz. Four goals for the firefighters. Yeah, this is the one that got everything started. Just a broken stick and some sloppy, sloppy hockey right here. And this is a great neutral zone play. Coming into the zone, low blocker. That 12 inches off the ice inside the post. And this one, you're, you're going to think this is a replay. It is not. Another one inside that post right there, but beauty on the backhand. <laughs> and he gave it the Schmechnikov. Go, go! <laughs> and this one, we think right now, at least, the straw that broke the camel's bat, the set comes out to play the puck. They keep it in, and just a great exchange to the slot. And we got that knee drop snipe in that same spot, right inside the post. And it's 4 nothing FDNY. And with, we can't emphasize it enough. The police are shook. How did it feel by the bench during that TV timeout? 
It's uh, it's David versus Goliath over here right now, Biz. I'm not gonna lie. The PD coach is screaming, "Wake the f up!" He's all over the boys. Now we got the refs telling them anything after the whistle, there's gonna be a penalty. It's uh, it's dark times right now for the police department. So one, one one of the more surprising things was that both teams play with five lines. If I'm NYPD, I might shorten the bench here, especially at the end of the first, just to get one and get that momentum created going into the. To the intermission. That's that. I mean, I'm, I'm not a coach. I don't have that type of expertise, but that's what I would do right now, Jake. No doubt. And those shots on goal and between the benches were brought to you by Pink Whitney. There's some physicality. Number 57, Dan Tuma. Oh, somebody just got mugged in front of the net. Looks like it's Keen. He's skating back to the bench with his arms in the air. Wonder what the heck's going on, ref. A couple of changes on both ends here and another icing call that will go the other way. So 425 to go. If you're thinking of small victories, Biz, for the cops, down 4-0, you already switched goalies. How do you head into the locker room right now with any some sort of momentum? Well, I, I just said it. You gotta win a face-off, get down to the offensive zone and try to pot one. I think you shorten the bench right now. Five lines is a lot. It's tough to get your legs into the game, especially for that top line. You gotta, you gotta want to, you want to feel the puck. You want to get your touches in. Hey, you would know, Biz, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be skating around like this guy, <laughs> doing the chopstick dance. What a dish, though. Backhand sauce. Nice pass, another save, denial by Bataglia, keeping it on side, though. Biz, you notice though, FDNY, five guys in front every time. There's not much there to get through. No. And I will say, I mean, it seems like NYPD's playing in quicksand right now. They just can't get to those loose pucks. They must have been at Mulcahy's late last night. <laughs> <laughs> Mulcahy's. They were butt chugging Pink Whitney last night before the game. Mulcahy's, by the way, I believe uh, Pup Punk, the Barstool rock band, has played there a couple of times here on Long Island. Okay. Under four to go in the first, four nothing in favor of FDNY. Oh, that was a good opportunity. Lopes. Was this at the net front? This line of Tracy Lopes and Zay is just unstoppable for fire guys. And they've tried getting under Zay's skin and he's skating away, he's telling guys they're irrelevant. Another great opportunity. We're gonna take a look at it right now. Antonitis. Yeah, he's just so good at the crossovers here. And what I love about this, he creates that separation, then puts it into that area as his line mate drives to the net. I will say that was a pretty good shot by NYPD there. That had some muster on it, but once again, just too far outside the dots there. It's not going to do any damage on Bataglia. Uh-oh. Here we uh -oh. go. See ya. Quick, quickly in transition. He's got speed. The backhand from Lopes hit the side. Mimi. He's got the speed, man. That's the roadrunner right there. Vinny Lopes actually used to play for NYPD. They, they could use him right now, Jake. Oh Let me God. tell you. Maybe an in-game trade to make this one more even. I don't think they're, they tied their skates tight enough. I don't know what's going on out here. I think NYPD's got rollerblades on. <laughs> RA's on everything but rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> Under three to go in this opening period. Here's a golden oh! opportunity. Oh! And the Cubs are on the board. Oh, he Dan O'Donoghue. He shushes the crowd. Could this be the turning point of the game? What a we, we said when we said they had to hammer the first line there, and he shushes the bench and wow. points to them and says, shut your wow. mouth. We got a game, folks. 2.45 left in the first period. Wow, the Biz, right? What did we say? He needed to show up. That's a big... Oh. Here we go. Let's go. Oh, wow. Oh, he's saying, you talk shit to me, you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. He's giving oh. it to him. Okay, they're leaning over the benches, folks. We got action. Can we get a camera down there? Oh, he, wow, he's saying, who is that guy? Oh, and he's saying, look at the scoreboard. But he just fired up. He said, you fired me up. That's the wrong guy to get fired up. Yeah, look at the pork chops on him, too. Dan O'Donoghue, a former AHLer, as we mentioned, a former teammate My of Biz former in Portland. Line mate. I love to see it. I taught him that. Three oh, goals, one assist in 37 career games. Signed a two-year NHL deal with the Coyotes. And his family, tons of ties to this hockey team and this hockey game. His dad, grandfather, two uncles, cousin, all cops in New York. And he puts, oh my goodness! That's a, just a devastating. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Look at the whole FDNY team's coming over O'Donoghue. Oh, no. Wow. I mean, nothing he could do about that one. Well, this one. 
This one was playing point goal. Do you put Bassett oh, back in the wow. game? Is that a is that a bad goal in the goalie biz or what? I mean, look at that. That's O'Donoghue saying, "You shut your pie hole, buddy. We're coming after you." And then moments later, just a Plinko shot. It tries to get blocked. Oh my goodness! That was actually tipped. That wow. was James Shea. What a surgical tip! I thought that. Ended up bouncing off the ice and in, but I tell you what, to spot that puck on the way in, off the block shot, and then to get a stick on it, I can't blame the goaltender on that no, one. No, 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 I didn't see that that was tipped. That was He's, a beautiful tip. And let me it, tell you, Biz, you talk, you talk to the bench, you talk shit, and you get that. That's a tough payback. That's, I, but hey, listen, that's nothing on him, man. He's on the bench watching that go in. That's just devastating. That looked more like Joe Pavelski tipping that puck than James. James Shea, holy jump! And just as we thought, the cops had some sort of momentum based. 22 seconds later, the Plinko, as you mentioned, makes it 5-1 with under two to go. I, I, I can't tell you how devastating that is because they would have had that momentum going in between periods. It would have been encouraging conversation saying, hey, listen, we're behind the eight ball, we get it, but that goal was huge for us. Let's build off that. Now it's just going to be somber. Now it's going to be dead quiet in there, is my assumption. They're on pace for 15 goals, Biz. <laughs> and again, you mentioned this earlier, Wit. Shots on goal 12 to 11 right now. You're lying, Jake. I don't believe it. <laughs> it's insane. I don't yeah, believe it. RA's running the shot clock. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Yet 5-1, the more important stat. All firefighters in this first period. But hey, it's a 60-minute game, 60 minute game for a reason. Biz said it best, though. It's a totally different atmosphere if you get one. Oh, they needed that 4-1. They go in, they hit the last goal, and boom, that happens. What a tip. All right, well, they're leading off again with this first line, and a great keeping by NYPD. It looked like O'Donoghue was in front of the net there, just couldn't get a stick on it. And he's going to stay out there and take this draw. Coming up on the intermission report delivered by Pizza Hut, the guys will have an NHL Eastern Conference playoff preview and, of course, expert analysis and some Muggsy clutch replays. Rebound unsuccessful. Bataglia laying out on his belly right now. Oh, right wow. in front of the crease. That's a big save right there. Looked like they might have had the chance to make it 5-2. That was a CNI shot. No, Donahue was all over that rebound. Looked like he went to the backhand. I'm not sure if we're going to get a second look at it here, but what do we say? Win a face-off, snap it back, walk the line, get it through. If they can do that from the other side here. They have an opportunity to get one back before they go into the locker room. Oh, Donahue taking the face-off. He is the lone goal scorer right now for NYP, the 32-year-old. Ragon's right behind him, too. Let's see if they got something set up. And Al fires just a little high and gobbled up once again by Bataglia. So a couple big face-offs there, Whit. Those are important. That one, Ragon set up right behind O'Donoghue. This is probably something they drew up coming in. And he's going to set up there once again. And looked like that shot was pretty heavy. It was. It was a good save. This is the play they hoped for. He kicked it back to him. All right, so let's do it again. Under a minute to go in this first period. NYPD looking for some more momentum. One big time block. unsuccessful, and it'll go out of play. Jim Becker with a big block right there. That's a captain's play. I believe that was Ragone again setting up in that high slot area. Just a great, great effort by O'Donoghue pushing off the defender, using his strength and size, and then setting up his liney. And he's back in that same dot. This will be the third face-off in a row from that side of the ice. Let's see if they can finally find the back of the net. Fire put Zay out to take it. Yep, he got the win. Matt Zay. Just a Swiss Army knife. He does it all, folks. One of uh -oh. many goal scorers so far for FDNY in this first period. In the trapezoid, a bunch of traffic. Stays in the zone. For FDNY, under 30 seconds to go, right on the doorstep. Precione there, and some more extracurricular activities, Biz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We knew it was coming, and it was Zay on the wraparound. Precione got lucky there. I mean, it looked like a wide open net, and he slid over pretty well. Pretty well played to be able to get over and make a big save there. Yeah, there was actually a, a slight pause. And you're going to see that shot come through. And Zay behind the net, he didn't really get this original good push off there. But 
does a great job of coming over and finally getting over to that post and credit that defenseman for winning that race to the post as well and pushing Zay off. Yeah, that's Matt Zay and PJ Byrne who ignited this little kerfuffle behind the net. Kerfuffle? I like that, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> the hell? I don't know <laughs> what the hell was just said, but I like it. <laughs> 20 seconds to go in the first. All FDNY. Let's see if they can get one more. Oh. 10 seconds to go. I'd probably just eat this if I was them. Working against the clock. Five seconds left. Let's see if they can at least get a shot off. They will not. 20 minutes in the books. All firefighters over NYPD, oh, five goals in the opening period. And done. here we go. We're not done yet. Oh Jake. my. Just a greasy, greasy cross check. NYPD's playing dirty now. Wouldn't you though, oh, Biz? Oh, wow. You're getting embarrassed on the scoreboard. You gotta do something. Wow, this is getting ugly. This is all oh, headlocks. Crowd on its feet Somebody right now. Gloves are, off. Gloves are oh, flying. Oh, here, oh, we here we go. Here we go. It's another fight behind the goal. Oh, watch the hands. Watch the hands. Oh, we got uh, we oh got, ref on the ground. Is somebody speaking French down there? I heard some. I heard some bad words. I'm not gonna lie. Put the kids to bed, folks. This one's gonna get ugly. There, there's there's being word said. He he wears a full cage. Whoever that is, I couldn't tell who got dragged down. He wears a full cage. He doesn't want to be invited involved in the fighting. That was number four, Paul Moran, who had his helmet taken off. A guy who's undefeated in the big game. He used to play for NYPD, now plays for FDNY, has never been on the losing end. All right, that's a way to head into the locker room. F FDNY coach Tom. Coach TR. Coach TR. He's fired Here up. Here we go. Some more words now. This is live, folks. This is not a replay of what you just saw. O'Donohue. Right in front of the FDNY. Oh, Donahue just took a punch to the to the eye. Took a random punch to the eye from Becker, I believe. Oh, he's furious, boys. He's saying. Danny's going nuts here. Ref's trying to calm down Biz. They gotta save the Look, he's energy. got cut. They, someone hit him with a random left, got cut in the eye. Jesus. They gotta save their energy though, Wit. I know they're fired up. Emotions run high, especially when you're getting speed bag oh. five one in front of this crowd. Here the coaches are going out of here, Oh Jesus. Oh. Okay. Wow. Well, it may be a big margin on the scoreboard right now, Biz, but there's tons of tension and tons of stories still to tell in the final 40 minutes based off what we're seeing right now. I'd love to be a fly on the wall in this NYPD locker room. I'll tell you what, room. Biz, Dan O'Donohue's cut. This could lead to some serious passion coming into the second. They're going to need to have something. That's their star player, and he, he, doesn't matter. He, he doesn't mind taking matters into his own hand, but for the sake of NYPD, they need him on the ice, and they were double-shifting him with five minutes to go, exactly like we said they should do. But they got more problems because that takes the other lines out of it as well, who really haven't been contributing in skating. They got to get on the bike between periods here, get the blood flowing, and come out and be Boys, ready to I'm skate. Down, I'm down here with Joe Gahuli. First game, two goals. What an amazing start for you. How do you feel out there? Uh, we're feeling good. We just want to get the win. We got fucking 40 more period, 40 more minutes to go. We got to keep playing the right way, play behind that D, play physical, and, and keep putting them home. And two beautiful goals by yourself. What happened at the end there? Can you explain what was going on behind uh, the net? They, they took a couple shots at our top guy, Matty Zay. He's got a cage on. They're ripping his fucking cage off. It's Bush League. If they want to go, we'll, we'll get to it later in the game. We want to make sure we win it, though, here first. There you heard it right there from the game. The star of the first period, two goals. He told someone he'd knock their head off, and he also scored. So great first period. Good job. We'll see you in the second. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, With Thank you to Joe Gahuli. Two goals for him so far. He mentioned Matt Zay, who scored for the second straight year. Still a little bit of a huddle with the officials, players on each side. FDNY 5, NYPD 1, one period in the books. We'll keep it rolling on the intermission report delivered by Pizza Hut. After this break, you are watching the 49th annual FDNY versus NYPD Heroes hockey game. Intermission report powered by Pizza Hut on the other end. We are all gathered here to celebrate the first ever electric Chevy Silverado. It's a Chevy. It's a Silverado, it's electric, and it's badass. It's Barstool's most valuable truck. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with it. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Why do you two goons get the orange one? I want the Sorry, orange truck. one. Yeah. 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 Chevy Silverado EV, Barstool's most valuable truck. I'm going big. We're bringing tradition, though. Yeah, gas comes Jeff. It's bigger. It's easier. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. Hello, friends. It's the best time of the year. Imagine owning the world's greatest golf merchandise by the most common golfers of our time. The spring line from Barstool Golf. You'll love to wear it. There's no way he's making this. But if he makes it, we're all cracking open the bat. From the impossible chip to the 19th hole, the bat takes everything to the power of we. Let the cheese drop. Somewhere on the other side of the world, I found something special. And in order to bring the wonders of the world home, I would fight. I would stop at nothing to accomplish a dream, tormented by what I knew was possible. The perfect cup of coffee. Stella Blue Coffee. It's just really good coffee. Welcome back to the intermission report delivered by Pizza Hut. Welcome back. Intermission. Jeff D. Lowe's mic doesn't work. Jeff D. Lowe, thoughts? Six goals in the first period there. <laughs> saved it. Just saved what a save. No big deal. That's why you're better, here. Hey, Lowe, yeah. Better save than NYPD's goalie. <laughs> Jeff D. Lowe alongside Merle. Both of them. <laughs> Welcome up here. Colby back. Big Cat back with, with a lot going on. Big Cat big having cat. a pretty good first. We got to start out with this. We got to start out with this. Big Cat, little friendly live wager uh -huh. with what Colby and Merle's. And second, and Vanelli. Yeah. What, seconds so, before yeah. FDNY put the first goal in one minute into the game. So we're sitting in the green room and we're like, all right, well, should we bid on this game? Who do you guys like? Grinelli, Merles, Colby, all like, oh, we like NYPD. I was like, well, I'll take all your action. I'll take FDNY. And Colby's like, should we do it two and two? And Merle's yeah, I was going to go with you. He grabs, he's like, no, no, Big Cat wants the action. Bang, 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 <laughs> goal, goal, goal. I offered him a cash out. They didn't take it. I will be collecting that money with my 50-50 wrap. <laughs> oh, he hammered the 50-50. Yeah, yes. yes. I had, saw the 50-50 when he walked in, and I'm like, well, I know what Big Cat's doing. Well, he, I, hit, he hit it right away. Listen, I, mean. I play it. I've, I've been playing it forever. I play it every time I go to any stadium. If I win it, I will be even for life. Today's my day. <laughs> one one small quick <laughs> note yeah. on, on the live little friendly way. We were watching initially on small delay. So oh, every time we heard the goal horn, NYPD had the puck. These two would celebrate, and then it'd be yeah. an immediate turnover <laughs> yeah. and FDNY goal. It was, it was an ugly scene down there for a little while. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, that was quick tough. thoughts, though. Six combined goals. We thought maybe for a second there, oh, Donnie, he's, he's like the unicorn, the mermaid yeah. out there for NYPD. He made it 4-1, to one, and then FDNY immediately made it 5-1. to one. It got ugly after getting a little bit of hope maybe for NYPD at the end. It is not the score we were looking for in the Bozo down between the benches. Ryan Whitney tells people if it goes for nothing to turn it off. No, <laughs> no, you yes. turn it on now. Yes. Colby, how about the it, all the fights you see? Yes. It's yeah. just going to get yes. better and better. Yeah. Well, you talk about the fights, the chippiness, Colby. You saw at the end there, it didn't just get ugly. It got kind of they had a bit of a captain meeting at the end. They yeah. got beyond ugly. Yeah, it got a little crazy. Obviously, the score gets heated up. We see this. It starts a couple jersey burns. We see the fire guys trying to get out of there. They don't want anything to do with this. PD's trying to start fire. Well, guess what? You're doing it against the fire department. They're going to yep. put it out. Yep. And they're getting out of there. They're getting out of the way. Looks like they're going after Zay a lot. They, 
drop the gloves here. We had some blood on the ice. We had some bad blood in front of the bench. O'Donoghue takes one right to the beak. I think his visor chipped his eye there. I don't know. This caused a whole melee to get out of the end of the game, Big Cat. It's just unbelievable what we're seeing, but PD has to do something right. to and it, provide something. And it's credit to FDNY because they know that they're the better team. They know that if they play their game, they're going to win. And you can see, you heard it at the end. We're like, we'll fight at the end after we've won. Yeah. Because they know the only way NYPD has a chance here is if they muck it up and make it a fight fest and put a bunch of guys in the box. Galuli, that's a guy that's who scored two goals. Yep. He got interviewed, uh, electric interview at the end of the period. Also, yeah. amazing. <laughs> he's flying high, but you're right. You're yeah. right. He had he said it best. He's like, we're worried about winning this game. Zayn Lopes also scored big five to one lead here at UBS Arena, which will be hosting some NHL playoff games. The Islanders in the playoffs. Let's talk a little NHL. Oh, here we go, Mer. Eastern Conference big playoffs. Cat, you Let's know, go down the list quickly with the uh, with the matchups. Boston versus Florida. I mean, the obvious statement here with the Eastern Conference. Does anyone have a chance to take down Boston or just put on one of the greatest regular seasons in NHL history? Well, I, I may have lost all my credibility as a hockey gambler at Barstool after this live bet on this yep. game. But, <laughs> but uh, we've been on Boston all year. They got the best coach. They got the best goalie. They got the best defensive core. They got the best group of forwards. Nobody's taking them out in the first round. Yeah, I think it's over in five that game, I would say, that series. I think Florida will get some. Matthew Kachuk won't be dragged out easily in this one, although Boston is built for this. What, the way Jeff said it, I feel like you don't know the president's trophy or curse. Yeah, the curse. Like, true. Yeah. The, curse. the last team to do it was the 2013 Blackhawks, who had the best regular season and then won the cup. One of your three cups? Yeah, yeah one of my three cups. Team. I don't think the yeah. Bulls are going to lose yeah. the first round, yeah. but that still does have to be in the back of your head because the series is not the regular season. Once you get in that, one well, goalie can change Columbus it all. Columbus swept Tampa. Yeah. Too, right? I mean, and, Ta of... and Tampa released that pathetic statement on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then right. they ripped off a bunch That's of cups. Right. Yeah, That's yeah right. they did. Uh, speaking of long droughts, Toronto, Tampa, speaking of Tampa, can Toronto end the first round drought? Well, I feel this is their year. I think this is their year for a lot of reasons. They went and added some really good key pieces uh, at the deadline. Ryan O'Reilly, who was injured, now back being one of them. I, I just think they're they're going to get over the hump. I think they're going to get over the hump this year. Dubas is like praying that they do this. I think with everything happening with this team not being able to get out of the first round, absolute curse. But if they don't, I'm here for that too. It'll yeah. be fireworks yeah. in Toronto. Yeah, absolute they, fireworks. They got a chance this year because Tampa, Tampa's finally showing like a chink in the armor. Yeah. They're not, they're not the same team they've been the last four or five years. They're getting older. They're starting to wear down. Leafs got a chance. I took the Leafs last year. I fell for it. I'll probably fall, I'm gonna fall for it again. I'll fall I see the how many games. Yeah, yeah, how I'm many games? <laughs> no, I took them to win the cup last year. Oh, the cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They can't even win. Oh, the you were you were listening to Biz. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. what it was. He sold. I you. have my cup pick, but I'm gonna wait because it's uh, the I like West. That. A lot of New York teams in the bottom half of that bracket. We talked about here at UBS Arena. The Islanders will be at some point hosting Carolina. That's gonna be an ugly muck it up series, right? Yeah, it will be. It's gonna be defensive style hockey, man on man D zone by Carolina. They've got speed. They like to clog it up. Uh, the big question is going to be the Islanders. Can they get through? Can they put enough up? Because we know they've got the goaltending, right? And everyone here wants to see their team who got in by the skin of their teeth because my Penguins faltered yeah. so poorly oh, at the end the of the Black year. The Blackhawks were not well, yeah. trying to what win. What the hell was that? And they beat you. What the hell was that? Yeah. It was the Jonathan Taves farewell tour at the end there. Uh, and they, they got it done. The Islanders just got in. But can they be kind of that miracle team? They will see Barzell Merles back in the lineup as well. I, I grew up an Islanders fan. I used to sit in the 300 seats in the old Coliseum. New arena, new playoffs. Sorokin's the best goalie. Second yeah. best goalie all year to Olmark in Boston. Goaltending wins playoff series. Islanders This is the one they're run. saying is like the upset yeah. one in the East. Everyone's yeah. saying the Islanders. And then them. obviously, don't forget Devils, Rangers. And if you're looking to take any of these series, do not forget to log on to the Barstool Sportsbook. Yep. Now offering a $1,000 bonus for new players. Download and create an account today using code BizNasty. And if your first bet loses, you have to $1,000 in bonus cash. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Big Cat, you have a pick in that series quick? No, I, I was just going to say I like this because we we're having Whitney on part of my take tomorrow night. So perfect. I'm just going to repeat everything you guys tell yeah, me. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I, I want to say this. This Hurricanes, Islanders, defensive, dump yeah. the puck. There you go. Let's steal that. Great goalies. Yep. Yeah. And I'll say this. I'm on Coming the Rangers. Up. I got to say I'm on the Rangers. I want to make that clear. Ranger, yes. clear Coming up Rangers. on the intermission report here presented by Pizza. We have more on the first period and what we are going to expect here Look at in the tip. second period. Big. FDNY up big. Wow. Hey, 
What's going on there, pal? We saw you at the hockey game on. Do I know you guys? I'm Ryan Whitney. I got a drink named after me. Not a big deal. Give me that. Pink Whitney? It's delicious. Sorry, we don't have room for you three. You, you, and that baked potato on your face. See you, fellas. I invented the thing, you pigeon. Pink Whitney for legendary moments. Biz, are we the losers? Wit. Yes. We're bringing big back. It's bigger. Cheesier. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. So, what's for dinner? Dinner is served. Pardon? My cheesesteak. <laughs> Go to pardonmycheesesteak.com to learn more and order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub. We heard you crack open a blue light. Yo, come on in. You guys are here too? Goodbye, empty couch. Hello, standing room only. Labatt takes everything to the power of we. Let the cheese drop. We're all gathered here to celebrate Barstool's most valuable truck, the first ever electric Chevy Silverado. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with it. Chicklets, what do you got? We're putting on the legendary FDNY versus NYPD hockey game. All right, boys, this is a big game. And on top of that, we're gonna be loading up all the gear we need for the game in the back of this beautiful Silverado EV. All right, let's get to work. Welcome back to the intermission report delivered by Pizza Hut, live from UBS Arena. The intermission report, as we said, delivered by Pizza Hut. I got the, the big New Yorker staring me in the face Look right now. Nick kept putting away the 50. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got to know what, them. When, when do they uh, announce this? I don't know, at the, uh, in the third period, right? Is it the third? third? Usually yeah. third period. All right, okay. okay, so I'm gonna need everyone, we're gonna You're be gonna like- need all hands on deck. Like the Willy Wonka, when the rich guy has everyone yeah. in the factory, <laughs> on, I'm gonna need you guys to all help me go through the Second numbers. Second intermission, we're just eating the pizza and we're yeah. just looking at, that's all looking we're doing on camera. <laughs> uh, let's get right to the Mugsley cut, clutch replays of the first period, which it's pretty obvious, there were six goals. So we know what <laughs> replays are gonna be for Mugsley. We look great, by the way, not yeah. to do it our own so work. Comfortable. We look fantastic. Uh, all. Look at Six this. Goals. This is how they started the game right here. Drops a stick, kicks it to a buddy. Adios, we talked about him. And Vinny Lopes with the first goal of the game a minute in. How's she going? FDNY and then come right back again and snipe right here. <laughs> you guys. This is the game changer. This guy thought there was a Pizza Hut pizza of the game. Turns it over. They go in shorthanded. This was the killer. Uh, you guys, you guys said they needed a quick start. NYPD. They got scored on a one minute in. Yeah. I know. They had to control the game. They had to get after it. And it didn't stop from there. They have to switch goaltenders. Just all kinds of trouble in their own end for PD. They can. If you're the original goaltender for NYPD, you just go home, right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't stay no, no, at home. The D. No, you you yell at the D, then you go home. Yeah. No, you just go in the showers. It's the best part of hockey. You just get in the showers, get it, get it, get the warm water before anyone else gets in there. This was a, this was an NHL this, tip. Yeah, right there, it's one NHL tip. FDNY after O'Donoghue shushes the crowd. He wasn't even done shushing the crowd. Yeah. FDNY <laughs> responded yeah. with another. You know goal. what? They're gonna have to keep O'Donoghue on the ice this the rest of the game. Yeah. I mean, he scored their goal, went top shelf, unbelievable. Look at this goal. crazy stat though. It takes shots to score goals. The Pink Whitney shots on goals. NYPD's got more shots that's on goals goal. than FDNY. Yeah, yeah. That, that's goaltending, goaltending, just like. We talked about in our Eastern Conference preview. It's going to yep. come down to the goaltending. Bataglia yeah. has been absolutely outstanding for yeah. the FDNY. He was one of the one of the two MVPs. Two MVPs. From yeah. 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 Trophy yeah. biz. Uh, back here with our pizza looking at us in the face, but we also have a second period staring us in the face. Is there any shot 
the NYPD, especially after what just happened, can come back here? Yeah, you, you got it. You go down to two lines. Yeah, here we go. Merles knows this. He I, coaches. I, he yeah. coaches. You go he down, knows this. You go down to two lines. You wear them down. And you make it either six to one or five two, and you start hanging a guy. People at home, you hang a guy out in yeah, the neutral zone. Send them out there. Just looking for breakaways. You got to start cheating if you want it, if you want something. The to thing happen. with NYPD can't get out of their end. They can't yeah. execute breakout passes, rims around the boards. You're even yeah. sitting here shaking your head, yeah. big cat going. No, and this, you, this yeah, isn't good enough. You saw it at the end of the period. NYPD had what four faceoffs in a row in the FDNY zone. They couldn't do anything yeah. with it. Yeah. But, so that's why if you hang the guy, yeah. it might draw one Pull of their D out. out with them and it'll help the whole game. Well, they're going to have to chip away. That's what they're going to have to do. That's got to be the message. They're going to have to. Chip Chip away, and they're going to have to just start pouring some pink Whitney down O'Donoghue's throat, <laughs> and he's got to get out. He's, he's got to clean be, up the gas. Yeah, he's got to go electric out there, O'Donoghue, yeah. and, and yeah, he's got to clean up. The, he's got to put some stitches. He does. He does. So Maybe we'll some pizza, happens. just like Biz was able to do. Here's a little taste of Biz's New York special pizza delivery to the boys. Second period coming up. What's up, boys? Do you work hard enough? little treat at the end of practice. You gotta earn those extra toppings! Again! Boys, as wow. promised, Who's that guy? delivered by Pizza Hut, the big oh, yeah. New Yorker. Oh, For all your hard work, oh, boys. Pizza, 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 pizza. This has been the Intermission Report, delivered by Pizza Hut. Thanks for watching. Hello, friends. It's the best time of the year. Imagine owning the world's greatest golf merchandise by the most common golfers of our time. The spring line from Barstool Golf. You'll love to wear it. There's no way he's making this. But if he makes it, we're all cracking open my bat. From the impossible chip to the 19th hole, the bat takes everything to the power of Wii. Free your balls with Muggsy. Hey guys, boy do we have a product for you. The Muggsy Clutch Jeans. Tired of this happening? <laughs> Regular jeans rip and tear, and they're just not comfortable. It's time to get Muggsy Clutch Jeans. They stretch for your comfort. There's only one Muggsy Clutch Jean. They stretch, they fit, and they're comfortable. Free your balls once and for all with Muggsy Clutch Jeans at Muggsy.com. We're bringing big back. It's bigger, cheesier. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. Here's your first question of the day, Team Proper Wild. What's the population of Papua New Guinea? Ten million three hundred twenty-nine thousand nine hundred thirty-one. That's exactly correct. This Harry Potter character is the Madame Pomfrey. Correct. Next. Hunger Games. Correct. <laughs> and Jensen Ackles. Unbelievable. That's a perfect game. Proper Wild is a clean, all-day energy shot designed to boost your productivity, focus, and energy without the jitters or crash. As everyone gets settled in, they prepare to sing a special rendition of a song, which has become a tradition for this team. It's a song about uh, my mom. Uh, everyone thinks she's hot. Instead of Stacy's mom, it's Strafer's mom. So yeah, they sing it after uh, all the games and in the bars. But um, you know, if they think it bothers me, it doesn't bother me. Strafer, can't you see? You're just hot the girl for me. I know it might be wrong, but I'm in love with Strafer's mom. Watch 
YouTube. <laughs>
And with, may I remind you, you could speak more to this long change, right? So you want to keep the shift shorts. You do not want to get caught out there and hemmed in your zone, especially at that long change. Here's Matt Zay charging. Wow. Had an opportunity, couldn't get a stick on it. Matt. On the doorstep. Matt Zay also coming back from a broken ankle recently. He's got the broken nose. This is a warrior right here, folks. Here we go on top of the circles of fire. That's another big block by the NYPD. And that was it looks like Harrigan skating off, or at least skating up the ice slowly. That's Harrigan. a bad change, Biz. You just talked about it. The assistant, another one deflected by Crescione. Keep in mind, if you're just joining us, five goals allowed as we take a look at the saves by Bataglia on the FDNY end. Well, this is after they just made it 5-2, and it's a beautiful execution play coming out of the corner here, dangling. And I'm not sure who ends up getting the block. Actually, he did get the that blocker, through. Right? Bataglia, what a beautiful blocker save, especially through traffic there. So we're getting actions at both ends. I don't know what O'Donoghue said between periods, but clearly NYPD fired up and off a win faceoff, they're back in charge. Yeah, keep in mind also, if you're just joining us, there was a goalie change in the middle of the first period. Brandon Bassett, last year's MVP, was pulled in favor of Matt Crescione, who's in right now. And Jake, I'm told Crescione, there isn't much of a, a, a setback with him coming in. It's kind of 1A, 1B, so they're not too worried about putting a new goalie in and changing the momentum, which didn't work in the first, but they got some going here with the kill, the shorthanded goal, and now the puck in the Ozone. All right, thanks, Witt. Four minutes into the second period, it's 5-2 FDNY, but right now, NYPD more momentum than ever. Another opportunity, oh. and another goal! They call me Jake the Jinx. I just jinxed it once again. I believe that was Derek Kern. Just a horrible gap here. This should be a three on three, and this should be a nothing burger. But the NYPD defenseman being forced off the line, and that's what creates the problem. And we're going to get the turnover at the other end. And as they come up the ice, you see three and three. And he identifies the guy, but the, the old cross body here. Somebody loses their guy. Ooh, that looks like it might have even been kicked in. I don't know if they're going to have a coach's challenge here, but keep an eye on this. No, it was, oh, no oh, wow. it was a great little tip through What the does body. he have, eyes in the back of his head? So Kern and then Princiata, I believe, got the final tap in. And once again, it's the details of the game with. That's a three-on-three. Three. You just identify a guy, and you take him to the blue paint. They end up getting crossed up. And what do you know? It's in the back of their neck. You gotta pick up sticks. And I'm sorry if, you, if I got a little excited there. I, I hammered the over of seven and a half, so I'm not, I'm not today's winner. <laughs> well, so, what, somebody's going home a winner. That's kind of a tough break, though. Similar to the first goal. I mean, the D-man didn't have a stick, but a weak goal that barely touched the, the back of the net. And it's 6-2. Whoa, 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 whoa. So that's twice today. We saw NYPD score biz, and we're like, all right, is this the momentum they have? And then right away, they equalize in the other well, end. And they had another glorious opportunity after that, but it just seems like the lower lines can't follow it up. They're becoming a liability out there, so. Biz, there's, no, there, there's not much depth on NYPD. They got that top line, and, and now with Stemke out, it's going to be tough. There's five or six real good players on FDNY that are really carrying the load for these guys. Yeah, we'll see if number 22, Chris Stemke, comes back in. A vital part to this team. He scored in the 2021 game. Also played in the ECHL and professionally in Germany. So that would be a big loss if the cops can't have him back. Another glove save gobbled up by Crescione. Some more fist of cuffs in front of the net. I would imagine we're going to see this every time a goalie freezes a puck from here on out. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, Gloves are off. And oh, we've got oh, another oh, fight. Oh, it's Rob oh. Shear with his helmet off for FDNY. Rampage and, Jackson's boy. Oh, now the gloves are off. The assistant oh, wow. captain. Shear just taunting him, too. Ant That's one scary man, folks. Antonelli's pissed off. He doesn't feel like he got a fair shake there. Sheer signaling the belt to the crowd and they go wild. Yeah, Anthony Antonelli, the 24 year old, two years of service on the other end. This is a young man versus a veteran because Rob Shear's 41. 41 versus 24 year old. Well, well that, that's two guys cut now for NYPD. Antonelli this period, and at the end of the first, we saw Donahue take that cheap shot when they ended up on the penalty kill coming out of that first intermission. So. 
Hey, right Ste now. Stepke's back here, Ben. Just want to let you know. He's at center ice. He's okay. That's huge. That is huge. Because if any chance of coming back in this hockey game, they're going to need him. And right now, it seems like him and Peretta are going at it. Wick. Can we get uh, can we get what they're saying? Well, he's uh, he's calling him a pussy. I don't know if we can say that. He's calling him <laughs> a pussy, though. And then Stepke said, who are you? Here we go. He said, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? He said, you're a pussy. So that's what's going on down there. That's hockey. And the coach is calling um, him a pussy as well. <laughs> Two guys going to the box. I think we've had a lie. We've hit I'm sorry, I won't use that word again. This is Strafer. Strafer's going to the box, I was just repeating what was going on, but we got a power play for PD here, I believe. Yeah, Chevy power play. Speaking of P-bombs, is have we found Strafer's mom in the crowd yet? Do we have the Strafer cam going? And now, that slop tart RA just oozing up and down the aisles, taking a peek, seeing if he can find her. But in the meantime, it looks like NYPD is going to be going on the power play here. So this is a, a must, must. They need a goal here. It's Remember, they scored shorthanded to open the period. Wow. So let's see. They have the leg up right now. O'Donoghue scored the first goal for the cops. He's, He's taking the face off right now in the attacking zone. Yeah, He's looking at his chops right now. Anthony. Five minutes for fighting, two minutes for that missed by 17 feet. That's it. <laughs> Here's Stemke, as Whitney mentioned, hobbling off a little earlier. Back in the game right now, though, in the right circle. O'Donoghue, the former AHLer, a former teammate of my broadcast partner, Paul Bissonette, with the Portland Pirates. I didn't mind that play there. You see O'Donoghue driving right to the middle of that box. And then the player following up as the defenders are pushed off. So he did have a good look, just unfortunately got it blocked. The flip from the point blocked in between the circles. Stemke maintains possession. Now O'Donoghue with patience. A little better movement Straight here. Straight away. Yeah, doing a better job of penetrating the box right now. Stemke from the half wall. Centers, one-timer, saved save. Battaglia. Great save by Battaglia there. How about that defensive play by Brian White in front of the net? That was a big, juicy rebound, but he ties up that stick to prevent a goal. Just great defense right now by FDNY overall. Under a minute to go on the NYPD power play as the puck flicks into the air. And Tinnitus, who scored earlier in this period, brings it down. This is where the second unit's got to get it done. We talked about that depth really not stepping up so far, Wit. No, they're not. But here we go, right chance. Good save Another by Battaglia. Save. That was Tom Macklear who got the shot on goal. What'd you see here, Biz? Yeah, just a weird hop. Look at this. Heavy, heavy shot. And just a beauty by Battaglia. But we, we, we've, we've reinforced this many, many times. On that one-timer, if you got have a guy in front of Battaglia in his eyes, you have a better opportunity for that to sneak through. Net front, fr net, net front presence has been a big weakness for NYPD so far. Let's see if they can get it done with 29 seconds remaining on this PP. You got, that's a race you got to win right there. Trying to clear it. What's happening here? We got too many men. We got a... Oh, no. Oh, no. I think there might be a bench minor here for the referee. I don't know what's going on right here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Bench minor. You can't be. I don't know what. So explain they, to those at home, maybe not as familiar with those deeper rules, what this means. Well, well, there was nothing going on the ice that would have signaled a penalty. And all of a sudden, one of the linesmen signaled to the bench. So I would imagine somebody said something. Uh, probably. Probably didn't like the way that the puck was dropped. I'm sure Witt, can you get a better uh, a better read on what exactly is happening? Um, I think it was too many men in the ice. I thought a P-bomb might have been dropped at the ref, but that wasn't the case. I think just too many uh, too many policemen on the ice at one time. That's bizarre because it was just an offensive zone face-off. I didn't even see a chase. No, yeah. yeah, it was. It was a chirp at the ref. Yep. It was, it was, I think like it was Honda. a P-bomb. Yeah. yeah, and that'll be number 48, Ryan Dermody, the Spit and Chicklets guest a few weeks ago. He's been oh, involved he's, in fights, and he's back to the box. He, he's got a mouth like a sailor, Ryan Whitney. I'll tell you, this guy, not a guy you want to bring home to Thanksgiving dinner if you're a lovely lady. The old man will bring out a, a two-piece in no time. Whoop, nah. 
So Dermody in the box now. Now we have two players from each team in the penalty box. And this this hockey four on four, it certainly helps FDNY biz. The speed and the skill level uh, can't really be matched with the open ice. So it's going to be an important, you know, kill of the four on four, I'll say, for the PD here. So 15 seconds of four on four hockey. And right now it's FDNY in no rush whatsoever with that four goal cushion. They scored five in the opening period. Three of them in the first six minutes. And Strafer gets released from the box. He hustles to the bench. That one, I believe it was a mask save by Crescion. Strafer with the just sprint from the box to the bench. You gotta respect it, Biz. You know you were good at that. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you go to the bit uh, to the box, Biz, in your career? Uh, usually when I looked over at the bench to signal whether I would be going <laughs> on the ice or to the bench, the coach would wave me over and they'd have another guy ready, Jake. Thanks for asking. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Matt Zay. I thought we were boys. <laughs> the top of the circle. Your team went now, eh? No, I'm well, team I'm both here. of you guys. I'll be between the benches next period. Uh-oh. Oh, could have been goalie interference there. Looked like you ran into him pretty hard. Right in the crease. All over it. And back to center ice. There's one cop trying to steal the possession. An opportunity for a change here. That's going to be an icing. Yep. That's going to help out NYPD. I tell you what, hey, boys. 12 minutes left on the clock. They get the kill in the next goal. All of a sudden, FDNY's arseholes will pucker up. It'll, it'll happen in no time. So 6-2 FDNY. Just more than 12 minutes to go in the second period. Every time we think NYPD has any sort of momentum, FDNY has scored right away after that. They crush them. We got people in the crowd trying to get the wave going, and luckily, uh, people are stopping that. We don't need any waves in here. I'm not going to lie. You're anti-wave. I'm an anti-wave guy. I heard Oilers fans love the wave. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, bud. We're true hockey fans up north. Oh, the wave oh, is no. rumbling. Oh, no. Here, here we go. Now. It's going. Yeah, I got to be a part of it, I think, strong. boys. Yeah. There we go. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Whip. Get that anti-perspiration. Give me an analysis. I can smell you from up ice. here. Burn a hole through your suit. Up top. Good a save. Shot good to save. The right by Lieutenant Joe Sanger. Somebody just got mugged in front of the net. Seems like no holds barred. I don't know if the referees aren't checking out the battles in front. Oh, here we go. It's a two on one opportunity. Another big saved save. by the shoulder by Crescion, who again was inserted in this game in the middle of the first period after four goals were allowed by starting goalie and last year's MVP, Brandon Bassett. So far, Crescione has allowed a pair. But his team still down by four. Just PD losing the races to loose pucks, though, in their own zone. You see, every time, every time there's a loose puck, a black jersey's getting there first. Yeah, they got to get this out. Fresh legs for FDNY. You mentioned that long change and how much it can hurt you. Sean Post with it now. He fires, but it's swallowed up by Nick Battaglia, who's been tremendous tonight so far, Biz. Rear Admiral, please report for duty. You're coming up next on the 49th Annual FDNY MYPD Heroes Hockey Game. Hey, what's going on there, pal? We saw you at the hockey game on. Do I know you guys? I'm Ryan Whitney. I got a drink named after me. Not a big deal. Give me that. Pink Whitney? It's delicious. Sorry, we don't have room for you three. You, you, and that baked potato on your face. See ya, fellas. I invented the thing, you pigeon. Pink Whitney for legendary moments. Biz, are we the losers? Wit. Yes. We're all gathered here to celebrate the first ever electric Chevy Silverado. It's a Chevy. It's a Silverado, it's electric, and it's badass. It's Barstool's most valuable truck. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with it. Whoa, 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 why do you two goons get the orange one? I want the it's orange truck. one. Yeah. 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 Chevy Silverado EV, Barstool's most valuable truck. All right, it's the clutch replay of the game brought to you by Muggsy Bits. Yeah, it's a beauty, too. Look at him follow it up, work the triangle there. And that's what you got to do, get a little blue paint. 
Antonitis right there, calling the trainer over, sacrificing the body, and here's another one too. This is a tough one, just losing your man, and this guy's got eyes in between the back of his head, and just taps it in. That made it 6-2. Right now, game a little bit out of hand. And now taking a look at the Pink Whitney shots on goal, fairly even, however, the scoreboard says otherwise. And speaking of wit, what'd you hear during that timeout? Well, I know when, when you win in a game, it's a little easier to be together as a group, but there's a lot more chatter, a lot more togetherness with this FDNY team. Over on the NYPD side, you know, you got some heads hanging, you got some guys just looking like beaten dogs, right? So it's a tough goal here, but you got to get that next one to get back into this game. It's a, it's a tale of two cities or a tale of two departments right here with these two squads, Biz. All right, that was Between the Benches presented by... Pink Whitney nearing the midway point of the second period. FDNY 6, NYPD 2. This face off in the offensive zone for NYPD, but it goes in favor of the firefighters and flutters over to the other side. Just some tough breakout passes here. You gotta go tape to tape. They're just throwing it up the wall. There's not much a forward can do with that. Slop tart hockey. Yep. Oh, that could have been a big hit. All right, here we go on the left side. O'Donohue fires, but Nick Pataglia's been locked in biz. Oh yeah, I mean, they're not gonna score from the outside of the dots. Laying in a muffin like that. Your best opportunity there is to go pass off the pads and have a big juicy rebound for one of your line mates streaking, but Hey, you get the offense's own draw, you get your second line out there, you gotta snap one back and start getting momentum. I think the PD try to uh, keep Stemke and, and O'Donoghue off the same line to try to even out the first and second line, but it might be time to maybe put them together here, Biz. Play them every other shift down 6-2. Kind of like through. when you were on the Penguins and you, they put Crosby and Malcolm together, the two-headed monster. Yep, and then I'd have to get off the ice. Yep. Now the pace has slowed down a little bit, which I think works in favor for FDNY. A little bit of joshing going on out there. They're trying to get face-off plays going, but uh, not much communication out there. Stemke will take this one for NYPD. And it goes in favor of the cops. Antonitis fires, but it was deflected before it got remotely close to the crease. Sounds like a Greek god. Antonitis? Antonitis. Well, I'll tell you what, Biz. Anzoulis is also on the team. They call him the Big Greek. 6'4", 250. A lot of similar names on this NYPD Cut team, off. but they're hoping for a similar score amount. Here it is. To FDNY, that one. Oh, that got blocked. Ricocheted off the mask of Bataglia. And here we go on the other end. Lopes. Missed it left, I think it was deflected by Crescione. Ropes, easily the best skater out here. He's just uh, creating opportunities for himself with his speed coming down the wing. Look at him on the back check now. Yeah, Sean Apuzo, who actually helped craft the documentary for this game, he actually told me he thought that Vinny Lopes was the fastest skater in this game, and I think that backs that up with. He's Luis Mendoza from the Mighty Ducks. Exactly, but he knows how to stop. That's the same guy who plays Benny the Jet Rodriguez, right? In oh, Canada. what a save there, boys. Taglia. Just when they needed him the most. This could be a goal with Zay. Here we go. Three on two for the moment. To the left side. <laughs> Deflected. That was Harrigan who got a piece of it and potentially saved that goal. That's a few big, uh, big blocks for him. He's sacrificing the body. He's doing what he can for his team. Yeah, Lydell. Harrigan, the assistant captain, 44 years old. 21 years of service in blue. That one deflected. Antonitis couldn't get a stick on it. And here we go to the other end. It's Matt Zay who has one already. Feed center. Kick save. Crescione. Chance right here. Two on one for the PD. Here we go. What a pass. Nice pass. There it is. Hey, 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 goal. Hey, hey. Number two. make this play it's a beaut and I'll everything starts with him what a perfect setup and the greek god well the new greek god in my opinion 
just pass under the tri triangle perfect and Fizz that came off a four on two for fire They didn't Look. get a goal and back the other way two on one. Yeah works the triangle And he goes forehand to backhand to slide it in so all of a sudden when the NYPD looked like they were dead to rights They have life And Antonitis is fired up on the bench eight minutes to go in the second period and we got a hockey game we got a hockey game, Jake. It's alive. Love, love to see it. Still under eight to go in the second. Long way to go in this one. However, I will say this. After the first two NYPD goals, the firefighters punch Well, back. that shuts your pie hole, they Jake. They have to survive this stretch here. We don't need the Jake Jinx. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know what we need? Tell we me. We need a little Rico Bosco. <laughs> oh, Rico Bosco. Welcome to the broadcast, Rico the Bosco. Uh oh, is your, uh, Rico's mic's not you working. You need a he's, microphone, Rico. He, he's another mush. Here, talk into mine, but don't spit in my mouth. <laughs> We're going to work on that. We this apologize. No way this oh, I just got, go. I just got go. hepatitis. Big, who's controlling the mics? Big Cat? There's no way that's a coincidence. There's no way. I was getting too confident just before the PD scored. I was going to ask, what's the earliest a goal he's ever been pulled? I mean, this is a route. It was it's a route. Crawling back well, in. We already it's saw a goalie switch. Oh, the Rico Nearly Mush! The Rico one. Mush! Oh, Donahue oh. <laughs> on the doorstep. Oh, the tagley is on the ground right now. Let's well, see if the firefighters can clear. Well, Rico Bosco's cousin's captain of yes. the FDNY, yeah. and right now he's dash one Jim, on the broadcast. Jim Becker. Yeah, he a took nice a, stop he took there. A, so he took a big hit before. I was, Looked like the shoulder was a little so, uh, Rico, a hit a what? Are we allowed to talk about your history with FDNY? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, what, what's your background? Yeah, I served on the uh, department for a little over two to three years. Um, I'm sorry, two, yeah, two to three years uh, on Staten Island. Had a setback, did some light duty stuff for a little while, and then uh, jumped over to Barcelona. So a total of like five years of, uh, of service. Awesome stuff, and of course your cousin, the captain. Oh, another <laughs> big hit. Wow. Wow. NYPD yeah. is alive and well. Look at this back check, he's coming back. And he's throwing another, another one. Boom. Oh, he just missed him, Biz. Crescione puts it up. Hello from the broadcast. Watch booth. this. Jake watch Marsh. this. Oh, we have watch a fight. the fireworks. Don't watch us. Watch what's on the ice right now. Gloves watch are off. off. Let him go. Gloves are off. Let him go, right. Raph. Here we go. Oh, he's going to get the right loose and a right. It's post oh, for NYPD. Left, right, left, oh, right, and he's left. jerseyed him. He jerseyed him. Yeah, NYPD is back. Trying to tell who that is for FDNY. So Look at him, he's the, fired up. He's here. gonna get the crowd revved up right now. Watch this. Sean Post throwing some haymakers. Here's 36. The, that was Matthew Gervasi against Sean Post. Wait, you said it. What can change the momentum of a hockey game? It all started down low. Post was pissed off about an earlier hit. They go down the other end, and what happens? A little tilt. So let's take a look at the earlier hit that may have gotten this whole thing started. 6.31 to go, 6.3 in favor of FDNY, but more momentum than we've seen all night long for the cops biz. Look at that big hit. He just, Boom. Uh, he what's, goes, he makes him go lateral there. Is, would, it, would that be de-skated him? Because in football, that's de-cleated him. Is that de Am I using that correctly? The most impressive thing about that was the back check coming back the other way, and that's the spark plug that's getting NYPD going right now. Just an incredible second period so far. And we thought this game was over. NYPD looked shook after that first period. They looked dejected. Even when they came out for the second, they had their heads down. But Jake, this is a hockey game. Now. Absolutely, Biz. And this game, albeit about tradition, passion, intensity, and the battle for bragging rights, also fo highly focused on the charitable causes from both sides. So the Ray Pfeiffer Foundation, it's a foundation that kind of focuses on men and women suffering from 9-11 related illnesses. We raise money to pay for anything that insurance doesn't cover. The hockey game's great, you know, what really matters is what we do off the ice and all the fundraising and all the families we're able to help. On the other side of town, the season of giving is kicked off, with the NYPD taking part in a charity game for the Colin Joy Project. So today we're playing a hockey game in uh, remembrance of Colin. We started Colin's Joy Project back in 2018. The mission of Colin's Joy Project is to bring joy to families the way Colin brought joy to ours. And we do that through building play spaces and um, partnering with community nonprofits. It's a great event and hopefully we keep doing that for the years to come. 
A couple days later at the rinks, the NYPD continues their effort to give back with a skate around raising funds for children suffering from pediatric cancer. You know, we as a team, we're one big family. So if people come down that, that want that sense of support, we will always, no matter what the situation is, we'll always be there for them. Yeah! Where'd it go? Gotta get used to the skates. You first time wearing them? No, this is my sister. Take time. To see them, see them smile for even like that second, it's, it's a wonderful feeling for me. Thanks, Jake. I'm down here with a real hero, former New York firefighter, Jeff Cool. Jeff, thanks for coming on. Give us a quick recap of your career. So uh, January 23rd, myself and five other firefighters got trapped in an illegally subdivided apartment building in the Bronx, where we had no choice to jump and hope for the best. We didn't have ropes. Uh, in 2013, or we, uh, we started the Joey D Foundation. We've outfitted uh, 87 different fire departments in 25 uh, different states with uh, bailout systems. And that's who I, I am today. I'm not a firefighter anymore, but I still care about the firefighters. It's a really amazing story. Um, you're taking care of these current firefighters. The game is six to three. Is there any chance they blow this lead and the cops come back? Absolutely not. It's all about the Bravest. The brothers are going to get it done. All right, last question. Rangers or Devils in the first round? Well, Fizz, I'm not a Fugazi. I'm a diehard New York Ranger fan. Rangers in seven. There you heard it. Thanks, Jeff. Back to you, Jake and Biz. Yeah, they're not the Fugazis anymore. They're the for realsies, and I hope they knock off the J New Jersey Devils. Posh's team. Yeah, you're going to make an enemy with Frank. I also think he's a realistic <laughs> Ranger fan if he knows it's going to seven. He's like, I know this team, they're going to torture us. It's yeah, going seven. Exactly. So respect that. No and doubt. And we saw that feature on all of the uh, charities being shouted out here. Wanted to go down the list. The Ray Pfeiffer Foundation, uh, actor, comedian, TV host, John Stewart actually received Ray Pfeiffer's bunker coat back in 2019. So he's a huge advocate for 9-11 responders. The UFA Widow and Children's Fund, the FDNY Fire Family Transport, and the New York Firefighters Burn Center Foundation. On the other side for NYPD, the PBA Widows, Children, Arms Wide Open, and you saw the feature on Collins Joy Project. That's the main reason why we're here tonight, guys. Absolutely incredible job by both squads, and Merle's as well, to get that amazing story. And yeah, if you get, I mean, a lot of people look at this, it is a semi-pro game, like, they don't act like professionals. Um, and a lot of these guys, if you get to know them outside the locker room, like, they come in with extra sticks to give to the kids. The ki they make sure the kids have a skate on the ice, like, all these foundations. Everybody's really here to compete and then obviously give back. And this stuff, like he said, the job doesn't leave a lot of these guys. So, yeah, you're a and lot that guy's no, that guy's no joke in Rescue Three, by the way. Like that's incredible. They're doing, they're in busy, busy spots. So. Absolutely. So we're joined by Rico Bosco yeah. in the booth right now, former member of Fire Department of New York. Rico, we mentioned that the captain Jim Becker is your cousin. Anyone else on this roster right now that you have a close relationship with? A buddy of mine's on the DL. I got to shout out my oh, guy no. Elf. Yeah, <laughs> from uh, from Broby School. Um, not big in size, but big in heart, and he's got a lot of skill. So he's banged up. And uh, I worked a little bit with Joe Sanger, uh, number 10, who they call Thor. His kids are down there with the sign. Yeah, Lieutenant uh, Joe Sanger. I think we saw him in the penalty box. Yeah, the first yeah. Game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Joe's, <laughs> Joe's an enforcer. I know that the documentary said uh, don't screw with him. I could, I could stuff, uh, attest to that. He's a big, big dude. Yeah, the assistant captain. Five and a half to go in the second. FDNY leads 6-3 to three in the 49th edition of this Heroes hockey game. A shot saved by the glove of Bataglia. Now on the wraparound, off the rebound, trying to keep it inside the blue line and we'll have to all tag up and we see a line change here by the cops bits yeah and i feel like the pace wit has slowed down just a little bit which i think benefits nypd because we mentioned that speed of fdny and how much it was hurting them early on but would you say it's pretty even as far as pace now yeah it is it seems like some of the boys are getting a little bit tired but i'm with you i mean nypd wants it to be slow they want to muck it up so as long as you can slow down FDNY through the neutral zone, things are going to look good. They still need three more to get this thing tied up, though. All right, five and change remaining in the second period. Rear Admiral, please report for duty. You are coming up next on the 49th Annual FDNY MYPD Heroes Hockey Game. We heard you crack open the blue light. Yo, come on in. Here too? Goodbye, empty couch. Hello, standing room only. Labatt takes everything to the power of we. I'm going big. I'm going We're bringing big back. 
it's bigger, cheesier. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. Oh yeah, these pants stretch a lot so you can get a deep squat. Real fucking comfortable jeans. Oh no, they're not waterproof, but you can drink on the roof. Real fucking comfortable jeans. Run with your boys in the park and it's a dinger still dark. Real fucking comfortable jeans. FDNY doubling up NYPD with 5.02 remaining in the second. Six to three, and let's send it over to Rear Admiral, who's with Muggsy and R.A. Oh, yeah. What's in your hand right now? Very good, R.A., how about you? Last time I was down the house, the boys weren't looking too good, so we got some duds from Muggsy here. You can pass them on to the boys. And we got Declan and Finn with us right now. How'd they do today? I think they did all right. I think there was a little bit of a mismatch, but uh, I think Finn held his own, and uh, Declan lit it up like normal. I mean, you guys don't rush you in. You guys gonna have to rush you the cops today with a 6-3 way right now, second period? Nah, I think we're good. I, I'm happy with this. Stay out of the box and maybe one or two more, and uh, we'll take it home. All right, back to the boys in the booth, see what happens. All right, thank you, all right. All smiles for FDNY fans so far, but a long way to go. I'll say this, though. He looks incredible in that Muggsy G oh, outfit, absolutely. right, Whit? Oh. Have, you, have you ever seen R.A. look so good? God, no, he's got the pop collar, at least earlier he did. I don't know about right now. Who knows what he's been popping. So coming off that breather, NYPD trailing by three. Stemke was banged up earlier in the second. He tries to connect it with Aiden Bohm and a crash against the glass just outside the trapezoid. Benta Cinque, the captain for NYPD, puts it back up to the point. Antonelli flings it. Rebound back to Antony. What a pass that was. Benta Cinque tried to entry feed. That one goes out of play. So Biz, they're putting the pressure on the goal right now. They certainly are. They certainly are, Jake. Wait, what are you really seeing down there? I mean, like I said, the, 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 the pace, pace is slowed down, and it's slowed down enough where there aren't really aren't really many chances on either side. The passing's getting a little sloppy. I know end of the period, the ice isn't great, but they got to get some pucks on net. It seems like FDNY is doing a good job of getting the traffic in front and blocking a lot, but not much movement with the puck in the offensive zone for PD. It's McLear and Kern right now at the faceoff circle. And the linesman Nardello is going to have them do it once again. A little bit early there. Guys are gassed on the bench for something. <laughs> Hammering waters. They got to, they got to get the oxygen tank out. Maybe the Russian gas. So round two of this face-off goes in favor of the firefighters trying to clear. And they're across center ice. That's offside. Offsides. I'll tell you, that, that, that John Peretta been 77 for fire. He's a, he's a good skater, stay at home deep. We've seen him throw a couple big hits tonight. That's an important player, a reason they're up 6-3. Yeah, I like how he gets up the ice. Even when he doesn't have the puck, he'll get right to that blue line. If anything's coming back the other way, he's holding it. He's talking, he he's talking, he's, he's telling people where to go, what to be. That's a great little dish off the wall there. A solid all-around defenseman. Yeah, the 27-year-old from Staten Island. His father was actually a lieutenant at the same firehouse, Ladder Company 132. He was highlighted in the documentary Battle of the Badge. Check it out in the Spit and Chicklets YouTube page. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh. Arrogant with a dirty slash. As oh. one of the members of FDNY on the ice. Some joshing. I'm not sure if anything's going to happen here before the end of the period. A little bit more shoving Peretta in the mix. So big defensive zone faceoff coming out here. If I'm the NYPD, I'm putting out that O'Donoghue line, and I'm seeing if I can get a little thing going before the end of the period. They're upset about the after the whistle stuff on the FDNY bench here, Biz. One guy said it may be a five hour game. That's okay though. We got nowhere to go. Might need another Red Bull for the broadcast. Got to get something going here. It just seems like both teams have gone a little stale, which is fine for FDNY, right? They'll sit back. They'll let the game end 
NYPD's got to push the pace. Like I said, though, crushing waters on the bench and breathing heavy. There, there's so much adrenaline coming into the game. Yep. Sometimes you end up balking because you get yourself so worked up before actual puck drop. So it should be interesting to see how they come out in the third period. Julian Carney helps win the faceoff for FDNY, the former Siena Saint up in Albany. Long shot from the point. Rebound from the slot. Jimmy Brown keeps it on their side, and Crescione stops it. Yeah, some great movement there from Brown walking the blue line with. That was one of your specialties, creating space, and feeding it over to the guy on the half wall, great. opening things up to the flank. Great patience there. He got it on the wall, knew he could hold on to it, walked the line, ended up getting a scoring chance from it. We got a shout out Crescione, too. He probably didn't even plan on playing this game. Bassett's their number one goalie. He gets pulled early, and he's been fantastic since he came in. A great rebound control. He's made a few key saves off of odd man rushes as well. There was that weird Planko goal, but uh oh, oh my! I mean, couldn't track that one. You win a faceoff, and all of a sudden it's a great A chance there. You got to get the puck off these wins. All right, here's the top line for NYPD. Let's see if they can muster something up. Antonitis, O'Donoghue, Ragone. Antonitis has two, O'Donoghue has three. So they're responsible for all the goals. What a save! That one Big stop. Save. What a save right there. Precious. Sprawling out, he got the blocker on it. And here comes Gabe. Over center ice. He puts it down. Approaching the two minute mark of this second period. FDNY put up five in the first, just one in the second though. We're going, intercepted. And Michael Keane. Here we go. O'Donoghue on one knee. Shot. Denied. Oh, oh no. That was a great chance. Still Coming all back over the place. Two on minutes to rush. go. Here we go. Over to the other end. A nice feed. Oh, a swing and a miss by Brendan Tracy. Good opportunities on both ends. Boom. We got to get left. a good change here. They're gonna get caught. There it is. Oh no, odd man rush. Go. Three it's on a two. three on two in favor of the fire department. Instead, they flick it back. Great play by Jimmy Hall there on D with the good stick. And the pace settles down a little bit. Reset get out to your man. Zone. Pump fake to the side and behind. Yeah, NYPD suck and win. A lot of confusion, lack of communication, too much separation from the man there. Yeah, they're running around busy. They don't play a man-on-man -man system, but it kind of looks like they are with all this open space for FDNY. Turn in the corner. Uh, they hit the glass. Goes out of play into Much the third row. So 6-3 FDNY. Souvenir. There's Crescione. Keeping the team in this game. A few opportunities to go, though, Biz, here for NYPD. It was O'Donoghue making a great play from his knees to set up his defenseman jumping in from the weak side, but just couldn't get enough to elevate that puck. And we keep talking about how players in this game have been able to expose that, that shot 12 inches off the post, that left post, and just unable to elevate the puck, not get enough on it. So a great individual effort from O'Donoghue. Hello once again from the broadcast booth, Jake Marsh, Biz Nasty, Ryan Whitney is in between the benches right now. Thanks for joining us for the 49th annual FDNY NYPD Heroes hockey game. We've got one minute to go in the second period. It is 6-3 in favor of FDNY, who has held the trophy on their side since 2016. That was the last time that the cops won this game. That includes a tie in that streak, but right now, NYPD needs to come back to and change And a double that. shift for that top line of O'Donoghue. Big and a big opportunity Italia. here in the offensive here we zone. Go. Let's see Donnie, if who has one. Oh, oh, oh and he gets goal. number two. Holy a sniper by number Look 18. Look at the celebration, baby. That's number two on the night. Going top G's. How's your mama? Woo! Right where grandma hides the brownies. Right where grandma hides the weed brownies. And we got a hockey game under a minute to play. What do they do? They go back to that top line. After O'Donoghue's line created that chance, Earlier on, about a minute ago, they go right back to him. He must have an oxygen tank out there. Give him the Russian gas. Look at this spinorama. 
How does he get the leverage blocker side on this shot, Wit? How does he do it? He's got a hell of a wrist shot, Biz. I can't explain to you Gary Haber behind the bench of the NYPD head coach screaming at the FDNY bench after that goal. Banging on the glass, getting involved, and there's some life on this team over here at NYPD, guys. Jake, I, I have to say it. Being on the FDNY team, I know what it's like now. You had this big lead. All of a sudden, you're slowly seeing it disappearing. I'm telling you what, they're going to go in that locker room, and their arseholes are going to be so puckered up tight, and they're going to be nervous about blowing this one. Okay? Up they five, need, one after they, one. They need leadership in that locker room for someone to go in and calm things down. Because right now, all the momentum is in NYPD's favor. They started mucking them up. They started bringing them into that slow-paced game that they wanted to play. And right now, right now, NYPD's got them right where they want them. Biz, they did exactly what you said. They slowed this game down to a crawl. Almost bored FDNY to kind of make some lackadaisical mistakes. Nice word usage there, Wit. And here we go, if they could get another one. <laughs> Is this the New York Islanders out there right now? Oh, that was another good opportunity. Look at this. Deflection with 20 seconds to go, trying to clear FDNY. Now at 15. Puck at center ice. What an effort, what an effort. O'Donoghue still on the One last chance ice. here, he fires. Deflected by a defender, five seconds left. Last chance, Whoa. oh, that was just to the right. Wow, he, that was oh. a snipe, and that is how the second period ends. And the cops have all the momentum in the world, Biz. And here we go. Is that Peretta? Peretta? Peretta's involved. Peretta's involved as always. But Biz, O'Donoghue almost made that 6-5. Jake, a snipe is when it goes in, not when it wraps around the boards. <laughs> I'm a rookie. That's Thanks okay, buddy. Me out. That's okay. I'm learning. I love you. I love yeah. you, buddy. I thought I missed the goal, though. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> We're going to get another look at this, and it's going to pop out. And he is just going to miss the mark on that glove side. Missed it by a country mile. But I tell you what, when it makes the sound on the boards, everybody gets excited. And everybody is excited because we have a hockey game, Jake. And we're going to send it down to Ryan Whitney right now. He is going to be talking to the star of the game so far, Dan O'Donoghue. Boys, I'm here with Dan O'Donoghue, star of the game right now for NYPD. An enormous second goal for you there. What are you going to say to the team in between the intermission? I thought that was a good period for us. First period, I wasn't happy. Threw a couple tape you know, across the locker room in the first period. But, you know, the effort we put there in the, in the second period, I think it gives us a good chance here in the third. So we did what we had to do in the second. We just got to carry it over to the third period now. You were fuming, Matt, at the end of that first period. You got cut with a little dirty shot at yeah, the end yeah. there. But I'll tell you right now, you slowed this game down to a snail's pace, and that's kind of your game plan to get these guys off their game, no? Well, yeah, definitely a game plan, but it doesn't help when I'm 32 and I can't feel my legs anymore. So <laughs> I think that just kind of comes with the age and not playing as much anymore. But, you know, cheap shot from the fire. You know, and, uh, I expect that from them. Dirty bunch of guys over there. But, um, yeah, like I said, we just got to come out in the third period. And, I think we gave ourselves a good chance here in the third, so we just got to see what we can do. Thanks so much, Dan. Keep going. Good, thanks, buddy. You heard it there, guys. I mean, that's the player of the game, and he's not letting up. There's a lot more hockey to be played here. What Absolutely. an inspiring performance. Dan O'Donoghue has two. The cops are now down by just two, and you've got two minutes and 30 seconds to order some Pizza Hut, and then come right back for the intermission report delivered by Pizza Hut. 6-4 FDNY intermission on the other end. We're all gathered here to celebrate Barstool's most valuable truck, the first ever electric Chevy Silverado. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with it. Chicklets, what do you got? We're putting on the legendary FDNY versus NYPD hockey game. All right, boys, this is a big game. And on top of that, we're gonna be loading up all the gear we need for the game in the back of this beautiful Silverado EV. All right, let's get to work. We're bringing Big back. It's bigger. She's here. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. In order to bring the wonders of the world home, I would fight. Tormented by what I knew was possible. The perfect cup of coffee. Stella Blue Coffee. There's no way he's making this. But if he makes it, we're all cracking open with that. From the impossible chip to the 19th hole, the bat takes everything to the power of Wii.
Here's your first question of the day, Team Proper Wild. What's the population of Papua New Guinea? Ten million three hundred twenty-nine thousand nine hundred thirty-one. That's exactly correct. <laughs> this Harry Potter character is the. Madame Pomfrey. Correct. Next. Hunger Games. Correct. <laughs> and Jensen Ackles. Unbelievable, that's a perfect game. Proper Wild is a clean, all-day energy shot designed to boost your productivity, focus, and energy without the jitters or crash. Last year, more clients hired Morgan & Morgan than ever before. With over two million phone calls last year alone, more people in more cities across America want more Morgan & Morgan. When you hire Morgan & Morgan, you're also hiring a family business. And after 35 years, we now have more offices, more staff, and more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. Protecting America, fighting for you. Injured, call Morgan & Morgan for the people. You guys got some mm. food. Somebody's got the munchies. Go to partofmycheesesteak.com and order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub. Welcome back to the Intermission Report, delivered by Pizza Hut, live from UBS Arena. And back at UBS Arena, oh my word, boys, do we have a game. Six to four, NYPD did what they did in the first period, but this time there was no FDNY answer at the end. Jeff D'Lo, Big Cat, Colby Armstrong, Merles, and... Rico Bosco joining us now. Bosco. Yeah, I made a comment. I asked uh, on the broadcast what the earliest was a goalie has been pulled. This might be my top mush of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I've celebrated wins. Dan can attest. Uh, yes. First touchdown. Yes. Great You're start. The tweets come. Idiot. I am a moron. I'm, I, I'm up here now catching strays. This guy's yeah, got 14 you're, you're different things about NATO. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was everywhere. a friendly <laughs> environment. <laughs> but, uh, O'Donohue had a big goal at the end there. Oh. He is gassed. They're going to scoop him up with a spatula off the ice. The end of this buddy made a comment to the yeah, fire guys. To it's, it's like it's two sides of every story because after the first period, I'm asking my FD guys down in the locker room, like, they're gonna make it dirty? Like, yeah, they already started. So PD thinks they're playing dirty, they think they're playing dirty. It's it's uh you know who's who really. Yeah, What's well, going it's on? working, I think, a little bit for PD. They've kind of pushed themselves back into this game a little yeah. bit, and we've got to see some rough stuff, and we actually they've been breaking it up. We got one little fight that did get away. And it's kind of let PD push themselves into this game. And FDNY had a couple chances. They had one off a faceoff where it was basically an open goal. Yeah. They weren't able to capitalize, and now, now it's a game. Yeah, Big Cat, we got a game. I want to know what our live bet cash out is Listen, now. Listen, it's probably going to be That's fine. I'm about All to win right. the 50-50. So I'll, I'll let you guys oh. walk away. when FDN, If FDNY wins and I win the 50-50, bet's on me. I'm, right. okay, I'm in that, the 50-50 game. And I'm going to oh. one-up you. If I win, I'm giving it to the charity oh, to get the positive no, no, vibes no, no. out of the way. <laughs> no, no. You can't. Yeah, you can't yeah, that's not that's even crossing his mind. Not you even talk about wrong. playing dirty, that's yeah. playing dirty. Yeah. Listen, that's 50, playing you dirty. know what? 50% already is going to the charity, so I'm I need more to the charity. <laughs> Now you're not going to win. You're too honorable in that sense. Uh, second period, pretty great. Ten total goals. Two goal lead. They finally broke through. They could not get within three. Uh, beyond three, they're now within two. NYPD trying to end that skid. But let's talk to professional hockey. From amateur to professional, we talked Eastern Conference playoffs uh, in the first intermission here delivered by Pizza Hut. Now it's time to talk the Western Conference, the other side. They don't have that strong top team like uh, the Eastern Conference does with Boston, but there we go. The defending Stanley Cup champions taking on, look at, look at that, second year after being expansion, that road and that won't die. Seattle making their first playoffs, taking on the Avs. Uh, that's, that's a no-brainer, Colorado. Oh, yeah. You got McKinnon, you got McCarr, the old m and brothers. You're all set there. That's an easy one. I got them in six games, though. I think Seattle will be a little tough. I don't think it's going to be like a runaway. Uh, I, I, I would say six games. Okay. But I do like, like Colorado's playing really. Nate's McKinnon's out of his mind right now. The way I always do it is just a little journalist trick. If a team wins the Stanley Cup the year before, you're just like, they played a lot of hockey. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. they might be tired. Yeah. They played a lot of hockey. It's yeah. hard to go back to back. Hockey yeah. Bosco, you got to pick for the series? Let's go, think Bosco. That one's probably Col uh, Colorado. I don't know if it's going six. Yeah. Yeah. Based on how they kind of, yeah, true. five. See, it's uh, nice maybe I'm giving Seattle. Seattle. Let's let Seattle take game one, get a nice little story. Colorado yeah. back on track. Right. Colorado. I can five. see that. Dallas, Minnesota, Pete DeBoer, no stranger taking a team in his first season to maybe the Stanley Cup. Could he potentially do that? No. Okay. Not for me. <laughs> I got. I like Mini. I like Mini. I, I like him. I, I think it's going to be a seven-game series, though. I think they're going to do it in seven against this team. And 
Um, you know, they've got good mojo. They got Revo came over there and just got the boys going. Like we're seeing with PD right now, muscling themselves back into this game. And Minnie kind of does that. Kaprizov healthy. They're dangerous. They're a little dangerous. Minnesota usually chokes in the second round, so yeah. I'll give them this one. <laughs> they have a, a little unknown. They do. Thing. They do. They have one of the best home ice advantages in all of the league, so I got them getting by here, too. Uh, wow. Vegas, Winnipeg, Vegas, no stranger to long playoff runs when they make it. They usually go pretty damn far. Have not been back to the Cups in that first season, but Mark Stone coming back. Vegas, top team in the West. Can they make that run again? Uh, I, I always take Vegas. I always take them go to the finals. Because so then, do I. So then Chicklets gets a trip to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's yeah. We'll bring you guys. Heads. That's smart. We gotta bring you emotional heads. heads. We gotta bring you guys. You bet against your own team. That's the emotional yeah. heads. Rico going Vegas. Uh, yeah, I'd go Vegas on that. I also asked Whitney before. I'm like, you got a sleeper for the cup. He said the stars. So now I'm yeah, getting I know. in on He's the stars. He's big on the stars. Yeah, I'm, I'm going Winnipeg. I'm going Winnipeg. I, I was on Winnipeg. Then they stunk. Then we gave it to him on game notes of podcast morals. They cranked it. They turned it around. They turn it around. You got to give it to them sometimes and get a little chicklets bump going, and away they went. So I think they're a dangerous team. I'll throw a little go Knights go out there, but let's let's clear the table. This is Big Cat here. Yeah, yeah. Edmonton, yeah. Los Angeles. You have something for us here. So I made my pick. Uh, I took the Edmonton Oilers this morning. I drove over to New Jersey, plus 700 to win the Stanley Cup. I'm so sick of you guys talking about Connor McDavid being the best thing in all of sports. He's got to prove it to me, oh. and then I will be aboard. So I'm ready to accept uh, McJesus into my life. You guys, you know, you tell me how bad of a bet that was. You you're, just, you're not going to. You're not going to like. I like it. You're not going to like what I have written down oh, here. Oh no! One of my good friends is a coach of the Eastern Conference. And he told me the Kings are the most dangerous team in the West. So if they lose in the first round, yeah. then I'll, so. I'll just say this right now. Connor McDavid's a bum. Okay? <laughs> if, 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 if. I'm not there yet, but I will say that if that happens. I don't know why. I have a feeling this is their year. I have a feeling there this we go. is their year. Let's go. I'm, I'm riding with Big Cat All on right. this one. I say six games, that series over. McDavid, you got dry sidle. Skinner's been good. They picked up Ekholm. They can't lose. Dude, McDavid is the Mark best player in all books. of sports. Yeah. Just a That's little piece of advice. Told me. You don't want to be making friends with coaches and let it affect your opinion, yeah. especially in Boston. Yeah. 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 You don't want to prepare for well, no, that you, to come back. You, you, that's just you. That's just you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, that's just you. Okay, yeah. That's different just rules you. for different guys. No, no, yeah. you just mush every <laughs> coach in the world. I'm going Oilers. Big Cat's the futures guy. We all saw it. Barstool Sports. I'm going to know my last one. Code Biz Nats to get a chance to have bonus for new players. On the other side of the break, we're going to talk more about the second period, but then Focus on the third period. Can NYPD come back and end this drought? It's six to four. We'll be right back to UBS. We're bringing big back. It's bigger, cheesier. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. All right, Whip Dog. Make it, you'll be a legend forever. Miss it, you'll be a loser. <laughs> Are you guys done? Sorry, ladies. Pink Whitney shots all around. This guy's buying. What? Pink Whitney for legendary moments. <laughs> There's no way he's making this. But if he makes it, we're all cracking open with that. From the impossible chip to the 19th hole, the bat takes everything to the power of we. I love the board this week. Free your balls with Muggsy. Hey guys, boy do we have a product for you. The Muggsy Clutch Jeans. Tired of this happening? <laughs> Regular jeans rip and tear, and they're just not comfortable. It's time to get Muggsy Clutch Jeans. They stretch for your comfort. There's only one Muggsy Clutch Jeans. They stretch, they fit, and they're comfortable. Free your balls once and for all with Muggsy Clutch Jeans at Muggsy.com. Last year, more clients hired Morgan & Morgan than ever before. 
With over 2 million phone calls last year alone, more people in more cities across America want more Morgan & Morgan. When you hire Morgan & Morgan, you're also hiring a family business. And after 35 years, we now have more offices, more staff, and more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. Protecting America, fighting for you. Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan for the people. Welcome back to the Intermission Report, delivered by Pizza Hut. And back here at UBS Arena, 6-4 NYPD, down by two now. One period to go. Can they make the comeback here in the uh, intermission delivered by Pizza Hut? Let's take a look at the, by the way, we look great in our mugs. Look at this brown, oh, like, little olive oil. Mugsy, oh, baby. Little olive oil oh, color in it. Uh, clutch replays Jeez, of that period. So NYPD going to dominate these clutch replays now. How about that? Yeah, they should. I mean, they're trying. They're fighting and scratching and clawing for their lives mm -hmm. here. And this was an awesome play. Individual effort all the way here. Woo. And Antonidas comes in and cleans it up as his buddy Stemke crashes into the boards. We thought he blew his shoulder out there calling him in. Antonidas doesn't even get to celebrate, but he does later. Uh, but uh, that got the party started early, Jeff. They are scoring much better, as we having much better chance in that second period. As we heard from Donahue in that interview with Witt, uh, right before we came here for this intermission report, can they keep it going? He seems tired. Do you think they're going to have the legs for it? Yeah, I think they're all struggling. The, the pace slowed down. Here's Adnitis losing all of his minds on that goal celebration. This is unbelievable. This is a real snipe right here. Bang and oh. in. They got life. They got the energy coming. I think it's got to be O'Donoghue, <laughs> obviously. They, O'Donoghue wants to fight someone yeah. so bad. Done. They might be able to do it. They were able to pull with into the Muggsy clutch replays, Pink Whitney shots on goal. It's pretty close to even. And when PD has another one shot lead here, 28-27, one period to go. This is it. There's no better way to conclude the intermission report delivered by Pizza Hut than with a special New York delivery from Biz. We head to the final period. This has been the Intermission Report, delivered by Pizza Hut. Thanks for watching. What's up, everybody? We're here at NYC. We're going to surprise the boys. Their last practice before the big game, and it's all delivered by Pizza Hut. Let's go inside and meet the boys. What's up, boys? Bring it in. This is a big match. I want to see what you made of. And we're getting a little bag skating if you work hard enough. A little treat at the end of practice for most of you. Looking at you, Tendy. Let's get going here and uh, show me what you're made of. Guys, it's back. Wait, what's back? So is it back up? Back up? Back up? No, it's back after nearly 25 years. Pizza Hut, the big New Yorker. Again! You got to earn those extra toppings. Again! That's the type of effort you're going to give me for the big New Yorker? Again! Hell of a Man, skate, a gentlemen. Bag. Holy smokes. Boys, wow. as promised, Who is that guy? delivered by Pizza Hut, the big oh, New yeah. Yorker. Oh, for yeah. all your hard work, boys. Pizza. Pizza. Wow. Every bite is That's better than the next cheese. one. Yeah, some would say it's. Fire. Yeah, where'd you even get that gear? Who is I this guy? took it Wally? out of your trunk. I'm gonna see myself out. The big New Yorker is back and better than ever before after nearly 25 years. Go big so you can go bigger and cheesier with the biggest, boldest pizza. Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Here's your first question of the day, Team Proper Wild. What's the population of Papua New Guinea? Ten million three hundred twenty-nine thousand nine hundred thirty-one. That's exactly correct. This Harry Potter character is the Madame Pomfrey. Correct. Next. Hunger Games. Correct. <laughs> and Jensen Ackles. Unbelievable. That's a perfect game. Proper Wow is a clean, all-day energy shot designed to boost your productivity, focus, and energy without the jitters or crash.
We are all gathered here to celebrate Barstool's most valuable truck, the first ever electric Chevy Silverado. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with it. Chicklets, what do you got? We're putting on the legendary FDNY versus NYPD hockey game. All right, boys, this is a big game. And on top of that, we're gonna be loading up all the gear we need for the game in the back of this beautiful Silverado EV. All right, let's get to work. We're bringing big back. It's bigger. She's here. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. Let the cheese drop. Welcome back to UBS Arena on Long Island. And we have a game, 6-4 FDNY over NYPD as we embark on the third period. And we want to welcome you back ringside. Jake, is... Jake, I'm losing my voice. This is getting too intense up here. I never thought they were going to turn this into a game. NYPD making chicken salad out of chicken shit. Yeah. No? And they were down 5-1. Now it's 6-4. What did you do during the intermission? What are you hearing down there? Jake, I have been searching for Strafer's mom. <laughs> Driving me insane. Can't, yeah, find so the, Cam? can't find the woman. But I did uh, I did get a great box of popcorn. This UBS Arena popcorn, guys, it pops. No pun intended. I'm going to have to get myself some popcorn, Jake. I'll bring, some, a, I'll bring some up for you, Biz, okay? I'm going to send them on a popcorn run <laughs> but, but on a serious note, um, I talked to a bunch of fans, a couple of NY, NYPD guys who, who were fired up. They said that's exactly what needed to happen. They needed to slow the game down. Biz brought up that point originally, and because of that, it's now a ball game. So what's the feeling there down by the benches? It seems like the FDNY coach is saying something to one of his players. Even looks a little bit frustrated. I think that they're a little annoyed at the fact that they kind of played into NYPD's hands a little bit. Yeah. You know, they want to play with the pace that they have. That's what makes this team so good. And on NYPD's side, I think they are all looking to maybe step up and carry O'Donoghue a little bit. He's their number one guy. He's the guy that's kind of leading them back into the fight. But they're going to need some secondary scoring to get back into this thing. It can't yeah. be all him. Looks like a little bit of tummy sticks going on there at center ice. I don't really like that. But as far as what you just mentioned, I'm looking for someone from NYPD, a role player, to step up and elevate the team offensively. We really haven't seen that. They've relied on the top guys a little too much, where the offense seems to be spread out at least a little bit more for FDNY. So who is going to be that hero? Who is going to be that hero for NYPD? I don't know, man. I'm looking around. Maybe number 13, McAleer here. I mean, he looks like he's kind of falling asleep. I'm not gonna lie, but maybe that's just the calm. <laughs> Get him a sniffer. Maybe that's just the calm before the storm, Biz. You know what they say, right? No. Fate said to the warrior, "You can't handle the storm," and the warrior said, "I am the storm." Whoa! How about that for a quote, Jake the Snake? Love to hear it. All right, thanks, Will. We'll catch up with you as we move on in this third period. The storylines in this game. Early on, it was all about the speed of FDNY. They went up 4-0 and 5-1 bids. Well, they, could, they looked like they were on rollerblades in the first period. They couldn't match it. They were trying to goon it up. FDNY wanted nothing to do with it. They just transitioned well, took advantage of those turnovers, and put them right in the back of the net on NYPD, Jake. So it was 4-0 to start, as we mentioned, and then 5-1. But the last two goals of this second period went in favor of NYPD. In fact, of their four goals, only two guys have scored. Two for Antonitis, two for O'Donoghue. So a hat trick watch for both of them. Both of them, but as I mentioned, very top heavy. O'Donoghue did the interview at the end of the second period with Witt. You could, you could see he was sucking wind. He looks a little bit gassed. They're relying on him so much. He had to have hit the Russian gas or an oxygen tank between periods because he's back out here starting the period for NYPD. Let's see if this could be one of the most inspiring performances we've ever seen on ice. If he's able to get this hat trick and propel his team to victory, Jake. He actually right. shot under Red Bull. Okay, well that. Love it. All right, buckle up, folks. It is time for the third period, third period here at a sold-out UBS Arena. 17,255, the capacity, the home of the New York Islanders. At first, it seemed like we get a snoozer, as we mentioned, 4-0, 5-1. But two straight goals late in the second by the cops. I made this 
a two-goal game with 20 minutes at least to play. In the 49th edition of this long tradition. Jake, I would, Jake I'm sorry, Biz. I got to tell you. No, nope, I got to go tell you. There's one thing the NYPD cannot take any penalties. Oh, oh my God! What a what play a pass there. there! Everyone thought he was going to shoot for the hat trick. We'll get the replay for you guys in a minute. But what were you saying, Whip? NYPD cannot take a penalty. They cannot. They have to stay out of the box to get back into this thing. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. I was just going to say, I think the referees have done a heck of a job letting the guys play, not calling anything of the cheesy stuff. Absolutely. The crew led by Ryan Knapp, joined by Mike Greeny, Patrick DePuzo, and James Nardello. And you mentioned staying out of the box, Whip. You, fought, you rewind to the beginning of the second period. Because of the fight, there were guys in the box on both sides. It was crowded, but now it's empty. Full five-on-five five hockey. That's what they need to do. They're, they're not a speed team. They slow it down. You saw what happened when they slowed down the pace. All right, here's, here's some of those depth players we've been talking about for NYPD. Let's see how they can muster something up and get something going. They're going to get the offensive zone draw, or was that an offside? I don't know what that whistle was. I think it was offside. I don't think he tagged up. All right. So the and crew. it's down the other end, Biz. It's the old school rule. They got rid of that in the NHL. So explain what this is to some of our viewers. I can't well, even explain it. Well, some <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when it's an obvious tag up rule and then the offensive team still goes offside, they punish them by putting a defensive zone draw in their own end. But you said that they got rid of it, right, Wick? I kind of made that up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting off the rails. I just haven't I just haven't seen oh oh, 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 oh it's eight and boom wow a one goal game here come the cops we talked about this a depth player stepping up at the right time and he does it early in the third period wow finally getting some eyes in front of the goaltender it looked like there was a screen there with it goes right between the wickets Pretty much a nothing burger from pretty far out. He had to have been screened, no? I, I think he was screened. And listen, Danny O'Donnell, you got that puck. That might have been a first goal in the big game right there. That's what we're talking about, stepping up at the right time. It was actually his own player screening him. And you got to get that block if you're FDNY. You're going in between the periods. All of a sudden, you're hemorrhaging goals, and then you don't get the block. What a play by an unsung hero to get this game within one goal. Oh, Donahue's down, guys. Oh, no. Donahue's oh, down. Oh, down no. I don't know what happened. I was looking at the play on the wall. I don't know what happened here. Oh, he looks in pain, folks. He is keeled over. This is the only thing that can't happen to NYPD oh, no. here. It looks like it might be a... Oh, oh, it's a lower body injury. I think he's limping. I think it's his knee, boys. Oh, no. Oh, you don't want to see that. We saw earlier in the game in that second period and tinnitus go down the tunnel. Oh, okay. Well, it's a, it's a shot off the foot. That that's better than a knee. That's better than one of those. How long will something like that sting with? And uh, uh, for me, Jake, it was about three to six months. But for some tougher <laughs> players, it's three to six minutes. How about a New York police officer? I think he'll be back next shift. I really do. But I was I was worried about one of those horrific non-contact injuries. Yeah. And it wasn't that. I guess he got shot right off his foot. I think he'll be back. But I needed to mention to you guys right after that goal that made it six five. And uh, FDNY's head coach went right down. Oh, we got a half break here. Oh, my. Look out. Wow. Oh, a chance for the tie wow. and Jeez. potentially the hat trick for Antonitis. Holy jump. Antonitis is buzzing. He's buzzing out there. But what I was saying was the FDNY coach, he went right down to Zay and he said, let's go. It's all you here. They need their best player to answer. They've disappeared this last yep. half of game. Yep. They have completely disappeared. They got all their damage done in the first period, and now they're in no man's land. And we're going back to that injury, I, I actually thought it was off of the faceoff, and sometimes centermen, they get twisted up, and, and you mentioned the knee. It looked like it potentially was a knee, but thankfully, just a shot off the ankle, goes down the tunnel. I would imagine the trainer's going to give it a rub, and look who's coming back down the tunnel. There he is. This is one of the most inspiring performances I've ever seen. He's walking it off, but you know this kid's coming back. No doubt. Once I heard it was just a puck off the foot, you knew a guy like Danny O'Donoghue who's back in the mix trying to tie this thing up. Yeah, Dan O'Donoghue, the 32-year-old with three years of service, previously signed an NHL contract with the Coyotes, was your teammate Biz in the AHL in Portland. He's got two See goals. See what happens when he gets some good line mates out there? Absolutely. He probably would have got the call up to Arizona if it wasn't for me. He's back on the bench right now. You can see him on the bottom right of your screen. So, rewinding a little bit, Aiden Boehm, the one who made it a 6-5 game, 
Number 28, the youngest player on this NYPD team. 24 years old, two years of service. And earlier this week, he told us there's a lot of successful games as of late for his team. Everybody's starting to gel together again. It's not just this game. They, th these guys play each other, not each other, but they play year round, including a 31 to two scoring margin in four games in the Battle of the Badges in Orlando. That was highlighted in the Battle of the Badge documentary. Well, that'll get your confidence going before the big game. Guys, I, I can't I can't begin to tell you the difference. This isn't even the same team we saw in the first period. NYPD has come out with some serious anger and some desire to tie this thing up. The first period, they were out to lunch, and right now, it's a different club. Yeah, just, and there it is. O'Donohue takes a little testing his stable, leg a little bit, right? Testing to see how things are, and he's mouthing something to the coach, Wit. Can you see what he's saying? I think he's saying I'm good to go. I think he's saying I'm good to go. And I wouldn't be surprised to hear him say anything else. Well, RA's the team doctor down there, so I'd imagine he got something out of his little treasure trunk. Thank God. And he's ready yep. to go. RA was able to give him God knows what, and he's back. <laughs> so FDNY is led by four quick, three quick different bump. times. Four nothing, five, one, six, two. But since then, three in a row by the cops. And they are well within striking distance. Potentially tying this game. Who would have thought that would be a possibility? Three on two here. Three on two. Shot denied. That was the assistant captain, Lydell Harrigan, who got a hand on it. Denied by Crescione, who again was not starting this game. The starter, Brandon Bassett, was pulled by head coach Gary Haber midway through the first after the cops gave up four early goals. We said it in the second period, but Crescione deserves a lot of credit. Not only do you come in and you can keep your team in the game, but you continue to make big saves while you're down 6-2, 6-3, 6-4. It's been a crazy atmosphere for him. Yeah, and for me, it's the rebound control, which has really calmed his team down, not allowing those greasy ones to pop out in the slot area. Seems like he's got some Velcro on his chest at this point where everything that's coming in, he's gobbling up, or at least he's directing to the corner. Martin Brodeur-like. He was, he, Jake, he was a master at that. His shots would come in. He was very good at where he would direct the rebounds, using his stick to do so, direct them and deflect them off into the corners, sometimes even out of play to get your team to whistle to calm things and down. And Biz, this NYPD team, instead of trying to make a play that, co that costs them a turnover, they're willing to ice the puck. You've seen a couple of icings, but they're fine with that. They get O'Donoghue on the ice to win the draw. Here it is, though. One line, 1A one versus 1A on each team. This yeah. is what you want in the third period of a tight game, oh, in a game job. as big as this. Incredible it's job. Into the attacking zone, Pataglia denies. Rebound, up for grabs, and here come the firefighters. Matt Zay scored in the first period. Great defensive stick there. Incredible. They just are playing so much better as a five-man unit, keeping a tight house. I mean, you saw him allow an odd man rush there, but really nothing threatening from the FDNY team. Oh, another block That one hit O'Donoghue's hand right off the wrist. Jesus. The, he is taking a beating, but his team is very much alive. There's Down a, by one with 15 to go. There's a famous quote by an old coach of mine, Dave King, loose pucks and ice bags. Yep. Zay hits the back. Look at his defense, though. down Brendan Tracy. And Zulus is just playing like a Big solid Greek, rock. they call him Biz. 6'4", 250, number 41 in gray. Yeah, you might not have the quickest feet, but he's throwing the weight around and protecting his net right now. Guys, these, these boys, they wait 364 days to play this game again. There's 14 minutes left in a one-goal game. We're about to see some fireworks here. Nothing to save it for, Biz. Empty the tank. Oh, that's a oh, penalty. That's a, that might be. It looked like a bit of a dive. No, from my view, he got his stick in the feet. That's a pretty legit call. I got to see the replay, but I don't hate it. Yeah, it looked like maybe a bit of a can opener, but Peretta. So let's see. He's known to stir things up. It looked like a bit of a sell job from up top here. I'm interested to see this replay. Here we go with the extra man on right now on the delayed penalty. That was, that was way offside, That Vince. was offside. Oh, oh no! The center! No! You don't want a game to end like that. There we go. And there we go. So it's the delayed penalty. It triggers another Chevy power play. 6-5 FDNY. 13.53 to go. But a power play coming on the other end. Everything leads up to this one game. At the end of the day, everybody just wants to win. We play our entire season for that one game. It's our game seven. As a team, I just think we compete better. We could roll four lines, we could roll 6D. 
they don't have that. FD is always going to have an advantage because they, they don't work. They never go to work. They work, what, eight days a month? I'll give them my boots any day they want to come to work. Maybe they could carry around 200 pounds of gear for a hot summer day and see what they are made of. If you don't win this game, it's, it's a long year. Hey, what's going on there, pal? We saw you at the hockey game on. Do I know you guys? I'm Ryan Whitney. I got a drink named after me. Not a big deal. Give me that. Pink Whitney? It's delicious. Sorry, we don't have room for you three. You, you, and that baked potato on your face. See ya, fellas. I invented the thing, you pigeon. Pink Whitney for legendary moments. Biz, are we the losers? Wit. Yes. West Virginia. We are underway in this massacre. You hear this crowd? Oh, big left. Oh, oh my God. God. He slams his opponent through. He'll be a power. Rough and Rowdy 21 featuring Dave Big Cat in 20 fights with no headgear. May 12th from Huntington, West Virginia. Watch all the chaos live pay per view at buyrnr.com. Ryan Whitney, what is your favorite RR moment presented by Pink Whitney? Oh, that's a tough one. You put me on the spot, Jake. Uh, I'm going to have to say when uh, Jersey Jerry fought. I'm a big Jersey Jerry guy. I support him and his brand and him getting in the ring. It just shows true toughness, true, true grit. Back to this game. Who's the raccoon guy who came out of the garbage? That was a Yeah, that fun was moment. a good one. That was good. I think, he, I think he actually lives in that garbage can, ironically enough. My, my favorite moment is when Big Cat sings the anthem oh, every yeah. time. He gets the crowd going. A tradition unlike any other. Under 14 to go in regulation. It's a one-goal game here on Long Island. The 49th edition of the FDNY NYPD Heroes hockey game. It's been a four-goal lead three different times for the firefighters. 4 0 5 one, six, two. But three in a row by the cops has suddenly made this game. And if you guys remember, the last time that NYPD was short. Oh, that's got to be a clear. Yep, you got to get that out. Zay wanted. But Biz, they got, they got a shorthanded goal already today. So maybe they're kind of trying to cheat a little bit offensively. And with the one thing that they did struggle with when I went and watched them in practice, they were po uh, practicing power play. And they couldn't get one in the net. So I don't know how much practice time they ended up having after I went and visited them, but if they don't clean things up here, they're going to squander an opportunity to get this two-goal separation. Well, Biz, were you were you giving them some pointers on the power play? Is that what happened? <laughs> All of a sudden, they go 0 for 93. Jake, ignore that guy. <laughs> Halfway through this power play. What a save. Another what good a save one. by Crescione. We talk about those rebounds right to the corner, out of the danger zone. Chevy power play. FDNY looking to extend. See if they have one last chance here with the extra skater. Let's watch the neutral zone and how they defend it. Got to got to take away that speed. Lieutenant Joe Sanger wraps it around. Now on to the other end. Keep that tight Top box. Top of the circle at the point. Sanger. One timer. No traffic. No traffic. Great job by the defenders there to eliminate the FDNY player to the opposite side of the net. Rick Tockett is huge on that. Allow the goalie to see it. Allow him to protect the short side of the net. They executed that to a T. NYPD, their team game level has risen every single minute of this hockey game from the first period. They got their game plan in the second, slowing it down, and everything's been gravy since. They got to get this kill, finish it off. The flip wow. and a goal! Oh, Whitney Mush! Oh my goodness! What a move by Lieutenant Joe Sanger, the assistant captain! It looked like there might have been a bit of a screen there, but talk about picking the pocket. And as he slides over, he tries to get a piece of this, but that was right up where they hide the water bottle. And this is a wily veteran. And this, is, I believe, is the second unit. Watch him work the 10 and 2 angle and just a flick of the wrist. It was a perfect screen there. I think he tipped it, Biz. What a tip this is. Brendan Tracy. Nah, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe not. He was celebrating like he was. Brian Smith style. You talk about the importance of winning faceoffs in the offensive zone. And there it is. 
two goal separation. They needed Look that out, one Look out, You almost got in. You're okay. Yeah, Jake, I'm on my game. <laughs> Love to see it. You don't uh, have to pay for a new set of teeth again, Will. No, we don't need that. Well, it can't handle it. But I'll tell you right now, Biz, they killed off the first half of that power play. The first unit didn't get any chances. Second unit picks up the job, pick, does the job for that team. So a much needed goal there by FPNY to take the momentum back. The cushion is now two. It's all about how you respond there. NYPD, they've been down bad in this hockey game. And look, the dark night rises. They've crawled out of that hole. Let's see if they can do it again. Behind the net. Oh, an opportunity. It was right on the platter there for Lieutenant Clifford Zielman. Some chaos in front. And it's going the other way. Yeah, it definitely seems like that's part of their game plan, Whit, where if they do get in trouble and start running around defensively, first opportunity they get, they just fire it down and take the icing. Uh, normally, Jake, in the National Hockey League, when you do that, you're not allowed to change the defensive players. Right, here so you, you are. Yes, so it, 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 you know, it, it's a pretty good coach's plan, Whit, where if you are in trouble, ice it down, get the fresh bodies out there, hit the reset button. But it's one thing when you're down one goal to be doing that. Now they gotta be making some breakout passes, get out of the zone with a little bit more ease because they need to. Well, let's see if O'Donoghue can get that hat trick. O'Donoghue has two, Antonitis has two. They put Stemke the and Donahue together here, if you could tell, boys. Yeah, they're stacking yeah. that top line. They need to make a play. O'Donoghue was next to me right on the bench when the fire got that seventh goal, and he, he fired his water bottle in disgust. I think he knows they're in one now. 11-11, wake the wish here. I know what the cops are wishing for on that bench. They're getting close to that comeback, but a huge goal by FDNY. Lieutenant Joe Sanger, a huge piece of insurance for the firefighters, trying to hold on to the trophy. They've had it since 2016. Princiata, kick save, Precion. Another good play by Peretta there. Getting the line, making a nice pass, driving the net. Stemke trying to clear. Cannot. Oh, that's a big time wind up, but Crescione denies once again. You can't just be throwing up that puck up the wall in no man's land. And just a bad job by the NYPD defenseman to gap up after that turnover. If you're gonna give up the line that easily, you're going to be giving up some great A scoring chances. There it is right there. Great shot. Just almost sneaks under the pad. And they go over, get the stoppage, get the offensive zone draw. And they're just trying to eat clock at this point, secure this two goal lead. Zay and Macklear for the faceoff. Controlled by FDNY. That one just to the left for Brendan Tracy. What a pass by in the Zay. slot. And another save by Crescione. I'll tell you right now, boys, Fire's kind of a little momentum going off that goal, right? They were on their heels. They were worried about this comeback, and now it seems to be all four lines are rolling. Yeah, Sanger, with that veteran experience, just get that puck on net, eases his team. 17 years down. of service for him, the 39-year-old. Uh, he was Assistant involved, captain. involved in that big brawl also. Yep, throwing haymakers. That really put this game on another level. And Jimmy Hall, who was involved in that fight, the center of it, he said he actually deserved some thank yous for putting more eyeballs on this event because of that brawl nine years ago. Who knows if we'd be here without his slash to the face of his opponent? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Midway through this third and final period, NYPD needs a goal, one-timer save! What a Rebound, save. no! Antonitis had a golden opportunity, but Nick Bataglia, a brick wall there, Biz. Wow, what a feed across. And I'm gonna have to see the replay on this. It looks like he gets his left pad all over that, and he ended up having a second crack at it, too. Look at this feed, just right in the perfect spot. He just could not elevate that. 
The problem is, is it didn't seem like he was able to round his body around it to get enough leverage on it. You got to open up those hips. All right, 7-5 FDNY midway through the third, and let's send it down to Rear Admiral, a special guest. You might know him. We are with the man, the myth, the legend, Frank the Tank. You might live in New Jersey, but you are a New York legend, Frank. What's your assessment of the game thus far? The uh, firemen are more skilled, they're faster, so the police had to turn into bullies. And they got physical, them. and they got back in the game. And you know, they're, 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 they're fighting it up. They're fighting it up, and the police are going to try to physical to escape to a win, and will a win, and the firemen are just going to try to Skate fast like you fire. Well, it might be a tight squeeze out there for those boys, but you know what's not a tight squeeze? Muggsy fit. Muggsy jeans are the best. Put them on. Unreal fit. Get them everywhere. Back to you guys in the studio. Got a gift right. certificate for me? Thank you, R.A. and uh, Frank the Tank as well. I'll tell you what, if NYPD wants to come back, I bet you FDNY could use Darren Ruff on their roster. <laughs> oh, yeah, big time. And uh, what a breakdown by Frank the Tank. I mean, job security. Me and, and Wit, we might be on the trade blocks. Yes. Fizz, I'm getting chirped over here. My, I know, my, I know. My phone's down here, and then I, I got a cracked screen, and I'm just getting the business from the fire. They said, Jesus Christ, wait, you poor piece of shit. So it's, <laughs> it's getting ugly. They said they got a gift certificate at Apple for me. Oh, well, that's great. That's great. It's very nice good. of them. It's not good. That's well, kind of them. Well, Biz, this is what we saw earlier in the game. Tons of fireworks, tons of goals. 12 of them. And a, and a miraculous comeback. Well, at least until a certain point. I think that really shut the building up when O'Donohue picked that corner. And this is when things started getting scary for FDNY. When they ended up sliding that goal in, that made it 6-5 within one. And as we know, the story of the game right now is the veteran leader, Lieutenant Joe Sanger, creating that separation, making things 7-5. Shots on goal brought to you by Pink Whitney. Still relatively shots, shots, even. Shots, shots, shots. However, it is the firefighters with a two goal advantage under 10 to go in regulation. Witt was kind of cutting Frank's grass there. <laughs> we can pick you up on Frank's the mic, the best. Oh, I didn't realize, boys, sorry about that, but I cool. was getting owned. It's all good. Under 10 to go. Look at that play by Byrne. Dive by PJ Byrne, the former Danbury trasher. Drop down, Gilhooly has two. Tried handing it off to Princiata. Now it's Gilhooly. He falls down. Pops trying to clear. Just when you think this game's out of reach and things are slowing down, something crazy happens. I'm just waiting for something to pop. That's saved by Battaglia. Just the biggest moment of the game so far. Would have been 7-6, and he stands on his head to make that one. Would have been a hat trick for Antonitis as well, but he was denied by the 24 year old and reigning MVP of this game, Nick Battaglia. Number double zero in goal. Oh. You see the game opening up, and you see uh, that really benefiting FDNY. They are in absolutely no rush whatsoever. With that two goal lead, eight and a half to go. Stephen Kelly. They're talking about having quick shifts here, Biz. FDNY's adamant on 30 seconds and off. Keep him fresh, trying to finish this game off. Come the cops into the offensive zone. It's a one on two. Stemke behind the goal. Eight minutes to go. Shot, another one gobbled up by Nick Battaglia, who looks locked in right now, Biz. Yeah, and they've, they've you know, stacked that deck on the top line for the NYPD. But do, they're doing a great job, not really allowing much to the inside. And I would imagine every chance they get a shot on net, Battaglia is going to eat that, take the face off, allow his teams to calm things down. And where you said short shifts. You know, you see when the Penguins, I always mention Crosby, very unselfish top player where... It's 30 seconds, working the puck below the goal line and then getting fresh legs on the ice. So I see them taking a page out of that book. It's going to be very difficult for NYPD to muster anything up. So we're sensing fresh leg legs for the FDNY part. However, 
how much could the cops use that strategy because the bulk of their scoring have been from two guys in Antonidis and O'Donnell. Do, do you run those guys until they're you, you run those guys every other shift, Jake. There's no other option at this point. Seven minutes left, they need two. Yeah, I just haven't seen enough from any other guys, and we've gotten a big enough sample size. And they did, they did get that contribution from an unsung hero, and I thought that that would propel them. Yeah, Aiden Bowen, the only goal, not by those two guys. So Donahue and Antonitis. Ooh, that would have been a good opportunity for FDNY. That's a little bit of a hope play, though. Leads him to a rush the other way. Right. Approaching seven to go. Seems like the pace has slowed down a bit. Big time. FDNY just needs to get those pucks in deep, play in the offensive zone. You can't have these icings either. No, that's just poor execution. Guy was wide open, nobody on you. Those are the ones that, that are going to hurt you. Jimmy Hall kind of looks like White Sox Dave from Barstool, unfortunately. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, remember, Jimmy Hall's the one who started that brawl nine years ago. You think White Sox Dave would start a brawl in the Barstool office? You think that he has that in them? And then he'd run right out and just not be in the mix. That's what he does. White Sox Dave, <laughs> our friend, our buddy. And I'm drawing a blank on the last name. We just had the Quinnipiac head coach, Rand, help me out Pec here. Pecknold. Pecknold. And he has a philosophy where, especially down two, he likes to see the goalie come out a lot sooner yep. than back in the day. So expect maybe the goalie to come out here in the next few minutes and give his team an opportunity to get back within one. And, and the NHL, typically, when will we see that down by two? I would probably say around the probably five six minute mark so around now all right so something to keep our eyes on as the time continues to dwindle down in favor of fdny trying to win this thing oh no for the fifth straight year this could be dangerous luckily number 22 james shea falls down if he didn't Jeez. biz looks like that, they got into that the, morale look like his <laughs> first shift ever did they get in the, into the pink whitney nips between periods with <laughs> what happened there this, this couple, could have been a golden opportunity. A couple pirouettes. You got two left skates on this. Yep. Yep. Sharpened him with a stone. <laughs> Fans enjoying their time here. Hard to get a ticket. If you're in the building right now, congratulations. It is no easy thing to do. Well, somebody's got wheels here. The Bay tries to find Antonik. Now with six minutes to go in regulation. Here comes FDNY quickly. Shot denied by Crescion. The opportunity by James Shea. 557 remaining in regulation. FDNY looking to close it out on the other end. Everything leads up to this one game. At the end of the day, everybody just wants to win. We play our entire season for that one game. It's our game seven. As a team, I just think we compete better. We could roll four lines, we could roll 6D. They don't have that. FD is always going to have an advantage because they, they don't work. They never go to work. They work, what, eight days a month? I'll give them my boots any day they want to come to work. Maybe they could carry around 200 pounds of gear for a hot summer day and see what they are made of. If you don't win this game, it's, it's a long year. We heard you crack open a blue light. Yo, come on in. Here too? Goodbye, empty couch. Hello, standing room only. Labat takes everything to the power of we. I'm going big. I'm going We're bringing big back. It's bigger. Cheesier. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Big pizza, bigger deal. Y'all hungry? Better be hungry. It's a rivalry of respect, of tradition. The city's finest versus the city's bravest. One game for a year of bragging rights and everything else that comes along with it. 7-5 FDNY over NYPD taking a look at the scoring breakdown right now, Biz. Plenty of goals to pick from, six of them total in the first, but let's take a look at the Muggsy Clutch replays, the last two goals of this game. Yeah, some great work offensively. And this was the big one from the unsung hero between the wickets. FDNY just not getting the block there when they needed it. That got things to one. And here on the PP, it's Lieutenant Joe Sanger with a clutch goal. That was the second unit. 
We thought originally there was a tip on the play, but it wasn't. He just opened up, shot that thing top cheese, and executed perfectly to get his team back with that two-goal lead. All right, something to keep our eyes on here with under six to go, a two-goal deficit for the Cops. When do they pull their goalie, Crescion? Not there, clearly, as he gobbles up another save. So 5.47 remaining. Crescion, I'll tell you what, you look at the scoreboard, you see, okay, FDNY gave up seven goals. Their goalies must not be doing well. That doesn't tell the full story, bit. No, but strategy-wise right now, you got the O'Donoghue line out there. I would imagine they let them play five-on-five five here, and then when they go to the bench for rest, you allow one more shift for five-on-five, five, and then you send them out the, the top line again and then pull your goalie. So I would probably imagine around the, the four-minute and a quarter mark, they're going to pull the goalie. That's, that, that's what I'm thinking here. That's what I would do if I was a head coach. Whit? I agree with you, Biz. But right there, you see that back check. Just incredible. Lopes coming back, breaking up the play on a chance from Stemke. Yeah. And the reason you do that is you just got to give your team an opportunity five on five to see that they can claw, claw back within one mm -hmm. and or draw a penalty. You got to see if this top line could do more damage as they've been doing the rest of the night. Five on five. They've earned that right, Jake. Yeah, four of the five goals for the Cops have come from that top line. Two by Antonitis, two by Dan O'Donoghue. All right, so here's the follow-up line. They've stacked the deck on the second line as well. Let's see if they can get something going, potentially draw a penalty. And if not, like we said, I think O'Donoghue's line's coming back out around that four-minute mark, and the goalie's coming as well. I don't think you want to leave much more time than that. you got to make a move at some point. In a game like this, though, with so many goals, do you maybe have that leash a little bit longer since it's been easy at times for both these teams to crash uh, in? Not the way the pace of the game is being played at now. I just I just think that FDNY has finally gained that second steam. They're starting to skate a little bit better. They're, they're, they're out of the mud, so to speak. I think, yeah, three minutes max left. You gotta, you gotta get this goalie out. You gotta get it out of your zone first, though. Yeah, Moran kept it in the zone there in front of the NYPD bench. Under five to go in regulation. Cops need to make a move very, very soon. And if I'm FDNY, I don't have my defenseman holding the line like we just saw. Anything could happen. A little ricochet off the glass. That could propel NYPD on an odd man rush. So if I'm FDNY, I'm backing up those defenders, and I'm allowing them to shoot it down the ice. Allow them to play that game. Don't get too don't get too overzealous. You got the game in hand right now. Took a lot of effort for the cops to clear there. And that's a win for FDNY because that took off some time. It did. We're down to that four minute mark. So I imagine that O'Donoghue line's coming back next. Keep an eye on 18 and 21. They have combined for four of the five goals for the cops. Under four to go in regulation. FDNY trying to close out what would be their fifth straight win in this series that's gone on for 49 years. Uh -oh. Here's Gargan skating down the right side. Loses it momentarily to the center. Oh my! Wow. Kick saved by Crescione. It was floating slowly. And it's still 7-5. 3.30 remaining now in regulation. Up to the top, in between the circles, another save by Crescione. Oh, they're on the ropes. Keep it in this. sucking wind right now. And they're hemmed in. They got to get somebody out of the zone here. They're just throwing it up the wall, Biz. You're not going to get out of the zone keeping it on the wall like that. Yeah, and time is just being eaten off the clock. We're down to three minutes now. And we're going to get some fresh bodies. And I'd imagine at some point here, the goalie is going to be waved over. Not clearing it long enough for them to be able to have the luxury to do that as Crescione continues to deny. And, 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 and let's not forget, NYPD has already used their timeout after giving up those four goals in the first period. They hit the panic button, said, hey, we got to slow it down here. So right now they need as much time in this scrum as possible to get things calmed down and get some fresh bodies. A great block right there. And look at this toe save. That was Gargan with the shot. And another one, tough bounce on the net drive there. 
So Biz, how shocked are you that Crescione's still in net for NYP? They haven't pulled him with three minutes well, left. Well, not shocked too. because they can't get that momentum offensively. They ha they've had no sustained pressure, probably from like, what, the six, six and a half minute yeah. mark down. The puck's been living on this side of the ice. But the good news is still three minutes left. They got O'Donoghue out there now. The plan is going to be we're going to win a faceoff, we're going to get it to the offensive zone, and that goalie is going to find follow them out as they get the center ice. You watch. There we go, a big control. win. They got to make a play. You got to make a play. Across center ice. Uh-oh. The goalie tried coming out, but he, yep. he froze there when they lost possession. Not enough time. Stemke trying to you maintain. You got to get two guys on the puck here. You got too many guys hanging back. From this urgency, you wouldn't tell that they're down by two, right? They're just, they're having a brain fart. Yeah, they got, they got nothing the going here, guys. They got to get in the other zone. They got to get some offensive zone They're going to need a miracle is what they're going to need. The FDNY just controlling the tempo as time continues to tick down. Here we go. the two-minute mark. Here we go. Get Stemke him out of net. On the left side. That's a hope play. Denied. Why is the goalie not leaving I don't understand, here? Biz. I don't know what's what the going on. There he goes. There he goes. 205 left. It's too late. We're going. Antonelli from the point. Oh, no. Two minutes remaining. An empty net right now. Just horrible timing. You needed that second wave there to pounce on a loose puck. Oh, you got to go get it here. He's just going to hold it. Wow. Oh. Interference? I would call it. Or at least an offensive zone faceoff for the NYPD. That's a bit of a brain fart from FDNY. So they are going to get that offensive zone draw. I don't know what the refs are talking about here. It's clearly FDNY knocking the NYPD player into the net. This yeah. needs to stay as an offensive zone faceoff. The net came off the pegs. And they're going to... You're going to see here, this is... Oh, yeah. He just clearly gets in his way. I don't know why they're trying to signal to the other side of the ice. The net was knocked off to the left of Bataglia. I think they were just looking for the puck, Biz. They couldn't find the puck. All right, so the NYPD net remains empty. 144 remaining. No, the line's been signaling to the other side, which is not the play. The net was knocked off on the other side of the ice, and O'Donoghue likes that side of the ice because, as we've seen the whole game, he's been snapping those draws back. Right to Ragone, right? To Ragone, set up behind him. So this is a big moment in the game. It doesn't seem to be shaking up O'Donoghue as typically guys are stronger on their backhand, which he is right now. So Ragone is still set up behind him. Maybe it works out, but I don't. There it is. A win oh, for uh, you O'Donoghue, got, Ragone. Gotta you got to help him out. You got to support that puck. Kern, empty net. Just misses Antonik. Keeps it in play That's... with 90 seconds remaining in regulation. Ragone. Into the offensive zone, O'Donoghue has two goals today. You Haven't gotta, said his name much, though, in this third period. you got to outnumber him where the puck is. You're in desperation mode. Byrne, Byrne tried to keep it in the offensive zone. Unsuccessful. There it is. Demke over to the right side. It's Ragon. Oh, no. That's a hope play. Gargan. That's an icing, though. Bad play there. Bad decision. 104 left. They'll go back the other way. This is... This is where not having your timeout just kills you. Yep. The guys are gassed. Your top unit, uh, they need a little bit of a break here. They can't can't get it. O'Donoghue's going to need mouth-to-mouth -mouth as soon as this whistle goes. So, again, the last minute or so, we've finally seen the puck in the offensive zone for the cops, but they haven't gotten a good enough look. Well, we're going. It was a perfectly one draw, and he's just so tired. Sometimes the oxygen's not getting the brain on time. But the FDNY player came out and got a great block. Yeah, see, Last he just has no period. mustard on anything. These guys are just so worn down from having to play so much ice. They got no, they got no gas left in the tank. Dude. Under 60 seconds left. It's now or never times two. They're going to need a Christmas for the cops. See if they even get a shot off. Stemke can't get a stick on it. And look out. There it is. Empty netter and the dagger. Vinny Lopes, number two today. And FDNY will hold on to that trophy for another year. He was stellar today. He used his wheels all night. Well-deserved.
He's a Swiss Army knife. He can be relied upon in any situation. Out there, six on five. And he seals the deal for this FDNY team. It was, there was a moment where we thought they were gonna lose this game with six five. I thought we were gonna see one of the greatest comebacks of all time. And kind of a tale of two different games, right? NYPD for, for 40 minutes, 30 minutes, they had everything going their way. They slowed it down. and. And the other half, it was all FDNY, nothing they could do. And you even saw with the net pulled, no chances, a bunch of big block shots. You go back to that save when it was 7-5 by Batagna. Uh oh, we're here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, off the wow. face off. Wow. Here we go. Gloves off. No buckets. They want we're going it. on this score. Esposito. This is going to be FDNY. a NY. Ryan Dermody and for the right. cops. One oh, on one. Cut. Oh. oh. came in with the uppercut there. It looks like Dermody caught him once, but it didn't even affect him. That's a, that is a steel jaw, folks. He took it, ate it, and gave two right back. FDNY, winners on the score sheet. I think, I and think, winner of the brawl. I think Dermody was shocked that that punch didn't knock him out. I think he was ready to go off and celebrate and give it the WWE belt. If you, uh, if you see a replay, let me know, does he connect with that right fist? Oh, wow, both of them connected Oof. at the exact same time with the rights. Helmets but, off, you gotta respect it. Complete respect, both guys. That's a good fight. And what a way to end this amazing hockey game. Both teams left it on the line. That's the one we're talking yep. about. And he ate it, Fizz, he ate it. Let's get another replay of that scrap. Dermody looks in shock right now. Unless they're going back to the door. We might have another one. Let's see. Here we go. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Oh, here we go. Another it's one. John oh, Pareto okay. for FDNY. Oh, here we go, boys, versus Jimmy and Hall. James Jimmy Hall, who helped ignite that brawl in 2014. Pareto for FDNY. Hall for the cops. Oh. It's all Pareto right now. Pareto comes in with the door. Oh. John Pareto letting oh. it loose. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. Oh. Wow. Flex for the 17,000 strong here on Long Island. This is a full out ass kicking wit. Hey, I'll tell you right now that Peretta, hell of a game, and then he squares up. He's a lefty. And all credit to Jimmy Hall. He's hurting right now. But I don't I don't think Peretta's a guy you want to mess with, man. Oh no, man. You know you know who he reminds you of Wit and the way he scrapped right there? Kevin Bieksa. Yep. Just an undersized defenseman who brings it night in and night out, tough as nails, and watch as he comes in here. That's the celebration we're seeing him flexing. And we're getting it on the Jumbotron. Watch I don't his left. Oh, boy. He hits him with one at the end, God. too. Oh, he caught him with a right. My God. That Peretta is a tank. He can skate. He can play. And we just saw he can fight, too. Right now, they're showing the FDNY bench. And now the penalty box. And look at these guys getting love from the crowd. It's normally 80-20 as far as percentage. And people rooting for the FDNY. And you hear the crowd roar after that. Oh no. Will we get another? I <laughs> Anta Zulis is pissed One off. More? <laughs> I, I don't think NYPD wants anything to do with it. And a real tough way to end this game. So on the score sheet, it's going to be 8 5 FDNY. In the fight column, it's going to be 2 0 FDNY, Biz. Wow. I'm at a loss for words. Those were some haymakers being thrown in both scraps. And that's how this one ends. You hope. A fifth straight win for the Firefighters of New York City in 2023. It's 8-5 over the Cops. Just a well-earned victory. Boys, a tough ending for NYPD to come back in this game, but a little stink in your mouth at the end just to lose on the scoreboard. And that, that Peretta fight just kind of put an exclamation point on this one tonight, didn't it? It sure did. It sure did, but I, it, it, it's going to force NYPD to go back, take a look in the mirror, a long, hard look in the mirror, and come back bigger, better, stronger next year. And They're going to need more depth with. Uh, they need more depth, and, uh, and unfortunately, I hear there's a 
there's a guy at the fire academy that's coming up that's a future superstar so it it's going to get ugly if the nypd isn't able to get a little bit more skill in but i want to shout out jimmy hall Paretta's a big tough man yeah. he squared off with him and a lot of fans sometimes maybe laugh at the guy who gets beat up but he answered the bell so all credit goes out to him and this entire team yeah, sticking up for his team no doubt about it and guys the cops easily could have folded in this game, right? Four yeah. nothing, five one, six two. They fought hard and made it a one goal game. Hey, now, hey, we we we've said before the game, the respect is there, you know, away from it all. Yep. Now look at the respect being shown now that the game is over. It's very important. Very important. This We're is what you see. You see, this is what you see off the ice. These guys are working together, and on the ice, we saw it is not the case at all. Yeah. Keep it between the whistles as they did, and now all the respect in the world being shown. I, I got uh, I got Colby Armstrong and Matt Murley next to me. They're going to take over the post-game interviews. I'm going to see you up top for the post-game show, Biz. Great job, Thank you, Great, Great job, job. Hey, Jake. Great job, buddy. Pleasure Hell to a, work with you. Thank Hell you. Hell of a too. call, buddy. Love you guys. So an awesome tradition here like we see in the NHL after a postseason series. You have every year the handshake lines between the cops and the firefighters. Biz, this was a game full of fireworks on both ends. I am so blessed to be a part of this. I, I just want to thank everybody involved, FDNY, NYPD, all the men and women who, who served and put their lives on the line for us, um, everybody at Barstool who made this production possible, all the guys in the truck who made it very easy for us to call the game, all the, the hands on deck who set everything up for us to come in and, and be able to enjoy this entire experience. I, I tell you what, man, this is, this is incredible. There we are up in the booth. Thank you guys so much. As I said, everybody in the truck from Barstool, everybody who had a hand in making this all possible, an incredible production. And of course, the, the fans, the families who showed up, sold this place out, brought all the energy. This is, uh, Jake, I don't know what else to say, buddy. I, I, I'm, and of course, blessed to be able to work with you again after the Pink Whitney Cup. Uh, thank you, of course, all of our sponsors. You got anything to chime in with, Jake? This I'm, is uh, fantastic. I hope to do it again next year. I with love you, brother. Love I love you, love you too. brother. Thank you to Dave Portnoy and all of Barstool and everybody who made this possible for us to come here and enjoy these two teams going at it. Absolutely. 8-5 the final in favor of FDNY over NYPD in the 49th version of the NYPD FDNY Heroes hockey game. Make sure to stick with Barstool Sports after the game as the studio crew takes over for the post-game show powered by Chevy. Signing off from the broadcast booth for Biz Nasty, Paul Bissonette, I'm Jake Marsh. 8-5 FDNY champions in 2023. All right, Red Dog. Make it, you'll be a legend forever. Miss it, you'll be a loser. <laughs> Are you guys done? Sorry, ladies. Pink Whitney shots all around. This guy's buying. What? Pink Whitney for legendary moments. <laughs> oh, yeah, these pants stretch a lot so you can get a deep squat. Real fucking comfortable jeans. Oh, no, they're not waterproof, but you can drink on the roof. Real fucking comfortable jeans. Run with your boys in the park, and it's a dinger still dark. We're all gathered here to celebrate the first ever electric Chevy Silverado. It's a Chevy, it's a Silverado, it's electric, and it's badass. It's Barstool's most valuable truck. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with it. Whoa, 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 why do you two goons get the orange one? I want the orange truck. one. Yeah. 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 Chevy Silverado EV, Barstool's most valuable truck. Somewhere on the other side of the world, I found something special. And in order to bring the wonders of the world home, I would fight. I would stop at nothing to accomplish a dream, tormented by what I knew was possible. The perfect cup of coffee. Stella Blue Coffee. It's just really good coffee.
Welcome to the post game show powered by Chevy. Live from the 49th annual FDNY NYPD Heroes hockey game at UBS Arena in Elmont, New York. And we are here with the post game show presented by Chevy. It is an 8 to 5 final. FDNY, it got a little tight late. Might have been a comeback. Maybe a little Cinderella run, a princess run there for MLB. They did not have it. Struck midnight on them. The losing streak continues. The winless streak continues. FDNY has been fantastic for years. And now they have yet another win. And they are champions down on the ice. And now presenting the annual Michael Gallagher MVP award to the most valuable player for the NYPD hockey team. Please welcome from the New York City Police Department Kelly Gallagher and Ellen McGurk. Tonight's MVP is goaltender number 30 Matt Precious, who is also going home with a gift certificate for a free pair of boots courtesy of Rocky Boots. Way to go Matt. And here to present the FDNY MVP, please welcome the Downey family. Tonight's MVP with two goals is number 93, Joe Gilhooley. He is also going home with a gift certificate for a free pair of boots, courtesy of Rocky Boots. And presenting the trophy to the FDNY, please welcome Frank Heal. Accepting the trophy for the FDNY is number 21, Jim Becker. And there we go. The champions again, FDNY. It's becoming, like, I mean, is it getting boring for them? I'm Jeffy Lowe back up here with Big Cat and Wit joining us. Back up from the edge. Great job tonight, Wit. Great I mean, job. Thanks, bud. You only had one, <laughs> you had one word that you couldn't get out, but you called yourself out on it right away. I appreciate you bringing up the one word I couldn't say. No, that's but so you, nice. 60 yeah. minutes of hockey, that's, one that's word that's is so nice. <laughs> big well, cat. What a guy you are. Hey, hey ask if you won the 50 50 raffle. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he bought half the tickets. I bought a lot of tickets. A, I bought a, a lot of a, tickets. A stunning amount of, of tickets were purchased. He did not win. But we had fun. We had fun, and you guys were incredible on the broadcast. That was such a fun event. And, I mean, getting the fights at the oh. end. <laughs> oh, the my. best. I'll tell you, that Peretta. And I give Jimmy Hall a lot of credit. He's an undersized defenseman. And, you know, he, he went down pretty hard. But that Peretta was a machine, throwing lefts and I, I, I was surprised. The game's over, and they had two things left to square yeah. off, and yeah. they did. Unfinished business. But uh, when you when you ask, does it get old for them? I don't think it does. It's a once-a-year thing. It's all they work towards, and 
when they keep winning and they can't lose, it's just fun. You can see with the smiles on the ice, they're going to have a night for themselves this evening. We can rewind back to the beginning of the game. You mentioned it up here when Biz was up here as well. It needed to be a fast start for the NYPD, and it was the literal exact opposite of that. And then you just saw it, even Big Cat, you said it. You could just tell how much faster, how much deeper the FDNY is. Yeah, they, uh, they're definitely overmatched, right? I think FDNY has four or five really solid players that they can rely on, and NYPD after O'Donohue, it's a little bit of a drop. I know Stemke played played pretty well, but the depth is uh, is not fair right now, so something's gonna have to change with that, but I still gotta give the PD a lot of credit. I mean, four nothing, you pulled the goalie, and they made a game out of it. If, if there wasn't that great save at the end by Bataglia, yeah. it's 7-6, and we don't know. Big Cat, you can just feel it. The energy is up to the nostrils here today. Oh, it, was it was incredible. Great. Incredible environment. Everyone was so nice. Everyone was so friendly. And it was, uh, yeah, I mean, Witt said it right. Like, when it was 6-5 there to start the third, you you thought we were going to overtime. You thought we were going to have an instant classic. But FDNY was just a little too much for them, as they are most years. We got Biv joining us here in a second. Witt, favorite thing that you saw down on the ice today? I, I, I think that, that if you look uh, from where I was sitting, it. Both teams, while having a lot of respect for each other, they they really hated each other. I mean, all, <laughs> they did. Yes. All, I was I, I mean I was kind of surprised. Like I'd never been to one of these games, and then you see there was a lot of dirty talk being being said between one another, and not dirty talk like uh, in bed type dirty talk, like just filthy discussions between <laughs> players. <laughs> that moment when you had the coaches after the first period, they oh, were wow. just going after they, each they, other. They, the, yeah, the NYPD coach wanted the FDNY guy and. Ironically enough, after the first period, that little mini brawl they had, that kind of got NYPD going. That's what they needed. That, yeah. that propelled them going in between peri periods there. I, I, I'm at a loss for words, boy. That was quite the show. So much fun. Especially the ending, the icing that, on the cake. The ending those was two scraps. unbelievable. Oh, wow. my God. Peretta, he's a he's a born-again Kevin Bieksa. Yeah. Just <laughs> chucking all those <laughs> the <laughs> Superman punches and everything. Oh, was. And then he's a lefty. I don't know if Jimmy Hall knew he was a lefty. That's not fair. Yeah. You guys uh, were great, though, on the broadcast. It, oh, great was, broadcast. Oh, Thank you and Marsh, guys. regulars every, now. Every, everybody was buzzing. What, what a great production by everybody at Barstool. Everybody, I said it uh, down there, but everybody in the truck did an incredible job. We can't thank you guys enough. Uh, the, the original idea c came from Grinelli, Brendan Mim, Sean Apuzo, and Elliot Fish, who came last year, and they sold us on this. The fact that we were able to broadcast this, I hope, I hope we're able to do it again moving forward because... And, and, and if, if they do, NYPD, they need to figure out their depth, man. Before you got up here, we mentioned it's not a fair fight depth-wise. And actually, I didn't tell you guys. I got word at intermission. There's a superstar at the fire. Yeah, you said that yeah. at the end. Yeah, the so ringer. apparently they uh -oh. got somebody else well, coming. Th that's what I was saying. Like if I if I were in either of these departments, I would just grab anyone who retires and be like, you wanna you wanna come? <laughs> you wanna be a cop? Yeah, you wanna be a cop? <laughs> we just gotta win one. I'll pick up a couple shifts. I don't know what they're gonna pay me say, under give, the table. Give, give Crosby a badge here. Today. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Yeah, yeah, come on hey, in. Jonathan Taves just shut her down. You ready? Yeah, yeah, wanna yeah. come work the 13th yeah, precinct in Harlem? For a day. That's his buddy right yeah, there. You could maybe talk to him. You guys showed up in your mugs. Big Cat and I wearing our Muggsy, and they have the clutch highlights here as we recap this 8-5 to five victory once again for the FDNY. Do you have a personal player of the game, Witten Biz? I, I like Peretta. I'm a defenseman, but, I mean, we're going to see the highlights right here. A, a, a tough break off the hop, and, you know, we talked about Vinny, Vinny Lopes the, before the game, the speedster, and, and he made it one nothing early on, and then you see him again right here. Yeah, they really exposed him on that low blocker side in that first period. It, it sucks, man, but the, the, the set, he was an MVP last year. He was stellar two, performance. Yeah. He ends up getting <laughs> yanked. <laughs> I it did do, to business credit, <laughs> They did do two MVP. They did again. They did I didn't realize that. I, I would. I, I'm going to go off the board. Well, I guess not off the board. Usually you pick a, a, the winning team MVP. I thought O'Donoghue had to lug the mail all night long. Now, do you, do I you know played, that guy? I played with him uh, it, it, with the. Oh no party. way! Yeah, you think I'm giving it to him because I know the guy. He carried the team on his back the no, whole you, night. And I don't think he left the ice. And, and he blocked two shots down the tunnel, came back. We we all thought in the moment that he blew out his yeah. knee, oh, and we're like, so oh no, I. this is the worst. It's it's going to be tough five. No, tough he, he, he blew it along with all that oxygen he had to I suck know. in because he was carrying the team. He played 35 minutes. But Crazy. This, this was the brawl at the end of the first, which really sparked something for NYPD. And O'Donoghue got cut with a little rabbit punch, a little dirty shot. He was upset, coaches screaming at each other, and NYPD came out buzzing in the second. This was a huge play. Watch him work the triangle there, drive. He ends up hurting his shoulder, going to the locker room. 
But this Antonitis kid, the, 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 well, I look at him as like a Greek god. I guess there's another Greek god. That's when they started getting back into the game. But too much of this stuff, too much of losing their man and, and uh, getting beat off the odd they, man They rushes. always seem to answer. That was the thing with the FDNY. Yep. Even though they got closer, it got within one, they always had an answer. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, yeah, it, it, it was a, a tough night for some of the defensemen for NYPD getting backed off. But I was shocked that they were able to claw back in this one. Worst feeling as a team when you're chasing is to get one and then you give up you give up a goal against. And that happened twice, I think. They got a goal and within a minute, FDNY came back and just mounted their lead even, even bigger. So a great effort to try to come back. And you saw the passion after the fight, but the depth of FDNY, we keep bringing it up, they can't handle it because when the second and third lines get out there, they're so overmatched. Well, look at Lieutenant Joe Sanger. This was a huge goal. It was a 6-5 game. They get the power play. The first unit doesn't get it done. Then he responds. They win that offensive zone draw. He takes advantage of a great screen in front of the net and picks off and the corner. And that first fight, that right oh. that he hit him with. This one right. And oh, this is yeah, Pareta. Yeah. Pareta's oh. a machine. Oh, my goodness. You don't want to mess with Pareta. That guy's a tough bastard. So many lefts, he was begging for a right. Uh, Pink Whitney, shout out Pink Whitney. Shots on goal. In the end, FDNY ended up having more 45-34 advantage. Showed a score of 8-5, to five. by the way, Big Cat, really quickly. He did win a uh, little wager with Merle, yeah. Colby, yeah. and Grinnell. Well, you're betting against yeah, Merle's, yeah. who, oh, speaking of, yeah. Colby's got an interview right now. All right, thanks, guys. Down on ice level with MVP of the NYPD, Matt Crescion, uh, in a loss, uh, a tough loss, 8-5 loss. You came in relief, though. Um, game was kind of out of hand. You had to come in. Uh, what were you thinking at that point, uh, being the goaltender, have to come in uh, down a bunch? Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, you know. You, you see your, your team's getting scored on one, two, three. It's like, oh, man. All right, well, that's what I prepare for all year. Got to get in there now. Yeah, and you came in and played well. And obviously, you won the MVP for your team and uh, stood on your head, gave yourselves a chance battling back and making this game interesting was that kind of what was on your mind one puck at a time man one puck at a time is really all you can do it's on my mind that i can't let it i can't let it be 10 in the first period that's all i'm thinking yeah. don't get scored on yeah, easy for the goaltenders uh your first uh game here congratulations on the mvp uh a great tradition and this is the 39th game thank you matt thank you so much for having me all right Thank you, guys. Back up to you. He looks like he's fit for a straight jacket. That also, guy. Yeah. the haircut. Well, every MVP? goalie, right? <laughs> yeah, he, he, I mean, he, 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 I think he said he was on the warrant squad. <laughs> Try running from that guy. With yeah. the no <laughs> thanks. I don't your, think so. He looks your, like De Niro in Taxi. Yeah, he'll have your ball bag and a vice in no time. <laughs> 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 to his credit, though, I, I would think, I don't know about you, Biz, in the booth, you wit down there. I I was shocked it didn't get worse. He said 10 nothing. It's not even that much of a joke. It felt like it was going to get there. As a broadcaster, I just wanted a good game, and I said, oh, <laughs> No, this you is told everyone nightmare. to turn tune off. <laughs> uh, Merle's now down on the ice with an interview as well. <laughs> All right, I'm down here. I'm with the winning team MVP, Joe Gahuli. Let's start out with the house number. The house number? 216. Union Avenue, baby. 216, there, there they are. I, I know you had at least two goals. What's the final stat line? How many apples? One, I think. I don't know. We won the game. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Um, you guys came out to a huge lead. They stormed back. Was there any nerves, any talk on the bench there when it was 6-5? No, not at all. I mean, you play a 60-minute game, you're expecting them to get at least 10 out of that. So, you know, we got on our heels a little bit. We came back in the locker room. We came out strong, sucked to our game, got pucks behind them, and we fucking won the game. All right. So, uh, we really want to know what's going to happen in the locker room now. A lot of beers. A lot of beers. Yeah! <laughs> Throw it back up to the boys. Ah, the old water bottle oh, bukkake. Yeah, the love it. Water bottle bukkake. Dan, you love those, don't yeah, you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I got another thing I got to say for the NYPD for next year. Change your jerseys. Yeah. Those yeah, jerseys, they look like, like the, 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 the cartoon cop. They look like the Seahawks from the 80s trying to that, play hockey. Got that you lima, have to change That lima bean green. Yeah, and FDNY and dry, has incredible uh, no. jerseys. Yep. Go to just white Haven't blue. they been beat up enough, Dan? But just, I'm, I'm <laughs> giving them tips. Been, yeah. I'm giving them tips. If you get a new jersey, look good, play good. Uh, I thought the officials did an incredible job of just staying out of the way yeah. in this one. Yeah. They let the boys play. There wasn't any chintzy calls that turned the momentum of the game. Great job by the officials. Oh, that was the other thing. Uh, the officials should be EMT. 
I think, they? I think there might have been an EMT. No, but they should be the... like firefighters, cops, then EMTs, the officials. Well, they, both teams have their own doctor. No, but I'm saying what like actual like EMTs. Like yeah. Look at yeah. this guy. Look at yeah. this guy yeah. slamming yeah. a beer on the ice and chucking it back. That's yeah, garbage. Love. Yeah, garbage guys. Uh, be a fun night to hang out with a bunch of firefighters, yeah. though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you think Paretta's getting his dick wet the tonight? Only, the <laughs> 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 Fuck it. The only oh, yeah. <laughs> might be like Ray Allen. I just think of like all like Ray Allen and he got games. All the being like, oh, it's on TV. Turn it. To tune in. Hey, the only problem is. <laughs> well, you can't say he's going to get his pecker wet. <laughs> Look at him right there. Look at him. He's got a smile ear to ear. That thing's going to get sucked uh, off. Yeah, you're just, he's right off his torso. <laughs> <laughs> Big Cat, your first one. Final thoughts? Uh, on incredible game. Incredible game. Uh, such an awesome special. Like, nothing like this. So, thought everyone did a great job. Thanks, everyone in the truck. Also, Wit, we'll talk about this tomorrow. But in the intermission, second intermission, uh, I unveiled my wi uh, pick for the Stanley Cup. Wow. I don't want to hear it yet. Let's wait till pardon my take. Tune in Monday morning. All right, it's the Edmonton Good Oilers teams. plus. Oh seven. no! <laughs> no! The mush. No, don't pick my team. Who, who, don't pick my team. Who will they meet in the finals? Who do I you don't give a. Me? I don't give a fuck. I just want them to win the cup. I don't care. Right. Biz, he knows. He's trying to mush. He knows him. what's coming he in Edmonton. Ru he ruined a great night for you McGee's guys. Just just no, I, I said that this is if 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 the Oilers win, I will accept McJesus. If not, he's a bump. But Jesus That's will rise. I'm uh, telling quickly, you right now. final thought, your first one. Pretty I'm, great. I, I already thank the guys I need. Grinelli, come in here in the shot, please. This guy and, and the behind the scenes staff are spitting. Everybody chip. great. And, and, and everybody else at Barstool are the ones who, who really propelled this into action. I pray that we get to come back next year and do it again for the 50th anniversary. So thank you, G, and Love thank you, you to you, Apuzo, yeah, Elliot next Fish. Year. 50th anniversary. I heard, I, 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 heard, I heard they want to try to do it outside. Oh. They want to try to do it outside oh, at awesome. MetLife Stadium. Wow. Okay, now, now all right. I <laughs> mean, pretty damn exciting. I, I think the biggest thing is, though, we're thankful to be a part of this because these two sides, they save people, they help people, and it's an amazing thing to be a part of. Thank you guys for letting me be involved as well. The 49th yes. annual FDNY takes it yet again. Thank you for watching here on Barstool.tv. FDNY, the champions once again. Boom.